Welcome everybody to today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era Tournament. Today's tournament is going to be a murder mystery. A murder has taken place on Duel Academy Island. A body has been found and every single person in today's tournament is a possible suspect. Now we do have selections of characters. We have bystanders. We have suspects. We have a detective, we have missing people, we have victims. All that matters is that no matter what, every single person has a possibility of being a kill, uh, the killer today. So, in this tournament, we are going to have all the characters fight, and when a character loses, they must give up some information they know about the killing. Now, not every character will know ev everything about the killing, but they cannot withhold big information. But they can miss, uh, they cannot mislead. They will at least tell the truth when they lose. Yu-Gi-Oh has that kind of power over them. But without further ado, to get into um, our Yu-Gi-Oh Master Era tournament, we're going to have our character roundup, and this one is going to be extremely important. So let's go ahead and get it started. Gerard, a bystander in today's murder mystery, an average duelist. Gerard was just about to graduate when the school went on lockdown. He is scared that the killer will take his life just before he gets his diploma. That is right, everybody. Gerard is not under any suspicion as he is in a very happy mood lately because he is going to be able to graduate. He worked really hard in the inter-school tournament and it earned him a graduation slot, but... This lockdown has put a lot of fear into his heart, and he doesn't know if he will survive. So, we're going to see if you guys can guess if Gerard is the killer. Do you guys think it's him? I don't know. Let's go ahead and move on to the next character. America, a bystander calm duelist. America was in his dorm improving on his deck out theory. His new deck has more deck out cards, and he plans to outlast any suspect in the case. He has no motive and is considered a bystander. That is right, everybody. America, in this case, has no motive for doing the killing, and we do not know why the killing has been done yet. We just have suspects, so we're going to find them out when we get into them, but America is not a suspect. He could still technically be the killer, but there's not much information on him on why he would be the killer. So we might as well put him in the bystander column and not worry about him. Jasmine, a bystander, elite duelist. Jasmine was with her friends when the lockdown began. She has decided to team up with Alexis and Mindy in order to take down whoever is responsible. Jasmine is not only just a bystander, but she actually has a pretty strong alibi. She was with specifically Alexis Rhodes and Mindy when the lockdown happened, which means that she was not near the body at all or anything had anything to do with this. She was with friends. She has an alibi. So you could put her on a list where you really, really don't think it's her, but she will be in the tournament today trying to get clues for you guys. Who knows? It technically still has a chance of being her. It's just extremely unlikely that Jasmine did the murders. Ryota, a bystander, expelled! Ryota had nowhere left to go after being expelled. Fonda Fontaine knew about his situation and allowed him to stay in the faculty tool shed. He wanders the school and even found new cards for his deck. That is right, everybody. Ryota did not perform in the inter-school tournament, so that means that he has been expelled. But he is, you know, he, his parents died in a car accident. He has nowhere to go. So he kind of just stuck around on Duel Academy Island Island, and thanks to the kindness of Fonda Fontaine, he does technically have a small space to live in. It's a little bit of a sad situation, but he has no real, you know, I guess he could have a motive, but he hasn't really done anything of note. He just kind of loses, but it is said that the cards are kind of driving him crazy. His King of the Skull Servants and Skull Servant cards used to bring him peace, but they are no longer doing that. Well, we'll put Ryota on the list, but as of for right now, he is a bystander. Beauregard, another bystander, a calm duelist. Beauregard was with Briar in the duel field when everyone was filled into the stadium for the lockdown. That is right, everybody. Every character right now is in the duel stadium. Every single person on the island with an active deck is in the stadium and is forced to duel in there in order to beat clues out of each other, which is a very funny idea. And we're going to see if Beauregard can help us get those clues. However, both him and Briar say they were practice dueling, but their dual discs were not even on. So they did 
make up a lie for some reason, or at least it doesn't seem like they were doing what they said they were doing. Still, it's not the most suspicious thing in the world, and because they were together, they technically do have an alibi. Beauregard says he was with Briar, and Briar says he was with Beauregard, so there you go. Missy, a bystander honored student. Missy was in the game shop spying on a certain someone. She claims that she is not the killer and the brutality of the crime seems to put her in the clear. She also clears the student she spied on. That's right, everybody. Missy states that she was in the card shop, but because she was secretly spying on someone, no one saw her in the card shop, which is kind of interesting. However, she doesn't really fit, you know, the... Let's say it doesn't really fit the bill. She technically could still be the killer, but the victim was pretty brutalized, so we don't know if Missy could have actually done that. Dimitri, a bystander, an honored student. Dimitri doesn't have any real suspicion on him. He keeps to himself and just stares at his cards like they are gold. That is right, everybody. Dimitri kind of just keeps to himself. He hasn't been doing anything of note as of late. All he does is stick, or, uh, stay in his room and just look at his own cards. He doesn't do anything bad. He doesn't have any you know, beef with anybody in the school. He doesn't really have a motive for doing anything, and he just really likes his debt for some reason. A quiet guy, all things considered. Alexis Rhodes, a bystander elite duelist. Alexis was in the girl's dorm with her friends when the lockdown began. After hearing about the murder, she decided to break out her new deck and try to get some answers from the suspects. That's right, everybody. Alexis Rhodes is coming today with a brand new deck, a very powerful Cyber Angel deck that she's planning on using to help solve the case. She does have a strong alibi as two other students were with her at the time of the lockdown. Reginald Von Howard, a bystander elite duelist. Reginald is freaking out. He hates being trapped inside the duel arena with everyone else, knowing that the killer is among them. He just doesn't know who it is. That's right, everybody. The killer is guaranteed to be among them at Duel Academy. They might even be in the duel stadium. So obviously, Reginald is kind of freaking out. Overall, he doesn't really have any suspicion placed on him. He's still an amazing duelist, but he's not keeping his cool in, in this situation. Jaden Yuki, a bystander, fiery duelist. Jaden was with his buddy Cyrus when the school went on lockdown. They both are ready to duel some answers out of the other students. Secretly, Jaden is just excited to duel everybody with his new deck. That's right, everybody. Jaden Yuki is now using a new deck that he found in the woods. A lot of characters seem to be finding their decks in the woods, and these cards are unreleased cards at this time period. It's kind of a strange situation. Well, Jaden does have an alibi of being with Cyrus, and there is really no motive and no reason for him to be a killer, so it's hard for anybody to suspect him. Technically, I did say everybody on this list has a chance of being the killer, but uh, I, would, I wouldn't put Jane on your list. I, I promise you, don't put Jane on your list. You don't need to do that to yourself. And then he's going to end up being the killer. I'm joking. We don't know. Well, let's continue on. Bastion Misawa, a suspect superior duelist. Bastion hasn't left his room in a while. All he does is write on the walls and the windows, which has caused him to become a suspect. He believes his new, de his new deck will prove his innocence. That's right, everybody. Bastion is using a brand new deck, a thunder deck. It's time for the battery men. This is Bastion's light deck. Bastion's light deck is full of battery cards, and he's hoping to prove to everybody that this is what he's been spending his time on, and that he isn't a complete psychopath, despite the fact that he writes on his walls and windows. We'll see how that goes, though, because he has built up a lot of suspicion for doing some crazy crap. We'll see, though. In today's tournament, maybe he can find some clues out of some other characters, or when he loses, maybe he'll have to admit something. Bolowski, a missing student, honored. Bolowski has gone missing. He can't be found in his large sleeping pod. His disappearance seems to have Chancellor Shepard more worried than the murder. That is right, everybody. Bolowski has gone missing. No one knows where he's gone. And even worse than that, Chancellor Shepard is more worried about Bolowski being missing than he is about the murdered child on Duel Academy Island. Something is definitely up. 
Ishiki, a bystander cum duelist. Ishiki has been getting worse and worse at dueling. His deck has started to change into a complete female monster deck. He is not a suspect, but he is definitely sus. Yes, Ashiki has started to turn his deck into an idle deck, and honestly, it's probably going to hold him back as a duelist. He might even get knocked down to Slifer Red with how bad he's been doing in practical exams. But he doesn't seem to be a suspect in this case. Everyone is still technically on the board, but he doesn't seem to be a suspect. Damon, a suspect elite duelist. Damon, Damon was the student to find the body. That's right, everybody. Out of everybody in the school, Damon was the one to report the body. He states he was alone in the woods when he came across the body. The woods he was found in was near the Obelisk Blue Dorm. That is right, everybody. On the island, we have the Obelisk Blue Dorm. It is somewhat near the Obelisk Girls Blue Dorm as well just to give you an idea of where it is stationed. Damon is a suspect in the case simply because he found the body, and due to the brutal way the body was torn apart, he, they people think that he could have done it with his freaking gorilla strength. But we'll see. Briar, a bystander superior duelist. Briar was found in the duel field with Beauregard. They both say they were dueling in there, but their duel discs weren't on. He plans on beating any suspects and getting clues from them. That's right, everybody. Briar is un uh, not under any suspicion, but he may have told a lie. We might need to find out why the, that Bar Briar and Beauregard were lying after they lose. But as of right now, neither of them seem to be that suspicious, and neither of them seem to have that big of a motive. Still... We might want to keep our eyes on them. Marcel, a missing duelist. Marcel has been missing for a couple of days. He was rather sad before he went missing, and some faculty believe he just quit school. Blair is against this theory. That is right, everybody. Marcel has not been found in quite a few days. The only one looking for Marcel right now seems to be Blair Flanagan. But a lot of the teachers are just like, and you know, a lot, of, a lot of the faculty are just like, eh, he probably just left. No one really thought that kid would amount to anything. Very messed up. But Dual Academy is full of horrible adults, so we just gotta live with that theory. Tanaka, superior bystander. <laughs> Tanaka was at the store buying new cards for his deck when the school went on lockdown. He can't believe that a body has been found and wants to duel a confession out of the criminal. That's right, everybody. Tanaka is just a bystander. There's no real suspicion under him. His life's been going up, up, up as he is one of the most competitive duelists at Duel Academy and one of the strongest Slifer Red students there is. He could easily be a raw yellow student by now, even all this blue if he really wanted to be. But he stays Slifer Red out of respect and to end the class system at the Academy. Chaz Princeton, otherwise known as Detective Chaz, Prince of Games. Chaz has decided to take the murder case into his own hands. He goes around the school calling himself Detective Chaz. Now that everyone is in lockdown, he plans to duel the suspects for answers. That's right, everybody. Detective Chaz is on the case. He regains his Prince of Games ranking after his performance in the inter-school duel. It is a very hard ranking to obtain as it may basically says you're the second strongest duelist at the school and he is no suspicion on him because he has taken the case into his own hands. Fonda Fontaine, a bystander professor. Fonda was beside herself when she heard about the murder. She couldn't believe any person could do such a horrible thing. Given the adult-student ratio, she worries a student could be responsible. Fonda Fontaine seems to know more information than we think, but at the same time, she is definitely not suspicious. Nobody thinks it's her. She's so kind to all the students at the school. Everyone seems to like Fonda, so we really don't think she's had anything to do with it. But technically, everyone is a possibility when we get to the end of the stream. So you can't count anybody out, but technically, she should be very low on your list of suspects because she's not even a suspect. Tyranno Hasselberry missing. Tyranno has gone missing. No one believes he is dead as his body is built like a tank. Yeah, no, no, but no, no, no creature in this world could take down Tyranno Hasselberry. Still, no one knows why he hasn't turned up. 
but some worry about his dino rage playing a part in the murder. That is right, everybody. A missing student doesn't exactly mean an innocent student. Dino rage is a real thing that Tyranno Hasaberry suffers from thanks to the dino bone in his body. However, he has never really gone ape on any characters. He's a very calm and fun, nice guy. He's just a pretty competitive duelist. So, we'll see. Honestly, he's missing. We should be more worried about him than suspecting him. So, we'll, we'll, we'll get to him later. Cyrus Truesdale, a bystander apprentice duelist. Cyrus was hanging with Jaden when the lockdown started. Cyrus has been trying to win a duel in a major tournament. This lockdown gives him even better reason to beat his opponents. That's right everybody, Cyrus has been really working hard on his deck so he can raise his rank, but he has been really, really performing poorly in tournaments. He does have an alibi for when he says he's been with Jaden, and that is the truth, so he's just going to try and help people find clues in this tournament. Mindy, a bystander honored student. Mindy is really freaked out after hearing about the murder. The ripped apart innards, the slash marks that came from something sharp, it still terrifies her. But she wants to stop the killer. Mindy has a strong alibi as she was with Jasmine and Alexis. She knows more about the body because she has heard some people talk about what happened to the victim. They were slashed open. Now what slash them open, we have no confirmation. There's no forensics on Duel Academy Island and there are no police officers. So we're gonna have to figure it out ourselves today. Rizo, the victim, dead. Rizo was supposed to be kicked down to Slifer Red. Duel Academy had lost a lot of support after their duel with Domino and money managed to keep him in blue. He was found torn open around the chest. That is right, everybody. Rizo was supposed to get knocked down to Slifer Red after his horrible performance as a student, but Duel Academy losing so horribly to Domino High has caused Duel Academy to lose a lot of respect, and because of that, they've been losing money. Therefore, Duel Academy was more willing to take Rizo's parents' money and let him just coast in Alpha's Blue until graduation. But he won't get to do that anymore because he is the victim in today's tale. And if you are curious, that does mean they are out of the Master Era story. Crowler, a victim slash suspect? Professor? Crowler has been raving about being attacked in his office. The attacker apparently turned off the lights and went after Crowler. People doubt his story and know that he hated Rizo. So Crowler doesn't have any marks on his body. He has not been, um, you know, he has not been assaulted, but he says that he was attacked in his office by somebody or something that he could not see as the lights were off. So maybe Crowler has some more information uh, for us than just that. But all we do know is that he is definitely suspect because he is one of the people that fought the hardest to turn Rizo into a Slifer Red student. He hated Rizo being an Obelisk Blue. Lyman Banner, a suspect, another professor. Lyman Banner is a major suspect in the case. He was the last person to see a few Obelisk Blue students go missing back in the past. There are now even more missing kids from Blue and Yellow. He says he did not do it. So, because Banner in the past has been known to be the last person to see Obelisk Blue students go missing, specifically Obelisk Blue students, um, he has a lot of suspicion put him on him in this case. Worse than that, there are more missing students, Bolowski, Tyranno Hasselberry, possibly even more. But those students are missing, and people always will point the finger at Banner. Banner does say he ha does it didn't do it, but can we trust him? Tori, a suspect? Elite. Tori has been seen in the power plant pretty often lately. He seems to have made contact with a dual spirit, and people suspect that Tori offered Rizo to the spirit of Jinzo. Yes, that's right, everybody. People know of a dual spirit on Duel Academy Island named Jinzo. Tori has been made friends with this dual spirit, not really friends, more of a master-servant relationship, and people are worried that he offered Rizo up to Jinzo. The only question is, if he offered Rizo up to Jinzo, why was the body found in the woods near Obelisk Blue Dorm? 
Daigo Sorano, a suspect elite duelist. Daigo has been acting way more aggressively since he lost his king ranking. He plans to get it back by exposing the killer under lockdown, but his intentions have brought him under suspicion. That's right everybody, Daigo after losing his king of game status has actually been acting very aggressively. He has even assaulted some of the students at the school who beat him in friendly duels. But this is only punches or like, you know, pushing them aside. He's never actually killed anybody. So even though he does have some suspicion under him, nobody truly believes that he would go this far. But who knows? Chairman Bell, a bystander. Chairman. Bell is head of the disciplinary committee and it is officially her job to solve the murder. The police have apparently been contacted, but they won't make it to the island for quite a while. The police being contacted doesn't matter when the only way to get to the island is literally by helicopter or by boat. And the boat is the way they're taking it, so it's going to take a very long time. It could even take until dawn. <laughs> Sorry, I just like that game. Alright, let's go ahead. Wheeler, a suspect. Test animal. Wheeler is an animal that was tested on by scientists on Duel Academy Island. He was given an inhibitor chip meant to stop him from hurting humans, but he has been known to go wild when he loses a duel. That's right everybody, Wheeler is a abuse case in my opinion, their animal abuse case. But he is a person that they use to duel students with to test out if the, you know, the Wheeler is learning how to duel. And overall he is an extremely well accomplished duelist, but... It comes from with a cost. Even with the inhibitor chip in him, he has been known to attack and even kidnap some students if they manage to beat him in a duel. Obviously, it's very easy to find the students that he kidnaps because he does eventually come back to his senses, but maybe someone pushed him just a little too far, and maybe this is our killer. Zane Truesdale, a bystander elite duelist. Zane has been scrambling to regain his king, uh, uh, his title of king before he reaches graduation. Chancellor Shepard promised Zane his old rank if he could defeat the killer and expose them. That's right everybody, Zane Truesdale has a chance of regaining the king of games title and entering the pro league if he can find the killer and expose them. One thing we're going to do with this tournament, whoever wins the tournament is going to be the one that technically solves or fails to solve the case. But we will not be able to do that without your guys' help at home. So whatever you guys vote for the most today at the end of the tournament, the winner of the tournament is going to be the person that votes for the character that you voted for. And then that is going to be seen as their, you know, their interpretation of who did it. And if you're right, then good for them. If you're wrong, well, you might cost them, you know, a king ranking. Good luck. Tayo, a, ba a bystander elite duelist. Tayo is feeling really weird lately. He feels as if he lost a good friend, but in reality, him and Raizo were only classmates. He didn't really like his lack of dragon deck, you know, the, dragons, the lack of dragons in his deck. He is sad that Raizo was killed, though. Yeah, Tayo is just a bystander. If there was any person in Obelisk Blue that didn't hate Raizo for being there, it was probably Tayo. Um, but he obviously, he wasn't that big of a fan of Tayo either. He didn't use any dragon cards, and he's having trouble finding another student as dragon-obsessed as he is. Dorothy, a bystander, shopkeeper, and cook. Dorothy was working in the card shop when the lockdown was announced. She has been feeding all the scared students, but now she wants to duel and help find the real killer. That's right, everybody. Dorothy is here. She is trying to help save the day. Despite the fact that she's not the best duelist in the world, she still wants to try and find clues and protect these students. Alice, a suspect, an actual living doll. Alice is well known around the school for being a living doll. No one seems to mind her being around, and they even duel her on occasion, but she is locked in a case at night. Whenever the moon glows on her, she changes into a cruel spirit. That's right, everybody. Alice, in our story, is an actual living doll. She is not a dual spirit because the card Duel Chimera doesn't exist in Master Duel. Therefore, nah, we're just gonna go the Chucky route. She's an actual living doll. No one cares. Not a single person. They're chill living with her. But now you, they sure as hell suspect her because they've seen her be actually evil when the moon glows on her. But she's supposed to be locked up at night, so 
It'd be a little strange if she was the killer. Still, she is suspicious. Jinzo, a, du a dual spirit and, a, of course, a suspect. Jinzo is a spirit that lives in the school's power plant. His soul was strong enough to give him a spirit form away from the card he was born. He wishes to steal the body of a powerful duelist. But murder? It just doesn't make sense. Jinzo does have a goal, and it is a very cruel and not okay goal. He wants to take the body of a powerful duelist. What he wants to do with that body, I do not know. But ripping the opponent or the body apart, I don't know if that fits his MO. He is still definitely a suspect because Jinzo might also be experimenting on some students now that we know that Tori is working with him, but we don't know. This is another one that's up in the air. It is a very good possibility that he is a problem at the school, but is he the murderer? We will find out. Dark Magician Girl, a suspect, a dual spirit. Dark Magician Girl is a powerful spirit that was released from her card. Her deck's owner had an unmatched dueling aura, but he has gone missing. She's obsessed with trying to find the duelist that released her. That is right, everybody. Dark Magician Girl was on Duel Academy Island at one point with her technically master, the person that controlled her deck. But after being released from her deck on Duel Academy Island, he went missing. He never came back. It was almost like he was never meant to stay on the island. He was only there for a short amount of time. She is looking for him quite obsessively, and honestly, it does make her a little suspect because she keeps asking everybody if they have seen her duelist. Of course, she duels everybody as well because she wants to see if she can find that energy, that dueling energy that she can, that she can identify. But murder? I don't know if she'd go that far. It could be a possibility, though, so keep her in your minds. Sadie, a bystander, shopkeeper, and cook. Sadie is a typical young adult working hard to pay off her college debt. She does the minimum required of her and likes to play games and watch shows in her free time. She's obsessed with ships. And by ships, I mean shipping. She loves watching this show called Car and the Forces of Diesel, and her favorite characters are Barco and Car. And she does ship them. <laughs> Yeah, so she's just a regular, you know, young adult. She's just trying to coast through life, figure out what she wants to do. And she's trying to pay off her college debt by just having, a, you know, this part-time job. It's, it can technically be full-time since she lives there. But at the same time, she just she just doesn't care. She just kind of coasts through life. She's not a bad person at all. She's having a great time. That's why she's a bystander here. But yeah, there you go. The Admiral, a suspect, and the Dock Master. The Admiral is in control of the only official ship that goes on and off campus. He is known for being a tad strange and the faculty believe he knows where the missing students have gone. Given that he is the only way off the island and that is locked down right now, the Admiral is a suspect because students have gone missing despite the lockdown and the only way off the island is through one of his ships. If the students aren't on the island that is. so. The Admiral's under suspicion, he definitely could have done it, but we still don't really have a motive. Blair Flanagan, the king of games! Blair is worried sick about her friend Marcel. She had been looking for him for a couple of days before the school lockdown happened. Now she duels to find out if any other student has seen him. That's right to everybody, Blair is not dueling today to find out who the murderer is, though she will still be asking that information. She wants to know what the hell happened to her friend Blair, uh, Marcel, because no one is looking for him. No one at the school seems to care, but maybe she'll be able to do it, maybe she won't. That is going to be all the characters we have to talk about today. We are going to be starting our murder mystery tournament real soon. And right now, the only thing you need to understand is this. Rules of the mystery. We will not ask the entire group who the murderer is until the very end of the tournament. You can collect the clues during the ends of each duels when the losers have to give you a piece of information. And the number one rule. The murderer will, be, uh, will have been in one of the bios today. And every character technically could have done it. So, good luck to you. Good luck in solving the mystery. I would say make sure you can find some sort of motive, some sort of opportunity, just like a real murderer would need. And let's get it started.
Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to today's fun little murder mystery tale. I am your host, Casual Cooper, and today we are going to be watching a tournament of characters going at it in lockdown in the dual stadium. In this stadium, all the characters are going to fight, and each loser must give you all information. Every time a character loses, you must be given information in these duels. So, I hope you are all ready, and I hope you are all excited. Let's go ahead and let's get things started. The first duel of the day will be Daigo Serrano versus Ryota. Let us go ahead and start their duel. Now, this is still match style, so I hope you're all paying attention. And I would like to thank everybody for all the subs and everything, literally helping me reach my sub goal. You guys are amazing. I love you all. And uh, let's get into it. Let's see how this goes. We have ourselves Heart of the Underdog. This is always how Ryota starts. He tries to get his uh, hand really full, then he throws away Skull Servants. Happens every time. Brain Control kicks in. Garochin has been stolen. Horus Level 6 is already here. Horus Level 6 is here, everybody. And it's getting some backup from Garochin. That is 4,000 damage in one turn. I forgot the faces. Holy crap, my apologies. I'll get the faces. Sorry, this is the first fight of the day. Cooper ain't all here yet. Give me some time. And again, thank you, Reaper. I really do appreciate that. So, Daigo is right there. And where's good old Ryota? Ryota. 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 There we go. Seems good. Magical Marionette kicks in. Skull Servant in the grave. Perfect. Prevent Rat doesn't matter. He hit one Skull Servant. That's really good. But he already lost the duel, so it doesn't matter. All right. So game number one is going to go to Daigo Serrano. Good job, Daigo, getting that really quick victory. That, that was honestly insanely fast. So was not expecting that. Uh, let's go ahead and get into game number two. Obviously, they got to fight again. Maybe Daigo's a little too fast for our buddy here. I do not know. Looks like a lot of people are getting sub buds today. Everyone, thank you for joining our subscriptions. Ever since Twitch has changed their policy, it's been a lot harder to uh, go through the streams because we're forced to have ads now. But thanks to all of our fans like Big Smoke and my buddy Badal and everybody, literally so many of you giving subs today, uh, we're going to be able to watch with no freaking, uh, yeah, no freaking ads. I hope you enjoy. Welcome, everybody. Come join the party. Have some fun. Party with me. Leveling up. He's already Horus level C. He's going to be Horus level 8. No spell cards can be activated. He needs to hit Skull Sir. He needs to hit Skull Servants. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He's already Horus level 8. Give the kid a break. Holy crap, I feel so bad for him. He has no chance. MST. Oh yeah, he can, Daigo can use spells, but not freaking Ryota. Ryota has to find a way to get three Skull Servants in the ga ga uh, grave and then summon... Make that four Skull Servants and then summon a freaking card. Oh, there's one. That counts as one. 3,500. And Horus is going in there. Another sub. Look at that. Thank you guys so much being so kind. Yeah, no, I feel real bad. <laughs> Come on. We already have one killer on the loose. We don't need to see another killer right in front of us. This is just too much. And although he is a suspect, let's be real. Daigo is a suspect. 1935, and it is over! So, because we have our first official loser being Ryota, Daigo moves forward. Ryota is forced to give us information. Now, information could be this. Well, I'll just tell you what his is. Ryota, let's see, I have a, I have a real piece of paper that tells me. Ryota. Ryota says that he was just wandering around Duel Academy. He has no alibi. There you go. That's the kind of information we're going to be giving out. If a character has anything specific or knows anything specific about other characters, they will mention it. But if they have nothing, they will let you know if they have an alibi or do not have an alibi. If they have an alibi, I strongly suggest you believe them and that they did not do it. If they don't have an alibi, you need to keep them on your list. With that being said, let's continue with the tournament. Sorry, I just want to get that out of the way since we're very early on. So Ryota wanders the Duel Academy, no alibi. If anyone watched his intro, you understand why he wanders Duel Academy. For those of you that didn't, haha, you didn't see his intro. All right, Daigo moves forward. Uh, next is Crowler and the Admiral. Funny enough, both of these characters count as full-on suspects. 
Um, so let's see how they do against each other. I'm kind of curious to see the Admiral's deck because of uh, something I've recently done in Yu-Gi-Oh! 2008. Um, which I don't think you guys have seen yet. Don't worry, it'll come, it'll come later. It might come in a couple days. But uh, yeah, I want to see how he does. And Crowler, I'd like to see if he could do a little bit better. But who the hell knows? Should be fun, though, watching these two duel. So, I hope you guys placed your bets while you had the chance, and or at least right now, while you do have the chance right now as I speak. And let's watch the first duel go. Crowler versus the Admiral. Alright. I gotta drink some water myself. Ah, there we go, some water. So, the Admiral is known as the Dock Master. Crowler in this story is known as a victim slash... Uh, also suspect because we don't even know if he truly is a victim. He could be not telling the truth. I'm trying not to have too much of that in the story, but there's always a chance. All right, Potagree kicks in. Potagree can get him Daedalus. He really needs Daedalus. He got a Legendary Ocean, which is very nice. A Legendary Ocean makes his deck a lot better. And he goes in. Nibble Manga is just there to stall because that card is immune to spells. It's uh, not going to gain 200 attack and 200 defense. That's just. Uh, how it is but oh faces damn it's too early today i'm sorry guys I, I i actually got way too much sleep i had such a good night's sleep last night it's kind of insane it made me forget everything everything all right let me get the admiral let me get prowler i'll be more on it the longer we go into the tournament right now I'm, I'm not all here yet i'll get i'll get there though don't worry i'll get there i got so many things on my mind good things positive things just letting you know Wow, the Admiral's kicking your ass, I'm not gonna lie. You are, you're having a rough time there, Mr. Crowler. And the attack goes through, ultimate offering will get green gadget, green gadget will get uh, red gadget, sure. Go, go, gadget, red. Right now, what Crowler really needs is something to destroy his own field spell, because if he could destroy his own field spell, he'll be able to get out a big monster. Thank you again for subbing. I really do appreciate that. You guys are super nice. He does get a heavy storm! And with a heavy storm, Crowler's about to pop off in this duel. Okay, hold on. Holy crap, stop, Crowler! You're summoning too many monsters! Crowler, you have to stop! The gadgets! There are too many! And now Gear Town is going to chain, and that chain is into Gadgetron Dragon. And we have ourselves Ancient Gear Knight. And it looks like the Admiral's the one in trouble now. He lost his field spell, and he lost a chance to come back. Gadgetron Dragon takes down the highest hitter, but he can't take down the 1600 hitter. Honestly, though, getting rid of the field spell was the most important thing. A legendary ocean is how he gets his boss out easily. Without that ocean of legends, he can't do much. Aquasphere does have an effect, though, which can activate on the standby phase. You're going in defense mode. Yep, there we go. Good job, standby phase. And they are stuck in defense mode, if you're curious. So the gadgets will now be unleashed. And Mother Grizzly will hold the field. I recommend you use one of those salvages. I, I, I'm telling you, you need to do it. Teet! Oh, but wait. You're the only one that... Oh, no, you, you're not going to be able to do that. I don't think Crowler is going to be summoning anytime soon. So, yeah. This ain't going to work. Okay, well, Mother Grizzly's going down. Did I miss something? Let me let me see my chat. Did I miss something? It says I got a bunch of subs. But I don't think I missed anything else, did I? I hit my sub goal. You guys are awesome for that. I really do appreciate that. And just like that, it's over. Shallowgrave's not going to save him. I think this first duel, we're going to have to give it to Crowler. It's just way too stacked. It is way too stacked. Like, obviously, the, the Admiral had a good start, but the second Crowler pulled off that ultimate offering Heavy Storm, it was over. There was no chance of coming back. TT. Oh, he used it actively. I appreciate that. That's interesting, because now you just gave him back. You didn't even bring out Mother Grizzly, which would have protected you lost. You, you're terrible at this. That You should not have done that. The one thing you were afraid of was Gadgetron. I would have just taken a risk. And just said, you know what, maybe he doesn't. Ah, he No, you would have lived. If you just took a risk, you would have lived. He only had 14. Now you have to deal with Gadgetron because of your own shallow grave. Yeah, good luck now, buddy. Okay, well, it looks like Crowler is doing a great job. The Legendary Ocean will not make a difference because you brought back his Gadgetron. 
If you didn't bring back his Gabtratron, you would have stood a chance. Thank you. You're completely right, Vidal. Some stupid things have happened. Gadgetron's going to continue, but Mother Grizzly will hold the field. So, if he draws Leviathan... Oh, he picked a monster that was way too weak. Are you telling me he was out of all the strong monsters? Get him out of here. Well, that's only game number one. All right, game one goes to Crowler. Good job, Crowler. I'm sad to say that this could be Crowler's first time ever winning a match if he wins this next game. That's kind of wild. All right, we're going to game number two. Admiral, don't mess up this time. Last time you actually had a good chance. You just kind of messed it all up. Don't do that again. I really would appreciate that. Again, he drew his Neo Daedalus, but he has not drawn anything of value. Nimble Mamonga. Okay. Aqua Spirit's good, especially with Graceful Charity in your hand. I like that combo. Okay, terraforming is good. You need that for your deck. Prowler always gets that freaking Nimble Mamonga. I swear to God. Dark Hole, you know what? Normally I would disagree, but in this case, because Crowler's so much about tribute summoning, yeah, get rid of that card. All right, the Admiral's doing good now. The Admiral did good. Okay, here we go. We got Green Gadget. Green Gadget gets Red Gadget, but Gadgets don't matter when you don't have the Trap card to help. Regeki Break can pop your card. Yep, goodbye trap. MST is gone. You should have just used it. I know he couldn't because he said it on that turn, but he should have just used it. There's a, no reason not to. Yeah, there's no waters in the graveyard. He keeps drawing all of his stuff. I can't believe he drew Neodatos again. Like, this is the most unlucky the Admiral could be. He needs to draw regular Datos, which he has more copies of in his deck than he does Neo. I think Neo, that's the only one, which is why it's so insane. All right, but Crowler's still in danger. Oh, he's got back. Okay, wow, you are just, you are just uh, really bad at this, ain't you? You ain't so good at the Yu-Gi-Oh's, and I feel bad for you. I really do. Yellow gadget. Well, at least he's trying to build up his gadgets. That's fine. You need your field spell though. Your field spell is what makes your deck a lot better. Both of these characters really like their field spells. There's your mother grizzly. There you go. Oh fuck. Why double cycle? Oh, you could chain it. Okay, yeah, that works. Uh, you know what? You have an Aqua Spirit, though, so it's fine. Even though this sucks, you lost your Grizzly, you lost your Legendary Ocean, you have a backup Aqua Spirit, and you have a backup Legendary Ocean. Crowler's in so much danger. Crowler is legit in danger. He's going to lose. The way this is going, he is going to lose. Heavy Storm. You lost another Field Spell. That's two Field Spells. Hmm... He got Leviathan Dragon right after the field spell was destroyed. That's super unlucky. It probably does not get as unlucky as that. Let's see. If we're having a buffering problem, I could check it out to see what's going on. Let me see if there's an internet problem today. Um, let me see. Internet. Because I can always reset the stream if we need to. But let me make sure... If it's just an internet problem or something, maybe it's too busy today. All right, we got ourselves that. We got Green Gadget. Green Gadget's going in against the Orca. And nothing else. You need your Ancient Gears, Crowler. You really do. I can't believe you're still in this. It's mostly because your opponent's dad. No, it says here we're fine. My internet connection's fine. It does. Uh, my OBS says that Twitch is running fine. I have no drop frames. I don't know why it's buffering. I couldn't tell you. Let me go into my settings, maybe. Um, output. My bit rate is exactly what it needs to be for this much, uh, for this much upload speed. Hmm. I don't, that's weird. I don't know what to do. Even if I uh, reset the stream, I don't know what settings I would change because all the settings are accurate. They, there's nothing that uh, could be stopping it. He has Momonga in his hand. Are you serious? Oh, Leviathan Dragon's here? Oh, Neo Daedalus is here. Oh, shit. All right. Neo Daedalus joining the party means you're going to lose. You are actually going to lose. Golem's here. Golem beats Daedalus for sure. <laughs> no, he lost his boss monster. Wait a minute. Crowler's going to win? This might be on Twitch's part because my, my all my stuff is set. We're good. 
My upload speed is good. My bit rate is right where it needs to be for this upload speed. Even a little, uh, my bit rate is actually under what it needs to be. So it's like right there. Um, and my thing says it's working. So that's the problem. I have nothing. Nothing on my end telling me what to do. All right. Well, that's the end of that. Both those guys are losing everything. Tribe. Wow. Never mind. Crowler's going to lose. Never mind. That sucks to be you. I don't I can't it can't be that many people's internet. I, I would have to say that it, it's probably something on Twitch's end today. I heard Twitch has been having a lot of uh, controversy lately. I don't know if that's gonna affect their performance. 1600, there we go. Not bad, not bad at all. Who the heck's texting me during a stream? These people know not so. Do, do, uh, and Ancient Gear Chimera with 600 life points left. The top deck of the gods is here, but can it save him? Will that si will that Chimera be able to save the whole duel? What effect does it have? It has no effect in motion. Oh, we have Gear Town. We have Gadgetron Dragon. Gadgetron Dragon wipes them out. It's going to be extremely difficult for him to take down Gadgetron. Pot of Greed, that's nice. Pot of Greed is very nice. Uh, MST should not be used except on Ultimate Offering. If Although I can't see him using it with only 600 life points left. Okay, Ancient Gear Knight could still be used. Uh, a trap could still be used on it. And Call of the Haunted will be used. It brings back Daedalus. That's enough damage. He's going to do it. The Admiral's going to take game two. MST, what do you... Why did he pay 500 for Ultimate Offering when there's nothing on the field? It's over. It's super over. Oh, is he going to put in defense somehow? I don't know. All I know is Leviathan Dragon just has to take down that card over there. And that is it. The Admiral wins game two. These have been long, hard duels. These two duels are very tough. I don't think Crowler's ever going to win a single duel, and I bet you that drives him crazy. So let's go ahead and get into game number three. Is it possible Crowler will never win a single match in one of my tournaments, no matter what buffs his Ancient Gear deck gets that are anime accurate? All right. A Gemini summon, but that, doesn't that mean it has to be in attack mode to do that? And then it would just be a waste of 500 points anyway. 2050 attack, okay. How are you going to deal with that, Crowler? Field spell, I don't think that's going to deal with it, Cr Oh, you can just summon that for free. Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Gear Town, you can summon Ancient Gear Gadgetron Chimera for free. That's that's a hundred percent a okay. The rule states that that is okay. The Admiral's in trouble. Crowler might win it with this freaking gadget deck. Oh, gadget slash uh, Ancient Gear deck. Oh, Tribute Summon, what do we got? It's the Golem! Ancient Gear Golem rips through the opponent. That's 2,000 bird. And then we got Gadgetron hitting him in the face. The Admiral is going down. I better get this piece of paper ready. Uh, let me see. He's on here. Yeah. All right. Got a green gadget. We got Ancient Gear Golem. We got Gadgetron. And we got Piercing. This is it. We are taking down this man. And that is it. Crowler does have, have a win now. Thank God. Thank God. Good for him. He desperately needed it. So we're going to move back to our bracket. Don't worry. I will give you guys information from the Admiral who was a suspect. So, Admiral... He states that none of the missing kids ever left on his ship. He states that he was on the docks. The docks are very far from where the body was found and that that is his alibi. He had not he says he doesn't he did not do it. I'm pretty sure every character is going to say they didn't do it or something of that variety, but he says he didn't do it and he also states that none of the missing kids ever, even the ones from the past, were left on his ship. So, let's move Crowler forward. The next duel is going to be... Oh, thank you again, Vidal. The next duel is going to be Bastion Misawa, an actual crazy person that's been writing on the walls and windows of his dorm room, and Daigo Serrano, a student that's been getting physical with his uh, classmates that are able to beat him. So let's see. Daigo versus um, Bastion. 
<clears throat> this should be a fun one because Bastion's using another new deck. This guy can't help himself. I don't know what's wrong with him, honestly. Let's go find Bastion as quickly as we can. All right, let's do this, everyone. It's time for Daigo versus Bastion. We all want to find out more information, and the only way we're going to do that is if we watch these two duel. All right, there we go. All right, Daigo and Bastion. The Lightning Vortex is nice, getting rid of Mass Dragon, but no mo- Oh god, Bastion's opening hand must be garbage. I am not gonna lie. Yeah, of course he already dueled. We're, that, we're done with round one of the tournament. Now we're in round two of the tournament. Alright, Dark Hole. Dark Hole gets rid of UFO Turtle, of course. Okay, Royal Decree stops Call of the Haunted. That's pretty brutal from Daigo. Always good. I'm trying to find out where they are on this paper so I know what they have to say. Okay, Reasoning is throwing away all of his stuff, and Horus Level 6 is here. Horus Level 6 goes in, no traps can be activated, and no spells and uh, can be act or uh, can affect Horus, so there's that. A uh, pretty busted combo from Daigo here, especially coming from the fact that his hand is a brick. Oh, wow, that's just rude. I wouldn't do- oh, you're a dick. You are a dick, sir. I don't know what he just lost, but he lost something. That's a problem. All right, that sucks. Sucks to be you, buddy. Let's see what you could do, Bastion. Try something else. Oh god. All right, you can uh, <clears throat> you can you can call it. If he's not gonna draw any monsters and he can't use spells and traps, he might as well uh, you might as well call it. Game one is gonna go to the other guy. Now we don't know for sure. The last top deck could be the perfect card, but it just doesn't look like uh, a good situation for old Bastion Masawa. A duelist who's just been getting worse and worse with each new deck. Granted, this is a very hard opponent, I have to say. And we got ourselves a Battery card. And Battery Man D saves the day. If it wasn't for Battery Man D, this duel would have been over right now. But we already have Horus with 3,500 attacks, so how do you come back? All right. Twin-Headed Behemoth, Forest Level 8. We got plenty of good cards here. UFO Turtle. Battery Man AAA is dead, but it has an effect. It has no way of using it. And game number one will go to Daigo Serrano, the former king. This guy was a king of games at one point. All right, Bastion, you're going to have to try a lot harder in game number two. Maybe guess level six the next time he uh, tries to use that uh, reasoning card on you. The only way he comes back is with monsters. That's the only way. Going into game number th two. Let's see. Pot of Greed. That's a busted hand. That's a very busted hand. You're going to have some trouble. I'm, I guarantee it. All right. We got Brain Control. Interestingly enough, this is a monster you actually can use that on. But you're not even using it for tribute. So it kind of was a waste in my opinion. The AI does not know how to save any. Oh, you know what? Swords is fine. It doesn't work on, you know, particular monsters, but it's fine. And it looks like we're good. Mass Dragon comes through, just attacking, I'm assuming. No, not, okay, we're not gonna try and use Horus at all or anything. Graceful Charity, go ahead and grab some stuff, throw stuff away. And Battery Man is here, Battery Man needs some time. And Royal Decree will not allow the burn to go through, that would have been 1200 burn. No 1200 burn coming through from Bastion. Solar Ray has been negated. Shining Angel is probably just going to go look for a new target. There's one in particular I would choose right now. Mass Dragon can do whatever it feels like. Element Dragon is very powerful, but Battery Men are working together. And because they work together, the Mass Dragon will try to stall with Mass Dragon. That's a good play. All right, that was a good play to use the Mass Dragon to get the Mass Dragon. Twin Head is here, but you can't stop him. One more Battery Man and this duel is over. 
We did it. All right, horse level six will ignore the swords and stop the battery man combo. There will not be a triple battery man with 3000 attack and we can now negate spell cards, but no traps, no spells, you have to win. How are you gonna win with no traps and no spells, Bastion? Granted, sword still works for now. It will work on that horse as well. It's, things are getting worse by the second for Bastion fans out there. You have to win this duel with no spells and no traps, only battery men. You're going to lose. <laughs> You're going to lose. If that is literally all you have, you are going to lose. All right, Shining Angel is going to go away. It's trying to stall for dear life, but it's got a lot left to give. Shining Angel is trying to stall for dear life. Battery Man AAA. Is stalling for dear life, but my god, the combo is too strong. Royal Decree and all this fun stuff. Horus level 6 is special summoned. Oh my god, <laughs> Daigo's so good. Why can't he ever do this in the other tournaments? His deck is untouched. Daigo's deck has been untouched for like three tournaments now. So why the heck has he not been able to pull all this off? Who, who, who's beating him? All right, well, there goes that card. There goes your life. And it looks like Bastion is out of here. This man can't make a deck to save his career. All right, Daigo wins. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to our bracket after I find Bastion's face. And we'll go into Bastion. So, Bastion's got to say that everyone knows where he was. He was literally in his room, writing on the walls and windows. That's why they called him crazy. His alibi is that he was in his room making his deck. His deck being a battery man deck. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's move Daigo forward. The next one is Blair Flanagan versus Tori. Okay, interesting. Blair Flanagan versus Tori. Blair being the king of games at this point in time after her performance at uh, the inter-school duel. And then we have Tori, who is part of the Seance Club and is one of the people that worships Jinzo right now. So, let's see what happens. Go ahead and place your bets. Are you going to be a Blair Flan or are you going to be a uh, Tori fan? All right, Tori and Blair, Blair, we're good. And Tori's in trouble. That is a very bad opening hand. And if Blair goes for the tribute, I say that's a good play. Go for the tribute. Ah, you, you wanted more damage. And now you could have had that card in your grave. Instead, you lost two very valuable cards. DD Warrior Lady would have been nice to still have. Wow, Tori's hand is a brick? What is his hand? What the hell? Ah, uh, that makes sense. Lo Daigo losing to the ritual. That ritual monster is pretty good. Harpy's Feather Duster gets rid of the field spell buff. Can you beat it? Can Tori is having the worst hand I've ever seen. He's still bricks somehow. We have a Dawn Knight. We have a Blade Knight. They're going to work together for 3,000 damage. Blair is doing really good, beating down her opponent, knowing that she is stronger. Asura Priest is going to get very strong. Oh, he's going all... Okay, he is going all in on Asura Priest. It gets every equip known to man. This must be the first monster he actually drew. And he's going to heal all of his damage back. All of the life he lost, he's regaining. Tori went from being super brick to going to, like, literally being in the lead of this duel. Is Blair the king of games already in danger? All right, that's a good top deck. Yeah, we already knew this was going to happen. That's a good top deck for her other monster. And 23 to the face means she's going to level up into her final form. And with that, Silent... Oh, well, she has to wait till her standby phase, but Silent Swordsman level 7 is coming. Good play from Blair. Really good try from Tori. Better play from Blair, though. <clears throat> and level 7 is here. This is the ultimate monster in Blair's deck, and honestly, it's super strong. All spells do nothing now. 
All spells are nothing. But that's a monster effect, so that totally works. Very nice. All right, Blair, what are you going to do? What if he gets a tribute? Is there a single tribute in his deck that can actually beat you, though? That's my question. There is a tribute in his deck, and he said it. There was a tribute in his hand, and he decides to set it, so I'm very curious what it is. And it was Yamada Dragon! Oh, no! You just, you just gave him a whole new hand! All right, Yamada Dragon, good job. Yeah, gave him a new hand. Now you're, you're still in trouble, but... You, Maybe with those new cards, you could do something. No. No, those new cards did not give him any combos. Crap. Silent Swordsman level, uh, Silent Swordsman level 5 is here. We're going to get rid of Izanami. She's gone now. Premature Burial is gone. And the Sword Priest is coming back. Good job, Izanami. And 2300. Oh, Blair's the king of games for a reason. She's damn powerful, and she even took on a lot of the Domino students. Even a former rank 10 player, Blakora. Yeah, not after the King's Throne tournament. A lot of things changed after that, but you won't learn about that for a while. And we got two Swordsman level 7s. Nah, okay, we got one. We got one Swordsman level 7, and that one Swordsman level 7 is going to do a damn fine job. 1800, she almost died off of that one attack. Or he almost died, I should say. You can't use Brain Control, you can't use Fisher, you can't use anything to kill Silent Swordsman. You have to beat it by battle or trap. And it doesn't seem like you're doing too good at that, so let's see. Luminous Spark, it wouldn't work, but you could play it. 2800. And here we go. The victory is for Blair. Of course, that's only game number one, so Blair, you gotta do that again, unless Tori gets a much better hand. I feel like he did not draw his good spirit monster. He runs Izanagi. Izanagi's how he gets his deck started. Here's Izanagi when you need him. Alright, we have ourselves a set. Um, doesn't seem like the best Blair hand, but it, you know, it's something okay. Uh, Pot of Greed, and we have Susa Soldier, and we have Izanagi, the guy I was talking about, and we have Mirror of the Yada. And the attack goes through, the attack is good, and we got 2200 damage, the attack is good. Looks like Blair's in a little more trouble this time around. She's gonna need to figure something out. Fisher will get rid of Susa Soldier, but honestly, Izanagi's the bigger threat. And that is all you did. Okay, now I'm very curious in what she's planning. What the hell is she planning? Sukiyomi does it to herself. She actually has to. She doesn't have a choice. And Izanagi does Nar 22. Blair might lose this duel extremely quickly. Bet you a lot of you are swicking your bets around real quick. Brain control comes through. Sadly, that will not make a difference because Sukiyomi. Oh my god. Does that counter brain control? I don't know if it does, but I want to know. I want to know if that counters. Is she smart? No, it doesn't counter brain control. I was going to say, that would be wild. If, it, like, because it's face down, it no longer is the same monster. So, oh, she had two. All right. Well, you weren't going to beat two of those. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Game two goes to Tori. It turns out Tori's not a bad duelist when his hand is in complete garbage. Blair Flanagan is a little shocked by this. And so is everyone else that bet on her. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move into game number three. Will Blair Flanagan be able to take game three? Or, will we have to find out what her hint is? Speaking of which, maybe I should find out where their hints are so I don't mess this up. Bottomless hits a very important target. There you go. And we're going to play that face down. We're going to use Mirror of Yada. That's always fun. Mirror of Yada is going to do pretty much nothing in this case because Shining Angel is going to get silent. We're not going Silent Swordsman this time around. Okay, interesting. Definitely interesting. Blade Knight. Yeah, Blade Knight. That makes sense. We don't want to go Silent Swordsman. She just wants to go for... DD Warrior Lady. Okay, we're legit. We're used. Okay, I'm surprised that she used DD Warrior Lady. I didn't think she'd do that. There was no real reason to. I would say I you shouldn't have done that. That was a bad play, Blair. But to each their own. 
You got double Blade Knights now. Okay, Blade Knights for days. Well, Nimble Mamong is going to stall out, and we already saw in the last duel that this guy, or the first duel, this guy does have some tribute spirit monsters. So, you don't want to leave him with one monster left just in case. What if he's got Dark Dust Spirit? What if he's got the Great Nose? What if he's got, um, I don't know many spirits, I'm afraid. Are there more tribute with single tribute spirits? Oh, what about double tribute? Like Yamada Dragon and maybe even the other one that's stronger. All right. Oh, nope, single tribute, and it's Izanami. Okay, Izanagi's back. We're just going to do 600 damage, and we're going to chill. So, Blair, I see what's in your hand. I see you still have some options, but uh, just be careful, all right? Fisher takes it out again. We're going to make sure that card never survives. And Dawn Knight's going to take down Nimble Momonga, but he's going to come out of this kind of healthy. Uh, sure he loses 600. And just like that, we finally did some damage to the guy. They're tied in life points. Field advantage goes to Blair. Hand advantage honestly can't be Blair because Blair's hand is terrible. All right, now you can play a Silent Swordsman. Maybe it'll evolve. And Blade Knight gets a buff. Nope, Blade Knight is not going to have a buff. Morphing Jar says no. They're both getting new hands. Both of the characters needed new hands. Call of the Haunted comes through, and that's really bad for you. Okay. Okay, I would have played the field spell, but you're a coward for some reason. MST comes through. Saku is no longer there to protect your monsters. Asura Priest is one of the best cards he could have top decked. Holy crap. Oh my god. Okay, Asura Priest. Asura Priest. Asura Priest. Oh, wow. She's taking so much damage. That Nibble Momonga is the worst thing he could have right now. But other than that, that's just great damage. Okay. But Blair's got some strategies, too. I could see just by looking at her. Okay, well, maybe she's going to... Don't don't bring control into Dark Hole. Show me the AI is not that stupid. Please play your monster first. Tribute your monster. Don't do this. What are you doing? You're crashing. Interesting. You know what? She did not bring control into Dark Hole, so I'm okay. I feel a little bit better. I've seen it happen once before. It broke my heart, so I don't want to see it again. Susa Soldier can only do 1,000 damage. It looks bad, but it's fine. Yeah, bring control into level 5 was the play we wanted to see. She disagreed with us. I don't know why. It's the right play, but she disagrees. Shining Angel is going to go through with 1,900 attack, and that's really good damage. This duel is really tight. This is a very good duel between the king and an obelisk blue duelist. All right, Susa is here. Susa is going to get slightly stronger for a short amount of time. MST says that I'd rather take the 500 burn and just take 50 damage. So she will be taking 50. Yeah, that drops her down to 800. An Ukazi could destroy her, but... Instead of, oh, is she out of Silent Swordsman level 3s? Did she draw them all? I can't remember the beginning of this duel. It's been a long one. Uh, I would just go with, uh, oh, is that enough damage? Oh, no. Was that top deck enough? It wasn't. It wasn't enough. You got to be a little careful. This is a close game. Tori Sousa Soldier cannot protect them. It's not strong enough. And even if it was, it doesn't stay on the field. Dawn Knight throws away Silent Swordsman level 5. It's unnecessary. And this is the end of the duel. I think she's going to do it with her mini boss monster, the Silent Swordsman level 5. I think Blair just took this duel. The tribute is in. Silent Swordsman level 5 slashes him down. And Tori is dealt with. All right. I will now go over here. And I am forced to now tell you more about uh, Tori's situation. So, let's get back to our bracket real quick, just so we know who's up next. Up next is going to be Gerard and Chaz. Blair did an amazing job against Tori, though. Very good duel, though. I, I enjoyed that one. Uh, we got Gerard versus Chaz. So, for this one, Tori states that he was in the power plant with Jinzo. His alibi is that he was with Jinzo, devising a plan on how to give Jinzo a real form or a host. They both, he states that him and Jinzo did not do it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get back into our tournament. The prediction isn't going? What do you mean the prediction isn't going? Is this, tw like Twitch is having problems. There's no way this isn't. Here, I'll try. I'll try to say Blair. Uh, guys, he's, he's right. There's something wrong. Twitch is broken. Can anybody hear me? 
Can anybody hear me? Anybody? Hello? Um, I will not be continuing until I'm... Okay, it's working. It went through. Did Twitch just have a hiccup? Okay, because it's not my internet. I'm st I could still go on, like, YouTube and stuff, so I know it's not my internet. I just want to make sure... It's definitely Twitch today. 100% Twitch today. This kind of sucks. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go ahead and just continue. We'll see how it goes. We'll just see how it goes. Yeah, Twitch is the murderer. Let's go with that one. I like that. Twitch is the murderer. Let's go find Gerard and Chaz and have these two duel each other. Sorry about technical difficulties. I am not, uh... I, I may get paid by Twitch, but I am not a part of Twitch. I don't get to make decisions for them. If I did, Twitch would, uh, probably be cancelled very quickly. But, if I didn't, uh... This is what happens. So where is Gerard? Mostly because I would just funnel all the money into my pocket. <laughs> That's why they would be destroyed if I was in charge. There we go. Let's go ahead and start the duel. Oh, that's a shame. That's even harder. Thanks to Twitch, we have a second layer of challenge. Apparently, the stream can buffer sometimes because of how bad it is today. And that means that my clues for you guys might get buffered. But I'm not going to type them down. You just have to live with it. You have to, if, you, if you can't hear me, you got to blame Twitch. I'd rather you yell at Twitch. You can't see? I, it's, it's on the screen. If you can't see, that's heartbreaking. Alright, let's see. Chaz is there. And... Oh, if you want me to repeat Tori's clue, I can repeat it. <clears throat> and... Uh, who's the other one? Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm still looking for the other character. Then I'll, I'll do the other stuff. Where Gerard's face is hard to find. Not many G characters. Not many Gs. It's Grandpa and Gerard and Goro. Oh, wow. He actually got to Vermillion Sparrow. I'm honestly impressed with Gerard. Good job, buddy. So, yeah. The winner was Blair. Tori's clue was that he was in the power plant with Jinzo devising plans to give him a real form. But they were both in the power plant together. And that is it. If you uh, heard that or did not hear that, that's the last time. Yeah, Jinzo is definitely the one doing this. He's controlling the electric waves, destroying Twitch. All right, Vermi oh, he's baiting. He's ver he's baiting it. He's super baiting it. And Rush recklessly comes through. Rush recklessly is going in. Four hundred. There it goes. That looks good. He could totally get to his new form. If he wants to, he could fuse. Okay, he doesn't want to fuse. He just wants damage. Gerard's in a little bit of trouble. It cost him his whole hand just to get that fusion monster. And that fusion monster, even though it is stronger than most of Chaz's regular cards, uh, it was destroyed by a rush recklessly. So, yikes. We have ourselves a W-Wing Catapult. We uh, might go to a fusion. We're just going to unite. Okay. Weird that we're unionizing here, but we'll see. I don't know if unionizing was the best play when you could have just done more damage, but I guess it wasn't for game anyway. Oh, it's over. Gerard is going to lose game number one. Gerard is going to lose game number one. And the game winning attack will be a limiter removal. Be Tiger Jet at 4,000 damage. Okay, there we go. We have ourselves a victory. We're going to move into game number two. Moving into game number two. Gerard really needs to win this just so that he doesn't have to give up any information. Though, I don't know if he has much to give. We'll see. Coming in from the hand, we have V-Tiger Jet and a bunch of other crap that does not exactly matter. 
We have Resurrection of Chakra. That's his best card. I don't know if he's going to be able to summon it, though. V I like that. V-Tiger Jet the Tormentor. V-Tiger Jet the Tormentor goes in, and maybe even we'll have a Rush Recklessly to protect it. I do like that. That is a very good play from the Chaz. The Chaz's hand can be very good. Senju is here. Okay, he might have Chakra. Does he have enough stars to make it? He has enough stars. Here we go, everybody. He uses the Chakra to create the Chakra. His boss monster. A 2450 beater with no effect. That is his boss. That is what he got. That he's going to graduate with that. All right. V-Tiger Jet is still there, though. Yeah, you see, one Saku kind of ruins your whole boss monster thing. But you could always fuse, so there you go. 200 damage comes through. 1,600 damage is following right after that. And we just have ourselves a set. Okay. I think this duel is over. I think if this man does not stop you, you're going to get Ojama. You're going to special... Ah, oh, you didn't get Ojama. If you got Ojama, it would have been cool. Raimundo. Oh, you're going all in, even though you will uh, totally win the duel. Gotcha. All right. That is it, everybody. Chaz Princeton just destroys Gerard. Gerard gets completely wrecked, everyone. And Chazzy Boy continues on in the tournament. So we're going to move Gerard down. We're going to go find Chaz's face. And we are going to see who's up next. For those of you that are curious about Gerard's little hint slash whatever is going on, Gerard states that uh, he was in the mess hall of the Slifer Red Dorm eating food. And that he also states he did not do it. I just want to graduate. That is what he says. All right. Dark Magician Girl is up next. Dark Magician Girl is going to be taking on Ishiki. So let's see what happens. Will Dark Magician Girl win or will it be Ishiki? For a character like Ishiki, this is probably going to be the best day of his life. Just because of what he's kind of becoming. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start this duel. And we're going to go ahead and check it out. So, Dark Magician Girl, Ashiki. Let's get them on here. She's ready to duel. I just need Ashiki. And Ashiki's got the Gold Sarcophagus. He really wants a level up for some reason. How does he know? How does the AI know he needs a level up specifically in two turns? Swords of Revealing Light will hold on to the field for now. Alright, we got one there. Silent Swordsman. Oh, he already leveled up. He didn't need it. Silent uh, Magician level 8 is here. It ignores swords. And they both get to special summon. Dark Magician Girl gets Dark Magician Girl and you get yourself area. Okay, great play from Ashiki. He is immune to spells, just like Silent Swordsman, and is going to be going in. Dark Hole won't work. I'm warning you, do not do this. I'm trying to help you, dude. Don't, don't do it. I'm trying to help. Let me help you out there, Leaky. You are a cop right now, and nobody's going to help you. <laughs> Let me help you out by telling you that people, what they tell you, that's all you're going to get. If someone could substantiate their story, somebody would. That's the only way you can understand. Okay, now you know what a dark hole might be worth it. Just do it. Just do it. Who cares about silent swords? Uh, silent magician? Just do it. It's the right play. Thank God, dark magician girl. Thank God for that. Silent magician's just a busted card. We all can agree on that. All right. Old Vindictive is here, and Old Vindictive did stop him. Unless this guy has another Silent Swordsman level 4, with that level up he did search, um, it won't matter. Pretty good hand, uh, I mean, comeback card right there, but honestly, it's going to be tough for Dark Magician Girl to come back out, out of this. She's in a bad spot. 14 comes through, Saku won't let it. Ishiki still has field advantage if he wants to set. Okay, yeah, still has field advantage. Dark Magician Girl needs a monster. That You know what? That's a nice card. Not going to work in this case. That is a very funny card. It just won't work in this case. Let's try something else. He got Asa. Asa's definitely going to work in this case. He took 1850. Doesn't look too good. Ugh. All right. 
right, Dark Magician Girl not looking too good. Okay, she's still in the duel, but unless she draws a Monster Reborn, I think I'm going to have to call it as her loss. Let's see what she top decks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, no, no, call it as her loss. That's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Get her, uh, get her out of here. Give Ishiki game number one. All right, game one goes to Ishiki for sure. 100% for sure. That was sad. That was sad. You found a way to come back just for a little bit and it did not matter. All right, let's go ahead and get into game number two. Going into game number two, we're going to hope for the best. Just see what we can get out of this. Will Dark Magician Girl get wrecked again, or will Ashiki not get a freaking crazy combo in his hand? Pato Greed will start this duel. We draw two new cards, and we're just going to set some stuff on the floor. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Dark Magician Girl with an extremely basic start. Her opponent plays a card. It's gone. Any other cards you want to play? Okay, some traps. Very good. Ashiki loses one of his better cards, and uh, yeah. MST's going to come through. MST's going to hit him. Oh, you hit Saku. That's a good hit. And Magician Circle. They're both special summoning. We got Dark Magician Girl. We got uh, what's the what's the wind one called? Winda, probably. I, I would assume. All right. There we go. 2,000 from the Dark Magician Girl. She summoned herself, so she's at big advantage. I was just talking about Monster Born. I don't think an 1850 monster will make the difference, though. Just saying, Ashiki. I mean, I get you're at least trying to clear the field, but at the same time, it's not going to work out in your favor. It was still probably worth it, just not going to work out in your favor there. Dark Magician Girl looks like she has a much better hand this time around, and her opponent seems to be much worse. It's like the tables have turned. Her name is Wynn? Of course her name is Wind. Or win. Or wine. I don't know. All right. Call of the Haunted comes through. We're bringing back the Water Girl. Water Girl's just going to attack again. Saku says no. I might have just let her attack. You might as well let her thin out your deck. You don't care if she lives. Dark Magician Girl, you're finally breaking through all these monsters he keeps special summoning, and that card's very helpful. Magician's Valkyria is here to protect the other Magician cards. And goodbye, Asa. And hello, damage. Ashiki is in a lot of trouble. Maybe I should look at their list to find out what they need to say. Alright, Fisher comes through. Oh, Valkyria goes in, and Dark Magician Girl goes in. Ashiki's in a lot of trouble now. Why would you play that in attack mode? You had a freaking old Vindictive right there. You could have just flipped him this turn. There is no reason to play that card in attack mode. I can't think of a single one. Oh, we got the formula of magic. The formula of magic is here. Magician Circle is going to special summon on both sides. The lock has been created. The girl has been destroyed. The formula is helping. And the final attacks are coming in. All you had to do was flip. That's all I'm saying. All you had to do is flip. And you would have been fine. Instead, you decided to be an idiot, and that's just upsetting. Breaker. Breaker is a lot better. Just use him, break the trap card just in go. Four. Okay. Uh, the duel's up in the air, apparently. I was incorrect. We're playing the top deck game. Yeah! Let's play the top deck game. All right, top deck game. He got an 1850 beater. The 1850 beater goes in. The 1850 beater does its job. Draw. We have... That's not going to be enough. <laughs> I guarantee it. I don't know if Dark Magician Girl runs burn cards, but this man is coming back. 1850 goes in again. Beautiful. Monster of Born goes there. Monster of Born gets Dark Magician Girl. That is the boss card of the deck. Dark Magician Girl goes for 2,000. That was a great top deck, but Hida is gone. So, what are you going to get now, is Shiki? You need Asylum Magician to level up. That's like your only hope. Yes, the end of the duel. That is not your only hope. All right, just like that, Dark Magician Girl Obliterate. <laughs> oh, she has an animation. Hell yeah. Dark Magician Girl animation, dark burning magic, and that is it. 
The winner is Dark Magician Girl herself. She walked onto the field, did an attack, and now she gets the victory. We're moving into game number three. We're going to see who's going to get luckier in game three. Will it be Ishiki or will it be Dark Magician Girl? If I had to place my bet, I would say Dark Magician Girl. I think he specifically has to get that level up thing to work. Gold sarcophagus, he's doing it again. He's got himself a sarcophagus. He wants a magician more than anything, even though that card right there can give him one. He wants a magician more than anything. Oh, that's a good card. All right, we're just going to summon an attack. That's very nice. He's probably going to play at least one trap card after this. Dark Magic Veil could special summon. Terrible use of your card, but at the same time, why do I care? One counter. <coughs> that monster is pretty strong and will definitely defeat you. But if you attack with it, they can use Magician Circle. And with Magician Circle, they create the lock. You're on lockdown now. Not only in the not only are you locked down in the dual stadium, but you're locked down in this duel with a dual spirit. All right. The attack goes through. Magician's Valkyria did its job. Hello, Shining Angels for Day. All the angels are going away now. Silent Magician time doesn't make a difference. Oh, you, you just let her keep it? You let him keep two Silent Magicians? That was a bad play. That was very bad. You do not want to do that. And he just drew a third, which is hilarious. Oh, yeah, you lost. You're, you're going to lose. Bottomless. Okay, never mind. That's very good to get rid of that. Okay, it could have been way worse. You all know that. It could have been way worse. Please, for the love of God, don't set it yet. Because you're going to play Dark Magician Girl. All right, Dark Magician Girl is here. And that girl is going to have to get through all of these other girls. Damn. That's a lot of female dual, uh, female cards you have to get rid of. Jesus. I feel bad for Ashiki. This is probably the worst day of his life. It started out as the best because he got to duel a dual spirit. But, oh, okay. Well, Dark Magician Girl has gone. The lock is holding him. Too bad there's no lock for these freaking uh, uh, possessed characters. That car can actually do the job, though. With 1900 attack, he can start ripping through the monsters. Interesting. I am starting to realize um, everybody that is in chat that can hear me right now, say the word bacon. Or type it, obviously. Oh, yeah, there's a huge delay now. There's such a big delay between me and you that nobody is typing this word at the time I've asked you to do it. So I now know just how far back you guys are. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap, you guys, compared to me, are 35 seconds back. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, there we go. Dark Magician Girl destroys Ishiki. There we go. Good job. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get back into the game. Uh, Ishiki is the loser, which means he has to give out any information he has. Ashiki states he was in the raw yellow dorm and that he was simply staring at his cards. Being in the raw yellow dorm, there were other people like Professor Satir that did see him. Ashiki has an alibi. So let's go ahead and move over and see who's up next. All right, the next fight is Dorothy versus Alexis. Dorothy. Oh, no, I know it's not the internet. I have no problems with my internet. I even tested it midstream. No problems. Upload speed of like 40, uh, of like 40 megabytes per second or whatever. Um, there we go. We got Dorothy. And I need Alexis. Okay. Alexis. Alexis. 
There she is. And remember, everybody, Alexis is using a new deck today. Alexis is using a new deck, so let's see how it goes. Now, Dorothy, she is a brand new duelist, so I understand if you are hesitant to bet on her or against her. It's a weird situation, but we'll see what happens. Of course, Jaden's in this. This is a tournament happening on Duel Academy Island. He's going to be in most of those. So let me find out what they're going to be saying about each other. Okay, yeah. We have ourselves a Nova Summoner. That's always good. Senju is going to get yourself a card. Dakini is there. And Cyber Angel Dakini is going to be used to summon Cyber Angel... Uh... Dakini. Okay, well, there you go. She happened to start with two Dakinis. Goodbye, Nova Summoner. And uh, you're in a lot of danger. Okay. You're in a lot of danger, Dorothy. That is a horrible start for you, I will say. Nova Summoner in attack mode again, you crazy person. That doesn't work the way you thought it does. Cyber Angel Ritual says no. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. You see, the thing about this is that thing does piercing. There's no reason for it to be in defense mode. That card does piercing. Okay, Element Valkyrie will hold the field. Good for you. Dakini's effect. Here we go. Dakini's back in the hand. Have some fun. And we got a draw. That card ain't going to help you right now, at least. Soul Purity and Light might help. It might not. You didn't even attack. Okay. Dakini, you want to just do piercing? Yeah, you're just going to do piercing. Even with a lowered stat, you can win by piercing. Even with lowered stats, you're going to win this duel by piercing. That's so sad. You have to go... Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a chance. The smallest of chance up. You just killed yourself. All right, that is it. Game one goes to Alexis Rhodes. Perfect victory. Dorothy is not very good at Yu-Gi-Oh, I think we can all agree. If everybody in chat, let's just let's just all agree she ain't so good at the duel monsters. We'll go into game two now. Oh, let me get some water. Okay, the prayer is here. Monju is here. I guarantee you want to save your Dakini this time. You don't want to use it too early. Oh, you're using it too early. And by getting rid of these two monsters, we are going to use E to 10 and Thousand Arms. And that gives us Dakini. But in this case, it matters because look at this. E to 10, you want to show off your ability? All ritual monsters you control gain a thousand attack and defense. Now that Dakini is a god. That Dakini is literally your god now. Bow before her. Also, she could summon Skull Guardian, but it wouldn't make a difference. And it, it would not matter. You could summon your boss right now and it would not matter. Using the Wing Weaver, she summons her boss monster. The strongest card, which is Wing Weaver, in her deck. The Skull Guardian. With 2,500 defense holding the person back. And now Wing Weaver, the actual strongest card in her deck, is going to go in and doble passe. You take 1,400, you're almost dead off of just that. It's over. You're almost dead off of the doble, and now Manju can attack you directly. Manju, end this duel. And her pathetic life. And Saku, you had to Saku Manju, but it doesn't work, you fool. All right, just like that. Alexis Rhodes takes out her opponent. Dorothy has lost. All right. Dorothy has lost, which means I do have to give out another hint. So let's take a peek. That was extremely quick. Holy crap. Alexis switching decks has really improved you, I got to say. And you weren't that bad before. You were pretty decent before, but damn. So losing this duel is Dorothy. Dorothy was at the card shop selling cards specifically to Tanaka. Specifically to Tanaka. 
So we're going to go ahead and get back to our bracket and we're going to see who's up next. Up next is going to be Chairman Bella versus Tayo. All right, Chairman Bella versus Tayo. Hmm. Where are they? Got one of them. And Chairman Bella. Tayo. Perfect. And I'm going to look for their faces right now, so don't you worry. Chairman Bella is ready. Tayo's a T-name, so give me a long time to find him. And Tayo is ready. Perfect. Manju is going to get Legendary Flame Lord. And we're going to get the boss very early on in this duel. Everyone say hello to the Legendary Flame Lord. This is Bella's boss monster. Probably going to waste Premature. Yep, we're wasting Premature. Solar Flare is not bad. It's just you shouldn't use it. You should save it for Legendary Flame Lord. Troop Dragon will try to hold the field for Tayo. Tayo's Dragon's always trying to stand strong. Who knows how long they'll last, though. Saku gets rid of... See, this is why we save our Premature Burial, Chairman Boa. Legendary Flame Lord's actually a really busted card. It makes it so your opponent won't want to play spell cards for crying out loud. But now let's see what happens. Are they going to play spells? They're going to start playing spells. Although, now that I see that, yeah, they would have killed your legendary either way. Never mind. You were going to lose either way. Oh. Oh. Bella's in trouble. All right. Bella's in a lot of trouble. No, but if you've never seen Legendary Flame Lord in your life, that's because you never played Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy on the Game Boy Advance. If you have, you would have seen it before. Blazing Impachi is depressingly in defense mode. I would just go in against that freaking troop dragon. And 500 burn, 2400 attack. That's good at all. Harpy's Feather Duster would have made a difference a little long, you know, a little while ago, but not anymore. It's too damn late. Bella, you're losing game number one. Graceful Charity kicks in. Graceful Charity throws away two unnecessary cards. Boss Monster is here. Luster Dragon number two. The strongest card in Tanaka's uh, uh, Tayo's deck will win him the duel. Good job. And we're going to go ahead and get into game number two. Tayo's Dragons could win, and then I'm going to have to give you information on Chairman Bella. Ooh, okay, we got our Ritual Spell right back. There's nothing wrong with that. Spirit of the Flames is a very good fire monster. It can even hold back a Luster Dragon when you're aggressive, or beat a Luster Dragon when you're aggressive. But not with a rising air current. Crawling dragon can even beat you. That's sad. That's really sad when a crawling dragon beats you. If I were you, I'd play Thestalos and never look back. Alright, Thestalos. Let's see if we can hit a monster card. We hit a monster card. That's 400 burn. It's mostly just nice to have a card that can, you know, thin your opponent's hand like that. That's a very nice card. Good play by Chairman Bella. Hopefully she'll get a victory here. We've had a lot of Game 3s today. I'm starting to think that everyone here is pretty evenly matched. But that is the boss monster. And there goes your only trap card. And it would have given you back Festalos. Yeah, Mr. Luster Dragon seems to be playing real hard today. Mm-hmm. Fisher is terribly used all you had oh i guess troop dragon would have special summon troop dragon no matter what you wouldn't have been able to win by fisher yep that's that's a shame luster dragon number two hits ufo turtle ufo turtle we need a lot of things we need well that's fine um hi there nightbird we need a lot of things though Ugh. 
none of these things. None of these things. Who here voted for Chairman Bella? Raise your hands. I want to I wanna laugh at you personally. Not really. I feel bad for you. I, I would have voted for her too, to be honest. This, this guy's strongest card is a level 6 normal monster. Yeah. Sorry, Bernog. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, UFO Turtle's going away. Mass Dragon's going away. They both have to pick new targets. Troop Dragon's there to stall. UFO Turtle's not going to allow it to stall. Troop Dragon still stalls no matter what you do. Yep, that's about right. So, uh, Tayo, what are you feeling like doing right now? You, you going to end this duel? Yeah, 1,500. Solar Flare. Oh, what an idea! Holy crap, that's a good idea. Thank you. Oh, don't do that. Don't do it. Good, good. Yes. Yes, good. There we go. The stream is definitely not fixing itself because it took you it took me this long to see you say you reacted to me this time. Yeah. Oh, and now you just said no. So by the time you hear this, my god, I can't even imagine. That's insane. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Bella found a way. Bella found a way. She's going to do it. She's got the infinite lock of 1500 burn. It's so perfect. As long as she never uses her ritual summon, she's good. This is so good. What a great play from Bella to make sure she doesn't lose this tournament. Don't do it. Oh, no. Just because you got an equip spell doesn't make it worth it. Don't play your monster. You need three spell cards for him to be good. It takes three spell cards for him to be good, not one. Oh, you dumb idiot. You dumb, dumb idiot. You had it. You had everything you needed, Bella. You had everything you needed. Why did you do this? You had so... It was 1,500 burn a turn. You gave up 1,500 burn a turn. And if you had one more spell counter, yes, you could have won. But still, you fool. I, the second she drew Black Pendant, I was like, no, she's going to do it. She's going to make up. She's like, oh, but then we'll have to shame attack points. Just like, you idiot, who cares? All right, Manju's there trying to stall. She wants Solar Flare Dragon to survive just so that she can do 500. She's throwing this duel pretty hard. Tribute comes through. He's got two now. His mom lets him have two. 400 life points left. She has nothing left. There is no card in her deck that can win her this duel. Oh, it's over! He won the duel a year. He could have won at any time. He could win at any time. Get her out of here. Chairman Bella has lost. Now, Chairman Bella was put in charge to find out who was the person that did the murder. Therefore, she does have a little more information than other people. So I hope everyone, even though you're behind, I hope you pay attention to this clue. Chairman Bell. I don't know why I keep calling her Bella. Her name's Bell. Sorry. Bell believes a faculty member is holding out information. She did question the faculty when she was put to the task of finding out who was the person that did the murder. Apparently, there is a faculty member that is holding out on information. So, there you go. That's all you need to know. Now, let us get into the next fight. The next fight is going to be... Go, Tayo. Jinzo versus Zane. That's rough. That's going to be rough. Both these characters are pretty scary. Both of these characters are pretty scary. So, let me go ahead and find these characters, and then we'll get this duel started real quick. Don't want to keep you guys waiting, especially since you're already got a delay, so it's even worse. Uh, let's see here. And we are going to go ahead and start the duel. So, Zane Truesdale versus Jinzo. Let's see how these two characters do against each other. My odds would go to maybe the new Jinzo. No, Zane's way stronger. Zane can overpower Jinzo. That's the only thing. 
Because Zane can overpower Jinzo, it's one of the few characters that can probably beat Jinzo pretty easily. Dark Hole. Dark Hole is a horrible use. That was very, very bad use of Dark Hole. There you go. Emissary of the Afterlife. We have ourselves a Dark King of the Abyss. Fun. Cyber Phoenix comes through. Cyber Phoenix does 1,200. An interesting start from these two duelists. A Dark Hole was horribly used, and uh, the other guy, he, didn't, he lost some life points, but overall didn't lose much else. Two of the best traps in Zane's deck are gone! And the Dark King can't beat Cyber Phoenix, but it's there. And 1400 comes through. 1400 will do good damage. No Jinzo. I thought now that he had a chance to tribute, he would get Jinzo, but no luck there. All right, Cyber Phoenix goes through. Cyber Phoenix is good. And Thousand Eyes Idol is gone. And 1200 damage is dealt. Beautiful. Fe okay, now do you have Jinzo? That'd be really good. Hey, Jinzo walks onto the field. He walks himself on there, and we'll see how he does. There we go. Now, what are you going to do, Zane? I should have set your hex sealed. You're an idiot. And a, a three-legged zombie is here. Shining Angel, please just try to get something useful. Never mind. And Call of the Haunted. Oh, I love that. You guys thought Dark King of the Abyss was bad. You, you haven't seen the three-legged zombie yet. It's right there, but you guys haven't seen it. People in chat that are behind. Oh, 1,600. Okay. 1,100 from the zombie guy. That's completely fine. 2,400 there. That's completely fine. And 500 more. For those of you curious why he has Thousand Eyes Idol but no Restrict, I actually gave him that card because that's a card he had in the anime. That is the only reason. You know what Zane's about to do, everybody. Other than this part. This part's very good for Zane as well, but we already see what Zane's about to do. Zane is going to fuse. And by getting rid of the Spear... Oh, Spear Barrier wasn't going to work yet anyway. Light Hex Sealed summons the Cyber Twin Dragon. And Cyber Twin Dragon's wrecking the opponent. Goodbye, Emissary of the Afterlife. Alright, Future Fusion's coming through. Future Fusion looking real good. Battle phase goes through. Larvae's just there to stall. I don't think Zane has a chance of losing this duel. He's so freaking strong. The power... Oh, Ectoplasma! You're going to try and force Zane to, you know, devour his own monster. That's at least a good idea, but your life... Oh, and Zane's life points are really low. But it might not work the way you think it's going to work. Cyber and Dragon is a choice. Uh-oh. And Spirit Barrier will not allow you to do damage to the, the, to the character until now. 2,800. And now, Call of the Haunted will end this pathetic duel. Cyber Dragon attacks. Zane takes game number one. Duel one goes to Zane. We are now going to be moving into duel number two. I will go ahead and start this now. I understand you guys are behind, but I just assume you'll catch up. All right, that's a oh, That hand is so good. Holy crap. Oh, he's got Cyber Larvae to stall, Swords to stall, and he's got Future Fusion. It does not get much better than that. He can make it. He's going to make it. Oh my god, Zane, you're too goddamn strong. You don't even need this. You don't need to go this hard. You could have saved one in your hand just in case. Oh, Jinzo's just chilling for now. Here comes the Future Fusion. We're going to get a Cyber End Dragon, which means the other Future Fusion is not going to work. Makes sense. This is why we don't use both, but still. We're going to just continue to set. Zane is one of the strongest duelists, so it makes sense for Jinzo to be in trouble. Future Fusion. 
Future Fusion will now summon the boss monster. Everybody say hello to Cyber and Dragon! One of the coolest cards there are. Future, other Future Fusion is useless. Cyber and Dragon goes in. That's 2400 damage. Afterlife is going to give him a new card. He's got three-legged zombie. Beautiful. Obviously, Jinzo needs to top deck one of his best cards, which would be Dark Hole or a specific card that... Oh, there it is. He got it. Holy shit, he got it. <laughs> oh my god, he actually drew it. And he can't get through swords, so none of this matters. This other stuff won't matter. But because he did that, Zane lost everything. The future fusion is worthless. Everything is worthless. Uh, Dark Hole back. That's not even a worthy Dark Hole, in my opinion. That is so sad. That is so sad. Zane Truesdo has nothing, but he does have a Pot of Avarice, which should be able to activate. And now with that Pot of Avarice, maybe he can get himself a card he can actually use. A Light Hex Sealed. Yep, that's the best we're going to do. That is the best we're going to do. We're going to use Light Hex Sealed. We're going to beat up somebody with it. It's going to be a great time. And that is not real? We're doing that. Okay. Well, Magic Cylinder says you take 16 because you buffed your monster. Most people save their spell cards for other monsters, but sure, we'll use it on that guy. And we're going to hit Fisher because... You know what? That's a worth it just because what if he draws a prototype? You don't want him to have the ability to. Oh, but he drew that instead. That's not fair. Oh, God. He drew Cyber Dragon. That's no good. Jinzo's in trouble. Oh, Jinzo, you need to get one of your Fiend Sanctuary things into Jinzo. That is like your only hope. That is like your only hope. You're in so much trouble. Cyber Phoenix, you're an asshole. All right, Jinzo goes in. Thousand Eyes of the craziness is gone. <laughs> that top deck from Zane was so good. We're very close to the end of this duel. It looks like Zane has this in the bag. Still hasn't taken any damage. Wait, there's a trap. Your only hope is a trap card, but Cyber Phoenix will block Saku. Monster of Born. What's even in the grow? Shit, we're getting big. Oh, we're going Cyber Twin. We're going to go Cyber Twin. Do it. Cyber End Dragon couldn't end this duel, but Cyber Twin Dragon sure as hell can. Spirit Caller. He's going to save the day with Spirit Caller. Hold the field. He didn't. Oh, it's too weak. To st it, it was too weak. Ah, it probably was Sakuretsu Armor. He couldn't use it. <laughs> Oh, get wrecked, dude. Get absolutely wrecked. Zane Truesdale destroys Jinzo, which means I get to give you a Jinzo hint. Let me go ahead and get into Jinzo's paper. All right. Jinzo's hint is this. To all faculty at Duel Academy Island, all of you know that I am on this island. You have known I've been on this island for a long time. I have made my demands clear that I would like myself a body. Obviously, I would not kill the body I wish to take. You are all morons. There we go. And you're, bad, you're also bad at taking care of the kids, but that's coming from me, not from him. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next fight. It's time for Cyrus Truesdale versus Dimitri. Cyrus Truesdale is going to be taking on Dimitri next, and we'll see how they do. All right. This is a plot duel, technically. The decks are wrong, but it is a plot duel. Hmm, Cyrus, Cyrus. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and start this duel. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and see how these two do. I'm going to go find their faces right now. Cyrus Truesdale and Dimitri. Dimitri's coming at us with one of the most classic decks ever made. And then we got Cyrus on the other side just being Cyrus. The monster has been stolen. Fuck me! Stop doing that, AI! What is wrong with you? Who made you? Why didn't you play Slow Absorption way earlier? Who made you, AI? I swear to God. I swear to God. I I'm so mad. 
I am so mad. I, I'm looking for his face still, but holy crap. Last time that happened, I left the room because of how upsetting it was. This time, I'm going to just... I'm going to be chill. I'm doing my best to be chill. Holy crap. Yeah, can I get some stupid AI in freaking chat? I don't care which emote you use. They probably, there's like three that probably apply to this situation. All right, spell absorption, 500. Fisher goes through. Oh yeah, best move in the game. I'm gonna brain control your monster and then dark hole, and not even play the spell absorption I have in my hand before doing both of these plays. I'm just got. I'm not gonna gain a thousand life points. I'm gonna be as much of an idiot as I can be. All right, we're gonna play swords to try and stall. Good for you. Good for you. Holy crap. Thank you. I needed that. I needed that real badly. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of emotes that apply to that. Now, granted, you guys are way late because you guys are delayed today. Twitch is being really bad today. It's probably the first time I've seen Twitch be bad in a long time. But at least the people watching YouTube understand what we saw. Supercharge is a good card. Okay, there you go. Cyrus Truesdale is doing the best he can, but he must understand at this point that Swords is going to make him have a lot of trouble. And I think Dimitri's just waiting for one of his bosses. Wow! Cyrus Truesdale is willing to power bond despite the fact that he will have to take the damage and not be able to do anything back. But he has a 4600 beater. It's one of his new monsters. Everyone say hello to Cyrus's ambulance rescue roid. And with his 4600 attack point ambulance rescue roid, he's looking real good. Supercharge. Supercharge is also looking real good. Rescue roid will rescue the monster. It's back. All right, which of the Black Forest is there? Yeah, I don't think Dark Elf matters anymore. 2,500 attack is a lot. 4,600 is insane. <laughs> There's a huge difference here. And that Swords is gone. You have nothing to protect you now. You're going to hide in defense mode like a little coward, ain't you? That's right, you are. Now, granted, you did get uh, their life points really low, Dimitri, so maybe you could try to win this by burn, but we'll see. All right, and Lim oh, he's going for game. He truly believes he has game. Cyrus has 9,200 attack points. I will repeat myself. Cyrus has 9,200 attack points. That, 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 is, that is insane. Cyrus, you couldn't win the duel. You lose, sir. You're going to lose. Cyrus, after all of that, is going to lose the duel. Are you serious? It's over. Dimitri takes game number one. Despite the limit of removal, you lose because you're an idiot. All you, you spend your cards way too early. You spend them all so early. Let's not drill roid the floater. Thank you. Somebody said it. Oh my God. That's so upsetting. Let's get into game number two. That's just that's just the worst thing I've ever... Oh my god, he's so stupid. Cyrus is so stupid. Like, he plays just like he did in the show in season one. The AI makes the same mistakes the, sh the character in the show would make in season one. Alright, spell absorption. Cyrus Truesdale has Drill Roy. Drill Roy's very good. Witch of the Black Forest still works despite the Drill Roy. Mystic Plasmic Zone is going to give you a big advantage over Cyrus. Your monsters are going to be a lot stronger, and you get to heal, and you get a big power. You have 3,000 attack. That is the Blue Eyes. Dark Elf, the Blue Eyes. Supercharge is very nice, though, giving Cyrus two new cards. Drill Roid will be going to the graveyard, though. Yeah, after all this time, Cyrus is still bad at using his cards. It's crazy. So, Cyrus has Submarine Roid, which honestly is worthwhile. Just attack, go in defense mode, hide, coward. Um, you got a trap card, it better be a good one. You need some real good cards right now, I will say that. And we got Geico. Geico is here too. And 3,000 damage, that is good too. Now we got ourselves another Drill Roy. Drill Roy is attacking with limited removal. You know what? As long as you're getting rid of the Dark Elf, it does make sense. The problem is you're leaving yourself wide open. 
and you only have 3,100 life points left. So if your opponent has one monster in their hand, which we all see it, uh, this duel is over. Premature Burial comes through, and it is over. The attacks will be coming through. That's 5,000 damage on top of the 2,300 they start with. So unless Cyrus has a trap card he's been really saving, it is over! Dimitri destroys Cyrus Truesdale. Cyrus Truesdale is going down. Well, that was quick, and that means I get to easily uh, just give you out a hint. So, let us get back over to our stuff. Cyrus Truesdale, move forward. Oh, whoops, Cyrus, whoops, sorry, sorry, it's fine, I can redo this. Edit scores, Dimitri, move forward. <laughs> almost, almost messed that up there. Alright, Cyrus Truesdale hints. Oh yeah, this one was simple. Cyrus Truesdale states that he was with Jaden, making a, uh, uh, improving his deck for, you know, the next tournament they might participate in. But he was, he does state he was with Jaden. So, let's go ahead and get into the next duel. We have Sadie versus Crowler. Oh, boy. Sadie versus Crowler. Hmm. Let us see here. The wrong bets are up. Just cancel the bets, Jason. I know it's going to take you so long to find out what I said. Damn. But uh, the next duel is Sadie versus Crowler. I understand that it was hard to see because the first round messes you up a little bit. But it is Sadie versus Crowler. So you're just going to need to cancel that bet. And then um, there, there should be a way to cancel it. And then after you cancel it, just do the right bets. And while you're doing that, I'm going to continue to look for the characters. Because for some reason, these guys are very hard to find. There we go. And where's Crowler? I bet you there's a lot of people in this tournament waiting for Crowler to talk. I'm sure they're fixing the bets right now. You're fine. So let's go ahead and get into our duel. It's time for Sadie versus Crowler. And let's see what happens. All right. Sadie is ready. And Crowler is ready. Okay, I'm all set up on my side. Let's enjoy this duel. Uh... Okay, 1800 attack comes through. Shining Angel gets Forgiving Maiden. Kind of a weird choice from Sadie, but maybe there's a plan in mind. I'm sure. Actually, no, there is a plan in mind. She already figured this out. Sadie now summons Light Hex Sealed, and with this, she summons her boss monster, the St. Joan. Sadie St. Joan easily rips through uh, Crowler's monster. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, now that we've done that, Crowler's forced to play defensively. Oh, no. Hysteric Fairy is here. Hysteric Fairy attacks the rat. And the rat gets attacked again, but Crowler does leave behind one tribute. If he can get Gear Town and then tribute, it will be worthwhile. Because then he'll be able to get something like Gadgetron or even Gear Golem. But that's going to be tough to happen. Yeah, it's going to be tough. He's going to need to draw it. Ooh, he did not draw it. All right, Sadie, go get him. Go get him. All right, there we go. Nimble Mamanga, there we go. Can we get some more water? Luminous Spark. Oh, that's going to give her so much power. How are you going to come back from this? Holy crap, Crowler. Are you going to lose to Sadie? Thirty-three hundred. There we go. That is beautiful. And we have ourselves a set. 
And don't dark hole. I swear to God, Sadie, you already have game. Do not dark hole. And 3,300 damage comes through. That is absolutely beautiful. That is beautiful. Sadie will dominate in game number one. Crowler is in so much trouble. I know we're all sitting here just waiting to hear what Crowler has to say. Although I'm honestly more curious to hear what Sadie has to say. Of course, if you didn't watch any of the bios, maybe you don't, you're not curious at all on either front because you, you know, don't know what's going on. <laughs> Those that watch the bios probably understand a little bit more. All right, we got ourselves some cards. We're going to be dueling with them. Let's see what we can do. Pot of Greed's a good start from Sadie. Ooh, he got Ancient Gear Castle. They oh, he got two of them. Okay. That is a god-tier start from good old Crowler. Sadie's the one that's going to be in trouble this time. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Oh. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> she got it on the first turn. Holy crap. Holy crap, she did get it on the first turn. That is wild. Shining Angel goes through another rat. It's the same rat. That's the rat from the last duel. I swear to God. Sadie, I didn't know you could duel. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Even when I made this deck, I didn't know you could duel. That, like, that's no lie. Crowler's in so much trouble. I don't think he's going to survive much longer. Even if he got a gear golem, it wouldn't be stronger than freaking uh, St. Joan. Fisher, it isn't going to work either. Oh, he's in a bad spot. Oh, he's playing. If they're setting, you know what that means. Oh, man. Oh, man, Crowler. You are you are in trouble. Sadie has you on the ropes. She is ripping through you. The rats are doing their job, I admit. But other than that, you have nothing to your name. Your only hope is to draw a gear golem and have to you have to keep one castle on the field. Just to have enough attack points to match them. Red Gadget, for some reason, is in attack mode. Is he running out of cards in his hand? Is that why? He had, oh wait, no, it could be bait. It could be bait. The attack goes through and it's not bait. They just were running out of monsters and needed something. Oh, magic cylinder is beautiful. She takes a huge amount of damage from that magic cylinder. I bet you he wishes he had green gadget. He could have left a monster on the field if he did. Crowler, this is your best chance. You've done so much damage to her. You need a goddamn monster. Where are your tributes? Where are your tribute monsters, Crowler? What is wrong with you? She's halfway to a fusion again. I want you to know that. You have one turn left. You literally have one turn left. What are you going to do about it? You draw Gadgetron, which is not strong enough. Okay, and you lost. You, you lose the duel, sir. You're going to lose. You're, you're, look, unless, you're, you have, unless you have Mirror Force, which I can pretty much guarantee you don't. It's over. Just get him out of here. Crowler loses the duel. All right. All right. Crowler loses the duel. Sadie has embarrassed him, which honestly, good good for her. I like Sadie. Good for her. She actually summoned her monster properly. She played the duels really well. Um, she beat the literally obelisk blue professor who finally does have a win on his record because he beat freaking Admiral. And that guy just sails a ship for crying out loud. So Sadie will move forward and... We're going to be getting into the Crowler hint. So, moving into the Crowler hint. Crowler swears he was attacked in his office by somebody or something. But since the light was off, he could not tell who. But after he screamed and scared off the attacker, he could see a glint of something red, pink, orange, yellow, something in that range. Something in that red range. Red, orange, yellow. He couldn't tell completely because it was it happened too quickly. So whoever attacked him in his mind was wearing something red, blue, or uh, red, not blue, sorry, red, orange, yellow, something in that color spectrum. Now let me move on with the tournament. So the next fight is going to be Lyman Banner versus Mindy. Oh, crap. Mindy versus Banner. That's going to be a rough one. Like, this might be a rough one to watch. Both of these characters are very passive. Yellow is kind of on that spectrum as well, that, that color spectrum. If you guys use Photoshop a lot, you might understand what I'm talking about. 
No, it's because when they left the room, when they left the room, they could barely see it. The attacker did have to leave the room. All right, let's see here. Ah. Hmm. Do I not have Mindy's deck anymore? Where'd she go? I swear I have Mindy's deck in here somewhere. Oh, there she is. Found her. Okay, we're good. Sorry about that. I got worried. I'm like, wait, what happened to Mindy's deck? Mindy's deck should be right here. I know it should be here, so I was freaking out a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and see what's up next. I'm going to go find these characters. We got Mindy. We got Banner. Should have a good duel between these two. All right, Banner is ready. Mindy is next. Oh, almost put Missy by accident. Accident. Whoops. All right, there we go. I like that people are just putting bacon in the chat now. <laughs> that makes that makes me laugh. Oh, that's great. And we have ourselves Reflect Bounder. TT goes through. Lots of trap cards from both players. We already know what they both can do. And she's not playing her burn cards, despite the fact having an advantage right now with field. She has her strongest monster. It is the Firewing Pegasus. The Firewing Pegasus will have help with the New York Rat. And his scapegoats will hold the field. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And Sakuretsu Armor gets rid of it again. Wow, you are not going to be able to keep your monster, are you, Mindy? You're in a little bit of trouble there. MST, what are you losing? Ah, Trap Hole with Spikes is actually pretty good. So that's a big loss for Mindy. That is one of her burn cards. Granted, she's going up against an opponent that's not very aggressive. So this is not a good situation to be in. I feel like Mindy's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Morphing Jar, you monster. He got another one. That's cheat. No, you lost Pot of Greed. Oh, that's good. She got Creepy Cody with Soul Tiger. That's a little bit better. All right, Premature Burial comes in. Firewing Pegasus, there we go. Firewing Pegasus goes on of a bitch. We already knew it was going to happen, but I was a little hope we can get something else. All right, New York Rat, it's gone. Oh, put it down. Put it down. Just Desserts, it's gone. Reflet Bounder's good. And Creepy Coney sits there, even though it's better as a flip monster. So terrible, terrible use. Ugh, dice jar in attack mode makes no sense. That is probably... Can we say that is the worst use of Premature Burial? Oh my god, it did... T yeah, that might have been the worst use of Premature Burial I've ever seen. How about you guys? Have you seen something that bad before? You know, when you catch up 30 seconds later? Oh wait, no, no, wait, no. Mindy's challenging. By playing vanilla in attack mode, Mindy is challenging. The worst play so far. This is pretty wild. Oh god, this whole duel could be over right now. A six! It's over! The winner of duel number one is Mindy! The winner of duel one is Mindy. That is wild. Both all those plays were really stupid. All of those plays were really stupid, but once you you guys haven't caught up yet, but once you get to it, my god. My god. <laughs> Holy crap, that was bad. A rolling a six like that, that's just that's just wild. Graceful Charity comes through. Graceful Charity gets rid of some cards we don't need. And we'll see. I did not expect the second dice jar just because we had premature burial grab something. Uh, like, it grab a dice jar, I just assumed it wouldn't be a problem. Premature burial gets uh, nothing. It gets nothing.
And Banner just continues to use his jar deck the way you're supposed to, playing defense mode. Mindy answers by playing Nimble Mamonga. Mindy's my Nimble Mamonga is in the grave now. Giant Rat is here. Giant Rat is going to have to take on its clone, the Clone Rat. <laughs> Not Cyber Jar. Oh, my God. All right. New cards for everybody. What do we get? Nope. That's in your hand. That's a good card. That's good. That's good. That's good. All the cards you got were good. Every card Mindy got was good. Oh, God, that's annoying. That's so annoying. Oh, my God. Every jar. Every different jar. He got five different jars. How do you get five different jars? No copies, no tributes, no nothing. He just got five jars, all of different stuff. Also, this is the best Just Desserts I've ever seen in my entire life, but still. That was probably the most beneficial Just Desserts I've ever seen. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Five, the five jar- Yo, what? You had all the jars you could ever ask for, you dark hole! All the jars! Every single jar! And you dark hole them! You deserve to lose, Banner. Get him out of here. Get him out. I can't believe it. It was wild enough that we got to see five different jars. And then he sets a copycat. Jesus Christ, that's so stupid. Oh, that's so stupid. Call the Haunted comes through. Reflect Bounder's still a good monster, I'll admit. MST to get rid of Dark Snake. Yeah, you have to. You'll lose the duel if you don't. So, Banner holds on to the duel thanks to getting rid of the Dark Snake. If this Dark Snake was still here, we'd be in so much trouble. Oh, yeah. There's some real stupid stuff. Go oh, my God. You drew another Dark Snake. Okay, there's still hope. There's still a little hope. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Vanilla will hold the field. You don't have to go Pegasus. You could just set Creepy Coney. I'm just saying. I'm a fan, Mindy. I'm just saying. You could win with just Creepy Coney alone. You don't have to do your other thing. Okay, we're going to use this thing. We're going to take some damage. But uh, we're putting our opponent very low so that, you know, when the time comes, the Dark Snake Syndrome will take them. Unless this man draws a jar that can pop face-up spells and traps, it's over. I'm going to assume it's over. One battle will end this duel. Hell, that burn almost ended it. The next burn will end it. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Firewind Pegasus, we're playing passively all of a sudden. You're just going to win the duel by burn. Okay, she has decided to win the duel by burn, but instead she's set... If you set Creepy Coney, you had two ways to win. But you didn't set Creepy Coney, so that was weird. Here we go! Using the Dark Snake Syndrome, we are going to destroy the opponent. Goodbye. The 300 burn will make all of the difference. Well, 600 burn will make all of the difference. Go. 300. End the duel. And that is it. Mindy 2 owes her opponent. Lyman Banner. Lyman Banner is done for. So let's go ahead and let's uh, get back to our bracket. And while we're back at our bracket, I must give you Lyman Banner's hint. Lyman Banner's hint. Okay. Interesting. This one's better. Banner admits he knows where some of the obelisk blue missing students went. He knows what happens to happened to them. But says that he is not a murderer and did not kill Rizo. Specifically mentions that he did not kill Rizo, but he does know where some of the missing students went or are. And just like that, Banner is going to be taken into custody. Now, he is not automatically into your custody, but it, as far as our lore is concerned, admitting to that means that he is definitely going into custody. So let's go ahead and let's get us, uh, get us the next duel. The next duel will be our brand new test animal, Wheeler. And Wheeler will be going up against Briar. All right, Wheeler will be going up against Briar. 
And let's see these two duel. It should be a fun duel between our uh, test... Uh, I think he's a test ape or a test uh, monkey. I can't tell. Because they have a card in the game called test ape that looks just like him. That's why I say that. Um, but I do not know. And Briar, we already know. This guy's a dinosaur man. He uses dino cards in our tournament. And it looks like Briar's doing a damn fine job using those dinos as we speak. Wheeler, on the other hand, needs some time because he's such a far name. There we go. All right, and we got ourselves Giant Rat and 2850. Magic Cylinder is there. Giant Rat returns, and we got a tribute. Dark Dry Sarah. Oh, it's dark. Good job, Wheeler. <laughs> Holy crap! It's it's over. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. Wheeler got rid of all of his monsters. Now he's got Bazoo the Soul Eater. Bazoo the Soul Eater will devour one soul, do a ton of damage thanks to Beast Fangs, or sorry, Poison Fangs, and we're swapping back. We're gonna do a more damage. Holy crap! Wheeler in one turn takes his opponent below half, and his opponent doesn't even have a hand. That is pretty crazy. All right, Nimble Bamanga is here, and Mad Sword Beast didn't stand a chance. Ugh. That's brutal. That's brutal. This guy's doing really good. Black Brachio! That card can totally turn the whole duel around. Okay. With Black Brachio, you have you have gained re control of the duel all over again. Wheeler, don't do it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Wheeler! Are you serious? Leave him alone! Oh, the Green Baboon combo play! What a very good duelist! Holy crap! Wheeler is officially a good duelist with some good AI brain. I gotta give it to him. Good on him. Good job. So, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna be going into game number two now. Well, that was, uh, that was wild. That was a wild game number one. Gillosaurus gives him Black Brachio. Very good start from Briar. Briar's going to need to come back on this one. Mmm, big bang shot's good. Big bang shot's going in. Giant Rat is going to uh, go away, but it's okay. Giant Rat may go away, but the other rat will stay. And that Giant Rat may go away, and it doesn't get to its effect off because of Element Source's effect and negate effects. And uh, that is it. There we go. So, Wheeler's doing quite all right to stay in the duel so far. He just needs to figure out what he wants to do. We're going to go with Giant Rat. It's interesting. He's no intentionally not summoning a monster right now because I believe he's planning on setting. I like that. I like that a lot. And the attack goes through. Giant Rat will be destroyed. Giant Rat can now search out someone new. What are we going to get? Nimble Mamanga. No search or... Do we still get the heal? No, you do not. No nothing from Nimble Mamanga. Rush recklessly. Get rushed on. Giant Rat will die. And Acrobat Monkey. Acrobat Monkey is here. Now we're going to go ahead and use Premature Burial. Are we going to normal summon our boss monster? We're going to TT. Oh, what a play with the TT. The Green Baboon can be summoned. What a good play to wipe out the field. We have two summons. We have two beater monsters. That's 5,100 damage in a single turn. This monk. Oh, my God. He can play. Wheeler is so strong. Wheeler is so good at this game. It's over. It's over. Wheeler's taking the victory. Wheeler is taking the victory. Wheeler is taking the duel. This guy can duel. This guy can legitimately duel. 2,600 damage to the face. I love it. Oh, so good. So good. Very nice duel. Very enjoyable. Just like that, Wheeler will be advancing and Briar will not be.
Okay, so we're going to get into Briar. Briar says he restates his alibi was that he was already at the duel field with Beauregard. And the reason their duel discs weren't on was because they were not actually dueling. Briar was helping Beauregard practice his dance moves. There we go. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next duel. The next duel is going to be Jasmine versus Damon. So let's see. Damon is a big suspect in this case as he is the one who found the body. I'm actually curious to see what happens here too. So let's see. Damon versus Jasmine. Um, Jasmine. Yep, there she is. And Damon. Damon, where are you? There he is. All right, there we go. And we got Damon dueling with uh, Jasmine. Let's go ahead and start this duel. Sorry if the bracket's in your way. I'll move it out of your way right now. Let's get in there. All right. Jasmine, Jasmine, Jasmine. She has a J name. So J there's actually a lot of J characters. Jinzo, Jean-Claude, Jamie Inferno, Jaden Yuki. A lot of characters with J at the beginning. So let's see what happens. We got ourselves a Sonic Duck, Duck Sonic. There we go. And we'll see what happens. So those of you that did not catch the beginning, I will state that Damon did say, I would not just say, Damon was the person that found the body. The body was discovered by Damon. All right, there we go. And the goblin is gone thanks to Hunter Owl's powerful attack stat. Icarus attack. Harpy Lady 1 is here. Big attack stat. Spirit of the Greed is gone. That is so much damage. And we're just going to go ahead and end our turn there. Reckless Greed. That's a lot of cards. Oh, but he doesn't have Mooka Mooka. He's got the Reckless Greed, but no Mooka to Mooka with. Did you just destroy yourself? Jasmine, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Oh my god, that was so stupid. You could just target the Fisher. The Fisher was technically on the field. You could have targeted Fisher. Even though it doesn't destroy anything, you don't lose Hunter Owl in the end. So, ah, oh, stupid. So stupid. Reckless Greed again. Holy crap. How does he have all this Greed and no Mooka Mookas? There are technically six Mooka Mookas in his deck, and he does not have any. Swift Birdie's really good to reset Call of the Haunted. That's a really good play. Good play from Jasmine. Uh, I know we like to use the bad emotes, but because of that decent play from Jasmine, can we have one positive emote? I'm feeling, I feel a little bit bad. Because I, I know, we should still be mad at Damon. 100%, that was stupid. But, I mean, by, by at Jasmine, that was stupid. Sorry, not Damon. Uh, but let's try to be a little nice. I feel bad for her. And that is it. Game number one goes to Jasmine. All right. Jasmine will take the first duel. Makes sense. In the first ever Duel Academy tournament, she took second place. She was a very good duelist, and she's only gotten better. Except with Icarus Attack. They are terrible at using that. All right. I bet you all won evidence from Damon. Ooh, Rising Air Current with Rallus Starbird. You crazy person. Jar Greed comes through. I bet you he'll have Mooka Mooka this time around. There's no way he won't have it twice. That'd be too crazy. And there's Enrage Mooka Mooka. And now it's at 2400 attack, which is plenty. You do not need more than that. And he's got himself a pot to help himself. Icarus attack, get rid of both monsters. I recommend it. Good job. That was a good use of Icarus attack. See, that's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. 
Axe of Despair. You know what? I'd say just go all in. Axe of Despair, beat the crap out of them. 3,200 attack points. Force them to use Dark Hole on you. Just force them to use Dark Hole. I think that is the right thing to do. I knew they had it. I, I, I've been here too long. I knew they had it. And another Greed is here. Call the Haunted Mortal allow it, though. Silphy comes right back. There we go. Wow, Jasmine, you're doing really good. Yeah, that's not good. All right, Damon, you need to draw Pot of Greed into Pot of Greed into Pot of Greed into Reckless Greed. That is your only hope. And you have to have a Mooka Mooka while you're doing all of this. It doesn't look like that's going to happen for you, Damon. I think this duel's over. I think we're going to just... Oh, Morphin Jar. That actually is a really good comeback card. I'm not going to lie. That is a good comeback card. But you only have 200 life points to work with. So really work with it. I don't think Damian Draco is in this tournament, Pog. <laughs> I don't think he's here. Call the Haunted Takes down, Sylphie. You're willing to pay 500 from a level in Nuzzler. You really want 500 attack. Reckless Greedy, super powerful. Does he have Mooka Mooka? Pot of Greedy, super powerful. Does he have Mooka Mooka? Graceful Charity, he's super powerful. But does he have it? There's the Mooka Mooka. Call the Haunted will protect the monster, forcing you to attack Sylphie. Sylphie has a perfect effect for this situation. Toss a card, weaken the Mooka Mooka. I think this duel's over. She has her equip spell. She has her boss monster, or one of her boss monsters, Ryza. It's over. We are now going to get a victory from Jasmine. Jasmine has done it, everybody. With Jasmine's victory, we can now get back into our bracket. And you get to find out more from the person that found the body. So, Jasmine will be moving forward. Damon now has to fess up more information. So, Damon, Damon, here we go. Damon did not just find the body. He says he was in the woods when he heard the screaming. When he heard the screaming, he ran over to behind the Obelisk Blue Dorm, still in the woods area behind the Obelisk Blue Dorms, where he found the already dead Rizo, freshly dead Rizo. Which means the killer could not have been that far away. And we don't know where. So whoever did the killing of Rizo was in the Obelisk Blue area at the time, obviously. Because it was that recent. So there we go. But obviously Damon could just be saying things even though he did the killing. <laughs> it could always be that route. So let's go ahead and let's see here. Obviously he has no alibi. No one else was in the woods with him. Except him, the killer, and Rizo. Unless he was the killer. <clears throat> the next duel is going to be America versus Reginald. Oh wait, there was actually one other thing. He mentions the corpse was slashed up and that his guts and bones were showing. Rizo's guts and bones were showing. So let's go ahead and see. America versus Reginald. All right. There he is. Sorry. Had to find it. So, let's go ahead and start this duel. We got a good old America, and we got good old Reginald. Reginald uses a high-power warrior deck, and uh, America uses a deck-out deck he made himself. He's a deck-out theory duelist. The Shadow Realm has not even, even been brought up in the, our lore for a reason. I don't think there is a Shadow Realm as of yet. <laughs> they're dead. They're, 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 he's, he's, he's wherever you end up afterwards. We don't know where. Maybe it is the Shadow Realm. Uh, 
All right, drop off, drop off. You dropped the card you just drew. Ah, Field Commander Roz is gone. What a shame. And we're going to go ahead and get some new cards. Command Knight is pretty good. Oh, marauding locking your opponent is not a bad idea. Oh, you don't care about that. You care about winning the duel. Never mind. Interesting. Okay, well, good thing you still have that Morphing Jar number two, my buddy, because you would be losing otherwise. You would actually lose the duel otherwise. So just make sure you set one of those. Do not fish her. You were good to Morphing Jar number two anyway. You don't need to fish her. You want them to have more monsters because that's how you get more deck out if you hit their spells and traps. All right, Morphin Jar number two comes through. We're going to get rid of Command Knight, which is a big hit. Pot of Greed's gone. Big hit. Marauding Captain's back, though. Magic Cylinder's gone. Big hit. Rush Reckley's gone. Lightning Sword's gone. Big hit for his deck in particular. Reinforcements is gone. We're decking him out. The deck out is working. The deck out is working. Oh, he drew another one? Holy crap. Marauding Captain's here, Giant Rat's here, Field Commander's here, and we're going to do some shuffling. So, Giant Rat, okay, nope, nope. Okay, we hit a Fusion Sword, we hit Fisher, we hit another Lightning Blade, and Giant Rat, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The deck out's working. But it's not fast enough in my... Oh, Gilfort's here! He's going to use all those blades! All the blades in the grave, you fool! You've only made him stronger. He's got 5,000 attack. He's Wait, he's only got 10 cards left in his deck. I swear it said 10... Oh, no, 19. It was 20. Shit, never mind. You're dead. You're dead, sir. You're dead. Oh, you're super dead. It's not It's not going to get any better. America, Reginald's and Obelisk Blue for a reason. You're, you're a little creative there. You're a little creative. This guy's down to 14 cards in his deck, and it do not matter. It do not matter. That's a 540. Five oh, my God. 5,400 beater. And that is it. Guildford the Legend takes game number one. America's deck out deck, not so good. America's deck out deck is not so good. All right. Let's try game number two. That duel was a little rough. Oh, America has such an interesting hand. Start with Cyber Jar, then Morphing Jar. Yes, yes, he agrees. Then Morphing Jar number two, and then you can Morphing Jar one later. Simultaneous loss, let's see. We hit Guilford. If Guilford's in the grave, it cannot be revived. It's a huge hit. <clears throat> Hitting Guilford into the grave is huge, just because it can't be revived. Ah, uh, but you already have an equip spell. Shit. Oh, but we have Cyber Jar already, but you're going to get Command Knight guaranteed. We already know Command Knight's on the top of your deck, thanks to Field Commander. Another Guildford, but Guildford's in the hand this time. Alright, Chainsaw, Chainsaw, Dark Hole, Call the Haunted, Morphing Jar. Okay, two Chainsaws are pretty good, but if he gets to Guildford the Legend, they won't matter. Graceful Charity. Run away some stuff he doesn't think he'll need. Reinforcements of the army. Don't thin out your deck too much there, buddy boy. Do not thin out your deck too much. It will cost you. The deck out deck is still a really good one. Honestly, I'm curious if the AI is smart enough to use Gift of Greed, but they have it. All right. The double chainsaw is very good for deck out. We're going to have a deck check. 22. Almost half the deck is left. If he can Morphing Jar that Guildford into the grave, that'll be a huge advantage to make sure he doesn't get Guildford back. Okay, we're close. We're close to getting Guildford back, I swear. We're a premature burial. There we go. And the Fusion Sword. Morphing Jar number two. Goodbye. You lost everything. Lightning Blade is gone. Command Knight is here. Warrior Lady is here. Another sword is gone. You don't want to lose swords. Ben K is here. Oh, yeah. Guildford's happening. You're not going to be able to morph. Oh, you got a morphing jar. If you are smart enough to flip that actively, you might be. Actually, no. You have a lot of deck out right now. I feel like everything you have is deck out. Let's do a second check on his deck. He's at 19 cards. He might have to hit something. He hit Guildford. He hit Guildford. 
This is beautiful. Needleworm. We got him down to 12 cards left. Morphin Jar. He's down to seven cards. Five cards. There's two cards left. Hand Destruction. There's zero cards left in the deck. It's over. America has done it. America has decked him out. America. He has done it. Chainsaw just has to attack for game. Or you can just end your turn. It's a win-win situation. This is GG. He's been dusted. Reginald, the obelisk blue student, is out of here. Now we're going to game three. <laughs> so that's how good the deck out deck can be. His theory works. He can't prove it every time, but his theory has merit. Maybe, just maybe, America knows what he's doing. Oh, and by the way, just be his name is America. He is not from the U.S. of A. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if he is. I'm probably sure, pretty sure he's not. Still a really good deck out play there. Really good deck out play. All right. So we're going to see here. We got Command Knight. We got a sword to make Command Knight is slightly stronger. And Nimble Mamanga is gone. But that'll help him get more cards to, the, you know, stall the duel a little bit. Yeah, that was the first time I've seen America just be like, oh, I'm actually going to play the duel correctly. And I really appreciate that, America. Good play. Graceful Charity. All right, Graceful Charity, we're going to hit something. We have to hit Bistro. And Monster of Born, we're going to bring back, uh, not Bistro, surprisingly. Hand Destruction, we're not going to keep Chainsaw and Morphing Jar. Of all the cards you could have kept, of all the cards you could have kept, at least Card Destruction, your opponent, eventually. Oh, that's a lot of Mamungus. Alright, 3,000. Here we go. Honestly, a really good duel from uh, our buddy here. Drop-off is here. Drop-off is going to get rid of Monster Reborn. Very nice, very nice. We're going to get rid of some Warriors to get back an Equip Spell to maybe hopefully stop this Chainsaw Insect of Devastation. It's not going to work. America, you ain't feeling like Deck Out anymore, are you? You feel like winning by battle. I think that's the truth. Oh my god, he does. There's three Momongas on the field. Granted, Warrior Lady can hold back every single one of them. So you did buy yourself more time. But you're thinning out your deck in the process. Though so you have plenty of cards left. In fact, he has less. So, yep, Marauding Captain is here to hold the field down. If he has one more Marauding Captain, he could try to stall it out, and then he will have to win by deck out. You'll force him to win by deck out if you get another Marauding Captain. DD Warrior Lady is not good. That is not going to help you. That is the opposite of helping you. You're healing your opponent. You're healing your opponent. I hope you... The Gift of Greed! He does know how to do it. Thank God. Okay, the Gift of Greed gets used. Please card destruction for my sake. It would be hilarious. Okay, you don't want to. Maybe he has to draw a bad card for him to be willing to card destruction. Okay, Bistro Butcher is willing to die for this. I feel like, honestly, like despite the life points, this man has every option in the world right now. Reginald has every option in the world. His hand is so big that if we were the ones watching it, we wouldn't be able to see every card in his hand. That hand is so big, I didn't see him draw a card from his deck. The sword is coming back, sure. So this is your best chance. There's no way you don't have a billion cards in your hand that combo. You got Field Commander, it's gone. You gotta have a Monster Born or a Premature Burial or something in that hand of yours. There's no way you don't have something in your hand. He has nothing, except maybe one of those traps is busted. We'll find out right now. MST, do you want to take a blind pick and see if you hit the right one? We won't need a deck count. The duel's over. One way or another, it's over. That is game. America has taken down Reginald. America has literally taken down Reginald. That is amazing. I did not expect him to do that in the end. I thought Amer a Reginald would build up a field too powerful for this. But he never got the chance because America kept morphing jarring him. So, that happens. Let's go ahead and get back to our bracket. And, of course, Reginald's hint. Alright. As America questions Reginald, Reginald begins to freak out. He says he doesn't know who the killer is, but wants to get out of the dual stadium immediately. He is horrified that he is going to die. 
Reginald is afraid for his life. So, we are now going to move on to the next duel. It's going to be Tanaka versus Beauregard. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Tanaka or Beauregard, everybody. Where are all my Tanaka fans at? Alright, Beauregard. Let me go see if I can find you now. There we go. And let's go ahead and start this duel. Beauregard versus Tanaka. There we are. Beautiful. So to start this duel, we have Insect Knight from Tanaka. Giant Rat's perfect for Beauregard. He could use it to get some pretty good cards. Like his big shield, Gardena. Who's my bet on in this one? Tanaka. He's, he's amazing. He surprised me more than any other character in, in my tournaments ever. So, yeah, I would go Tanaka. And there goes DD Warrior Lady. But all of that for 100 damage. All of that for a drop of blood. Weapon change is good if you can keep your monster alive. But you didn't set any spells or traps, which means you can't keep it alive. Which means it was not a good play. Speaking of not good, Howling Insect, go. Beautiful. Tanaka is easily putting Beauregard in a bad spot. Beauregard, I don't think is a bad duelist. I think he's a creative duelist that deserves raw yellow. Um, he's got interesting ideas, and they're really cool. The only problem is he doesn't really like dueling that much. He wants to be a dancer. MST comes through. Let's see what he hits. He hits Magic Cylinder. Oh, that's a big hit. That is a large hit. Oh, shit. Can't play it just yet. Need one more in the grave, but that's the new boss monster. All right, Tanaka's new boss monster is in his hand. We don't know if we're going to see it anytime soon, but damn. <clears throat> and Pinch Hopper, you're going to get Goki Pond out here. Goki Pond, let's do this. Premature Burial should not be used. Yep, Doomdozer's way better. Doomdozer is here to throw away his opponent. There we go. The new card hit Dark. His next card was Dark Hole. Holy crap, Beauregard would have drawn Dark Hole to come back in the duel, but it does not matter. He Wait, no, get, get Command Knight. Oh my god, the lock. That's how you win. You lock your opponent up. You gotta lock him up and lock him down. It's the only way. Do it. Play it attack mode. Yep, you're smart. Beauregard using that brain to beat Tanaka. Tanaka, interesting. Call of the Haunted. There we go. Call of the Haunted gets Goki Pond. Why are we playing so many cards? A little bit strange to play so many cards, but great play from Beauregard, all things considered. Tanaka using all of his options because the AI can't help themselves. I don't know why. He gets a Howling Insect out of the deal, though. All right, we see Neobug is here now. Maneater Bug! Yeah, he broke the lock! Tanaka was smart enough to bro break the lock and didn't just go after the face down. But this time he did. However, because he did not focus on Command Knight when the other monster with uh, Doomdozer, he's not able to kill to Command Knight. Command Knight, if you're able to get one more friend, then you survive. No, he's not. Neobug is here. Command Knight's in a little bit of danger. Fisher can even guarantee it. Let's guarantee it. Command Knight's a little scary. Giant Flea, the Flea, is going in. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland is gone. And 1,700 damage comes through. We're going to throw away a card. Fisher! Granted, it was not as valuable anymore, but still a good card. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland is gone. This is the last one. Okay, we have a mid shield Gardner. Mid shield Gardner is doing her absolute best, or his absolute best. We have the boss monster total defense Shogun, and the total defense Shogun destroys the giant flea, but is unable to handle the massivity that is Tanaka's Doomdozer. Harvey's Feather Duster will take care of whatever that new trap card was. What was it? It was called the Haunted. It's a solid card. Doomdozer goes in, destroys the monster, and the two cards go in. 1,200, 1,800, and he's one turn away from death. How will you come back? Pot of Greed is here. 
in sets armor with laser cannon guarantees win no matter what your defense stat is and Mitchell Garna is just tanky enough but it does not matter howling inset will end this duel the winner is obviously Tanaka Tanaka takes down Beauregard in game number one all right we're gonna go into game number two right now we're going to game two now, obviously, Tanaka is a very good duelist. He's won a tournament for a reason, but don't count Beauregard out. Oh, oh, I like that boss monster. We all know about the metal armored bug, after all. Insect Knight is here. Insect Knight has the power of the insect armor cannon. Of all insect fighters, he is the paragon of the indestructible insect invaders, which only the elite of the elite can join. We can no longer ignore their unmatched battle prowess. But, in, you know, DD Warrior League can just banish it, so yeah, there's that. Yep, there we go. Oh, I know, gamer, I know. It's, it's not me today, this one's on Twitch. My internet is really good right now, I got no problems on my side. Like, I can literally test it again right now. Here. Internet test. I got no internet problems right now. The problem with today is definitely up to Twitch. 40 megabits per second of upload speed. 330 download speed. And it's only that low in download because my sister's home. Yeah, we got nothing to worry about. Hey, I didn't, I didn't think about it, but that field spell is going to weaken this guy. The field spell is going to make Beauregard worse. Because Beauregard is going to lose defense, which is most of his deck. All right, we're going to draw a card, see what that does. Weapon change. We're going to have 2200 attack. Good play. Very good play from Beauregard. He can buff his monster even further. With 2200 attack, he can destroy the flea, but the magic cylinder won't matter. Yep, 2200, there you go. And he's setting. So, in order to beat this card, it's going to be uh, Metal Armored Bug. Metal Armored Bug is the only card that can beat Big Shield Gardena, and it will. That is the end of the duel, and Beauregard is done for. Beauregard is done. So... With that going on, Tanaka wrecks his opponent. I feel bad for Beauregard. He just had a really hard opponent to go up against. Um, and he's only gotten stronger since his tournament win. So now that that has happened, let's go over here and let's see who's up next. If you're curious about Beauregard's hint, it's the same as Briar's. I was with Briar and the truth is I was practicing my background dancing. That is the truth. Unless they're lying. No, I'm sure. <laughs> Unless they're lying. Who knows? All right. The next duel will be Alice versus Fonda Fontaine. All right. Alice versus Fonda Fontaine. Let's see here. Alice is ready to go. Fonda Fontaine is not quite ready. She needs a little more time. There we go. And let's get this duel started. Tana uh, not Tanaka, sorry. Alice versus Fonda. So, I'm going to go find their faces right now. Alice is ready. Fonda will be ready soon enough. And it looks like we're good to go. Nimbo Mamanga will not be able to destroy the Malice Doll of Destruction. That's a shame. And Bad Reaction to Samochi is a great star. She already has the gift card. Okay. 3,000 burn goes through. That is massive. Malice Doll goes in for 600. Alright, that's pretty good. Nibble Mamanga is going to heal up... Uh, oh god, they have two, one in their hand. That's so unlucky. Fonda started with two Nibble Mamangas in her hand. That's super sad. And she probably just said it, so that's a, that's a bummer. But she got bad reaction very early, so I guess we just gotta live with that being very nice for her. Nibble Mamanga will go right there. 
And uh, yeah, Mecha Dog Marion will do its job as it always does. A thousand burn will be dealt to both sides. Her anime deck does not exist, which is why we completely changed the lore around Alice. It is not the same as in the show. And with Kaiser Seahorse's effects, Alice's current boss monster, the freaking moisture creature, will come out, and this alien creature will now go in and destroy the germs. If Fonda gets one gift card, she can win the duel. But she has to get a gift card. All right, Fiend Comedian is here. Heads will get rid of all the cards in the grave. Damn. Damn, not getting that gift card back. Even if you got your Mask of Darkness. Dark Hole! Okay! Who needs 500 burn when we can play a monster and attack you directly? Monster Abort! Don't steal it. Oh, no! It's on the wrong side of the field! Uh-oh. Uh-oh! A third Nimble Mamanga! Oh, well, Boku. Okay, that saved the life. That, that literally saved your life. You are about to lose. Gift card is still a win, but you were about to lose right there. All right, Fisher comes, you misplay. You should have mind controlled first. You mind control into Fisher. That is the actual play you're supposed to make, but AI will be AI. And the attack goes through. Kaiser Seahorse does not stand a chance. All right, we're just going to go ahead and set. We have Graceful Charity. Ooh, throw away Soul Taker. I guess you already have games, so I guess that's why, but still. Sangan is now... Okay, you lost your boss monster. If they get Monster Reborn or Premature Burial, you're really going to pay for it. You are really going to pay for it if that happens, Fonda. You're going to wish you had that Soul Taker. And Sangan comes... Or not, yeah, Sangan's going away. So what are you going to get, Fonda? Mystic Tomato. Interesting. You need some of your burn cards, Fonda. If you're not going to get gift card, get something else with... Oh, shit! That'll do it! That's game! <laughs> That's game! Yeah, we're going to end that super quickly. Fonda Fontaine takes down Alice, the living doll. In the first duel, that is. Let's go ahead and get into game number two. That really was perfect. She didn't need to pick... Oh, you're, you're behind. I forgot. Ghost Wolf, she didn't need to pick Lily. She already had it. All right. Upstar Goblin is horrible when you don't have your combo yet. So this is just a waste of your thousand burn. Gift card was thrown away, which breaks my heart. So I, I have to assume you did that because you have no other options. I believe Fonda is like playing as horribly as she possibly can in duel number two. I don't know if she's taking p uh, pity on freaking Alice. I know she takes pity on a lot of people. So, we'll see. We have Kaiser Seahorse working together here. Mecha Dog Marin is gone. They're both going to take burn for that one. And there goes Nimba Mamanga. That's looking real good. That's looking real good. Okay, we're just going to set a bunch of cards. That's uh, that's plenty. MST is good. You can at least try to clear something out. Let's see what you hit. And you hit gift cards. So she already has two gift cards in the grave. Fonda's chances of winning are in the garbage right now. She has really no chance with all of her best combos being destroyed. Mystic Tomato could try to get Dark Nurse if uh, you're smart enough, but even then it wouldn't make a difference. So yeah, might as well go for more tomatoes. The only card in your deck with any power is Injection Fairy Lily, and honestly, it won't matter. Because you don't have enough life points to take out every single card they own. Fonda's definitely in trouble in duel number two. Giant Rat versus Tomato. Tomatoes are... They're out of tomatoes at this point. So now Fonda's got to think of something else. Giant Rat yet again. Mystic Tomato gets Dark Nurse. Dark Cure is going to be played, which is funny, but it won't work. The only reason I say it won't work is because the opponent could easily just destroy the Dark Nurse and then it was all for nothing. Malice Doll will cost you 800 life points, but who cares? Monster Born, that's going to cost you some more, but I guess you really don't care about your life points. 
Happy holidays to everybody as well. I'll be celebrating Christmas very soon. That'll be next Monday, I believe. Not the Monday coming up, but the Monday after the Monday coming up. Alright, Sangan's going through. We're doing a Secret Santa kind of thing. So I already bought my gifts for the person I got as my Secret Santa. And I will say they will be very happy with the gifts I got them. Alright, Mystic Tomato's there. Giant uh, Rat is there. Another Dark Nurse. Mysterious Puppeteer could try to heal you, but right now you're going to be burned. And the attacks are coming through. Damage, damage, damage. Fonda, do something, please. You're, you're just sad. Oh, they're healing. All right, Fonda does as much damage as she possibly could. 1,800. Swords. Amazing. Okay, the fact that you got swords is pretty incredible. But you're only going to be healing your opponent. You've only healed them pretty much this entire duel. You've only done a few things of burn. So we'll see what happens. I did not buy them socks, I promise you. I'm not that kind of person. Uh, it's not with you. It's with family only. Only families on uh, going to my secret Santa. Why'd she lose, like, so many cards in her deck? Holy crap. Soul Taker is a waste. You're only healing your opponent. Fonda, you're healing your opponent. How many times do I have to tell you you're healing them? Wait for bad reaction. I don't know where it is in your deck. I don't know what happened to you. You have 19 cards left in your deck, and I guarantee you they're not the card you need. All right, Mysterious Puppeteer will continue to heal with the help of Dark Cure. You're going to go back to 8,000. I swear, it's going the other way. You're going to be going back to 8,000 life points. It's going to happen. And Burning Algae, which will also heal the opponent. All you're doing, all you're doing is healing them. No, we're going to have New Year's Eve together. You already know this. You're in my group. You're in my chat. You know we're going to spend New Year's Eve together. Unless you're busy, but that's your problem. All right. It's over. Yeah, look. That was the worst duel I've seen from Fonda. She really, really wasted her stuff. She wasted all of her stuff. And that moisture creature is wasted as well. None of this is necessary. You already have game. This is just embarrassing. That's a hell of a boss monster. All right, Alice will take duel number two, and now we're going to be moving into game number three. All right, moving into game three. Let's see how it goes. Looking at this duel, opening hand-wise, this is pretty decent for Alice. Like, I would prefer she have her boss monster in her hand, but let's see. No, but she has good cards. She threw away magic cylinder? Come on! Come on, where's the magic? You need the magic cylinder. It's so good. Don't throw away bad reaction, I swear. You threw away bad reaction to Samochi, I swear to God. I hate this AI sometimes. That's your whole deck. Unless that is bad reaction to Samochi, I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt you, Fonda. Okay, never mind. We're cool. We're cool. I'm gonna leave you alone. Soul exchange, you gotta deal with a boss monster now. Have fun. Alright. So, let's see what happens. Will you be able to use your card? Upstart into a thousand burn. Good start from Fawn to Fontaine. But you threw away Soul Taker, and I don't think I forgot that. Why would you attack a two tribute monster? Why would you attack a two tribute monster? That was dumb. Dark Cure. Okay, Dark Cure will help. Rogue Doll, that's 800 burn just for summoning it. Moisture Creature's gonna hurt you like hell, though. Get ready. You're about to feel some real pain. Sangan. Magic Cylinder went the other way! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's danger. We're in danger range now. We are in danger range at the moment. It looks like 3,400. One gift card can make this duel basically over. The attack goes through. I would have went for Rogue Doll just to get their life points as low as possible. Still, one gift card ends this duel. We are in range for a gift card to end this duel. See the difference between, oh, I drew back bad reaction to Smochi versus I did not draw it? Like, the duel's completely different. Her whole deck relies on that trap card. Dark Nurse is here. It's all gone. But Sangan can get you a card. I recommend a burn card. That one's fine. Yeah, no, go for Injection Fairly. That's fine. 
All right. Dust Tornado can get rid of Bad Reaction. That'll make a huge difference. Alice Doll, you take eight... Or, Alice Doll, sorry. Demise Doll, you take 800. And then she takes 16. Dust Tornado, I still stand by it. That card can save you. You just have to get rid of the card. And Jetchen Fairy Lily's going for battle damage. The battle damage is good. You're down to 200 life points. Dust Tornado comes through. No, hit the Bad Reaction. Oh, it was Gift Card. Still, if you hit Bad Reaction, Gift Card's worth You know what? No, it's fine. You hit Gift Card. Hitting Gift Card still matters. And honestly, based on the life points, you could have almost won the duel right there. Monster aboard for Moisture Creature. Set Moisture Creature is in the grave. Moisture Creature is in the grave. What are you doing? You just threw the duel. Fonda Fontaine has thrown the duel. What just happened? What is wrong with you? You had everything. You just Monster aboard Moisture Creature. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Alice has won. Alice has won. Fonda's hints must now be revealed. All right. So, let's get rid of the faces. Moving on in the tournament. We are now in the final fight of round two. The final fight of round two will be Jaden versus you uh, versus Missy. But the hint from Fonda is this. She believes a student did it, but she will not elaborate. She will no longer accept any further questions, but she believes a student did it. So we're going to move on. Jaden Yuki versus Missy. Let's see if I can find Jaden, and then let's see if we can find Missy. Jaden, by the way, will be using a new deck today. All right, there we go. And there we go. I'm still stuffy, Jason. I don't want to get you sick. If you need if you need me to, I could send you I could send you the money online. Or we can wait till next week. But if you mean playing games, I mean sure, I can still do that. I just don't go outside. And there we go. Morphing jar is good. And Morphing Jar, that's a thousand heal. Missy is doing very good in her opening turn. Oh my god, she got Empress Mantis. That is beautiful. Is the AI thinking? Oh, we got Miracle Contact. That's huge. Holy crap, we're going to get a big monster. Everyone say hello to Elemental Hero Flare Neos. It may be an insect, but it's still Flare Neos. And it has a lot of attack. It's got a lot of attack, but no Neo space. You gotta do something, Jaden. Jaden attacks the wrong monster, in my opinion, but at the same time, that's a, a ton of damage. Premature Burial. What are we getting? More. What the fuck? We're not very good at this, are we, Jaden? Alright, Jaden is not very good. Sorry, I forgot the faces. My bad. Jaden is not very good. Alright. Where is Missy Space? Oh, I'm proud of Jaden for the play he made earlier, but he's still going to need to do better than that because what he did is not good enough. So let's try this again. We have... E oh, okay. Now we get Special Summon. We got Flare Scare with a decent amount of attack. He's at 32. He shares the ability. He shares the ability thanks to Common Soul. He beats the Empress Mantis. Great play. Way to play, Jay. Good job. And Insect Princess is probably very happy about Flare Scarab right now. She's about to devour it. And by devouring Flare Scarab, she gains 500 attack. She's at 29. Neos Alias does not stand a chance. Jaden is in so much trouble. Okay, well that, yeah. I was going to say Insect Princess is probably going to end this duel, but not, not when Dark Hole's involved. Yeah, that, that changes things. 
Jaden's pretty low on life points, but he has O Oversoul to bring back the freaking Alias card. He can normal summon it again, and he will. It is now a Gemini monster. It counts as Alias. Uh, it's now Neos. That monster's name is now Neos. Elemental hero Neos. Fisher! And he lost his Neos extremely quickly. But she's not willing to attack with the cards in her hand despite his low life points. Makes sense, honestly. And Glomoss is here. He's willing to put in attack mode thanks to Glomoss's interesting effect. Dark Hole, don't use it. Don't be an idiot. Okay. Here we go. We're going to play a card. Let's see. What do you draw? You drew a monster card. Because you drew a monster card, your attack is canceled. And we got Grand Mole. Grand Mole's going to go ahead and destroy the monster by battle, but she gets to heal more than she takes, so good for her. Missy's in a pretty good position here. Grand Mole's happy for Jaden. Jaden obviously needs to draw a Neos because without Neos, he doesn't stand a chance with this deck. Insect Princess is like, oh, look at all these delicious freaking insects, but you drew a monster, so your attack is canceled. That's right. Your attack will be canceled. Glow Moss is doing a great job, and Grand Mole's going to do a better job right now. Prisma is here. He's going to go ahead and hit Neos. His name is Neos. He's going to get the Grand Mole. Oh, God. Oh, my God. He did it. He did it! Elemental Hero Grand Neos is here! And with Grand Neos, he wins the duel! Great job. Jaden takes game number one in an amazing uh, way. And Boldman's is right, we might get a mole loop later on. Not yet, but a mole loop is possible. Very good duel from Jaden. Let's move on to get duel number two. It was still a close one, though, so anything could happen. Very good start for Missy on this one because she actually does have DNA surgery. Okay, she drew three. That's a little unlucky now that I think about it. But DNA surgery makes her deck actually work. So there you go. Shouldn't have played both because what if he has a heavy storm or something? You don't want to be hit by that. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed's going to draw a couple cards. Dark Hole is unnecessary, but he uses it anyway. And 500 burn goes through. We have Neos Alias. It is an insect, but it's still Neos. It doesn't count as Neos yet, though. Her hand does not work, but she can at least Fisher the opponent. That does work. As long as Jaden has no monsters, she'll be fine. But that's a big hand to have no monsters. So, Jaden, why don't you show her something? Flare Scarab's all right. 1300 attack, that's fine. Not the biggest monster in the world, but it's it's like Feral Imp. That's fine. And she's got her boss, but she cannot summon it. She needs to summon it. That card's so important to her. Oh, no. Will she not be able to pull this off? Flare Scarab's going to do it all by himself. He's all happy and stuff. I'm starting to feel bad for her. Oh, well, we're going to common soul up a gl uh, glow, Neos. Why not? Sorry, everybody. My sister has a cold, so I've been catching it lately. Um, I'm doing my best to still record and everything, but uh, I have been taking it a little bit slower lately. All right, Flare Scarab, Glow Neos. She can get to her boss monster, but she'd have to get rid of her equip spell. She's not willing. And now it looks like Jaden's the one in some trouble. Glow, let's see what she draws. A spell card means direct attack, right? And she could chain it. I did not realize that. That's kind of cool. Uh, no, it just means the attack goes through, apparently. Whatever. Now, let's see what we got here. We got ourselves Premature Burial for Neos Alias. That's a good card, but it's not good enough. Neo Space is a good card, but it's not... Oh, wait, can you Normal Summon it? Yes, it can! That is super good! We have ourselves Elemental Hero Flare Neos! It's a direct damage, 4,600! Not direct, but insane damage! 4,600 damage! The Neos deck has done it. Jaden is winning. Jaden is officially winning. There we go. Missy has been defeated. With Missy's defeat comes Missy's confession. So let's go ahead and move Jaden forward. We're going to move into round two of the tournament. Um... Missy's confession is this. She restates that she was spying on a duelist in the card shop and will now say that that duelist was Tanaka. The duelist she was spying on was Tanaka. That is her alibi. 
No one else saw her there, though, but she does say that, that she saw Tanaka in the dueling store, and she was spying on him. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have Daigo take on Blair Flanagan in round number three. Let's see how these characters do in round three. Hmm, where's Daigo? Daigo and Blair, and I'm finding neither. Okay, there they are. I found both of them. We're good. We're good. It took me a second to find them, but I found them. So, we're going to go ahead and start the duel. And now that the duel has been started, we're going to move on, and let's see... Who wins? Will it be Daigo or will it be Blair? I'm going to find their faces right now. I did not forget this time. Daigo definitely wants to win this duel in particular. I can guarantee you that. So let's see how he does. Brain control is probably a waste unless you tribute the monster. You never tribute the monster. Yes, it's 3400 damage, but at the same time, if you uh, just save your brain control for a bigger monster. Well, I guess against this deck it works. This is, oh, you lost Fisher. Why did you say? Oh, because you wanted Blade Knight's attack to be up. I was going to say, never mind. Brain Control was not wasted. This is one of the few decks you want to use it early. Just because they're going to get a monster that's immune to it anyway. So, good luck to you, Blair. You now need to take down a monster that negates all spell cards. So, yeah. I don't like Blair's odds. I do not like Blair's odds. That card negates all spells. And she does love her spell cards, so gonna give her some problems there Horus also is immune to all spells so that's always good all the, the whole Horus family is here everybody every member of the Horus family is here and now Horus level 8 attacks not looking good to be a Blair flam a fan right now Call of the Haunted comes through. Blade Knight comes back out. It can't really do much. Yeah, it could destroy Horus level 4, but unless you have... Well, Mirror Force doesn't exist in your deck. But if you had a Mirror Force, that'd be one of the only ways you come back. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but your opponents are way bigger than you. Like, way bigger. Okay. 3,000 damage. Just like that, 3,000 is going to destroy them. All right. Blair Flanagan loses duel number one. We're going to be moving into duel two. Is the King of Games of Duel Academy about to lose to Horus? Will Daigo re uh, regain his title? Who knows? Beating Blair is not how you regain your title. Beating everybody is how you regain your title. And also solving the mystery. All right, we have ourselves a Mass Dragon. Mass Dragon's looking real strong. A little 1400 beater. Brain control again. Now, like I said, you might as well do it now. I just wish you had a tribute because you don't have a tribute. You never have a tribute. Blair, Blair Flanagan never has a tribute. Always disappointing. That's a big shame. All right. We got twin head. Oh, no, they're all gone. <laughs> I was going to say we have twin head, but they're all gone. Premature burial brings back the twin head. I guess we're not going to use its effect just yet. 15 goes through. Daigo's life points are quite low right now, but that does not matter. And Dawn Knight is here. MST will get rid of the Twin Head, which means that Twin Head is not coming back. And 1,400 damage leaves Daigo with 3,000 life points left. He, oh, it does come back. It was from the field. Fair enough. Okay. And will he draw Horus level 6? He might. Graceful Charity is a good one. No, you had what you needed. You just Graceful to Horus level 6 and everything's okay. You did not need to kill Dawn Knight that way. Graceful Charity comes through. Graceful Charity. There, you had Horus level 6. You threw away the only one you could summon, you idiot. You had everything you needed. Stop making these mistakes. Silent Swordsman level 3 goes in. If he does not draw a monster card, he's going to lose the duel. Okay. That was the perfect top deck. I don't know how he did it, but that was the perfect top deck. Horus level 4 becomes Horus level 6. Premature Burial becomes Silent Swordsman level 3. Silent Swordsman level 3 becomes Silent Swordsman level 5. They're evenly matched. Both cards are evenly matched with pretty similar or same effects. Which one will win? 
As of right now, neither character will win. They're both standing strong. Graceful Charity comes through. Graceful Charity throws away some cards. Do you have anything you can use? Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed gets you some new cards. Freed the Brave Wanderer will pop the monster. And with that, 4,000 damage comes through. And it is over. Blair, the King of Games, will take game number two. At least King of Games, a duel academy. Not bad from Blair. Taking game number two like that. Very good. We will now be going into game number three. Horus is now level 6 immediately. Good luck, Blair. You can't fissure it, you can't dark hole it, you can only watch it as it kicks your ass. This game 3 means everything. How will you come back? No, oh, shit, that's a good top deck. I'm not gonna lie, that is a good top deck. Oh, it was Shining Angel! That could have got you Silent Swordsman level 3. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, crap, that didn't work out. What else do you got? No. No, he's already level 6. He's going to make it to level 8. Oh my god, he's got Royal Decree. He's got everything he could possibly want. Horus level 8. No more spell cards from the opponent. TT! The Royal Decree was one turn too late. The Royal Decree was just too late. Premature Burial comes through. Bur oh, Freed is here, but Freed is not necessary. 2,000 damage from the Blade Knight. That is massive. Granted, we all see the hand, right? We're not going to ignore the fact that we can see his hand and the fact that he has everything he needs. Darkhold will do the job. You needed your Silent Swordsman level 5. And we're just going to set... I thought you were going to level modulation. You are. Okay. Only for level 4. That's kind of strange. You could have picked a level 6 or 8, I believe. Definitely level 6 at least. Call of the Haunted does not work. You're not going to make it to Silent Swordsman level 3. Without that, you can't make it to Silent Swordsman level 5, which means you are now trapped, Blair. No trap cards allowed. This is a very tight duel. What will you draw? She got Pot of Greed. Lucky draw. What does she get? Dark Hole. She had it. Dark Hole. She... No. No Morphing Jar. Dark Hole gets rid of Morphing Jar. He can't reset his hand. But she has no monster. It's a tie. He needed a new hand. Oh my god, did he need a new hand. Swords. Okay, swords will hold the field. This is kind of crazy. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. She's bricked. Blair is bricked. This happened to her in the inner school duel as well. That is the best top deck in the game. And with this top deck, you it, he's just... It, I'm not going to get mad. He's just going to tribute it anyway. He's just going to tribute it anyway. Why would I get mad? No spells, no traps. You have to beat that with a monster. Will Blair draw the monster or is this duel over? This has been a really tight, very exciting duel. Blair will just simply set. Okay. Attack goes through. Silent Swordsman level 3 will die. You need Shining Angel to get to that card to get to Silent Swordsman level 5 to win. Instead, it won't matter anymore. They're Horus level 8 now. No spells, no traps, only monsters. What can you do with monsters? You could try to hold on. I would say Shining Angel is your best bet. Brain control is fine. Attack goes through. Blade Knight is gone. All those cards in her hand have to be the tribute monsters. There's no other reason why she can't do anything. She needs new cards. Thank you for following, by the way. Sorry if I missed a lot of followers and stuff. I just focused on this right now. I'm all in. Horus level 8. He needs more monsters, too. Silent Sword. She's out of level 3 swordsmen. All of her level 3 swordsmen are in the grave, and she's not going to be able to... Si she can't Shining Angel into it anymore. She has to figure something else out. Oh, it's over. Just end the duel. No traps, no spells. Guaranteed game. Guaranteed game. You can Harpies for fun, but it's guaranteed game. None of this stuff matters. None of those cards mattered. And the winner is Daigo Serrano. All right. Very good duel from Daigo Serrano. Great job, buddy. Great job. With this victory, we are going to go ahead and we're going to go back to our bracket. With this, we're going to move him forward. And now we get Blair's Confession. Blair states she has been talking to literally everybody in the school and was in 
a conversation with another student about where Marcel was. Everyone says that Blair is telling the truth. Everyone there says that she asked them about where Marcel was. She's been looking for Marcel. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move into the next duel. It's going to be Chaz Princeton versus Dark Magician Girl. Let's see how these two duelists do against each other. Don't forget, Chaz is our resident uh, detective of the day. So hopefully he wins so we can get more detective stuff going on. All right, the duel will now begin. Who will win? Will it be Chaz or Dark Magician Girl? The only way her title is at stake is if the person that wins not only gets first place, but uh, also predicts who the killer is. Which means you guys decide. All right, Bottomless will take care of the monster. Shining Angel comes through. And a poof. Old Vindictive is such a good card. What she needs to do is flip that Monster Born Dark Magician. Or just play Rapid Fire, either way. Flip that, destroy the monster. Good play. Just play Rapid Fire. Call the Haunted. I forgot about Call the Haunted. That's always an option. Don't waste uh, Monster Born then. And Dark Magician is here. We have a summoning animation. That is beautiful. It's gone. We're going to Monster Born that immediately. They're both taking huge damage. And just like that, Chazzy Boy took 5,000 damage in one turn. I'm not happy about that. I am not happy about that. Chaz is my boy. He is our detective of the day. He runs around calling himself Detective Chaz. He better win this freaking duel. I swear to God. All right, Rapid Fire Magician is here, and Shining Angel will die. You're going to have to go through a lot of monsters, Chaz. Shining Angel will die. Do you have any, like, fusion ideas? Do you have any possibilities? You can maybe go for that one. It won't be strong enough, but you can go for it. So there's that. And you could go for it, like I said. The only problem is, even if you do, you can't... Even if you fuse, you can't beat 2100 defense. Don't forget, Dark Magician is the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense, which is why this doesn't work. And we're just going to attack with these two. There goes that one. You could crash or you could just let it live. Crash. I understand crashing. It makes sense in this case. Don't, uh, don't play that card. That card is only for emergencies, but the AI disagrees with me on that fact. And Monster Born comes through. We're going to steal Magician's Valkyria, which actually has no value on Chaz's field. It's literally just to keep him alive. He did that play just to stay alive. He's in so much trouble. He's not going to stay alive either, is he? Unless that card has 1,800 defense. Oh! Oh, God! It's Ojama! Oh, my God. All right. All right. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that's game. Dark Magician Girl will take game number one. She's still looking for her master or her deck owner, but damn, that is not working out. Probably was not Chaz. Oh, that's a interesting hand. That's an interesting hand. Oh, he got his card. How many cards did he have? One? Okay, one's good enough for x Tech Cannon. Very good card. Good job, Chaz. Now you just gotta hope it survives, because if she gets to Dark Magician Girl, you're in danger. I don't think you want to do what you're about. You're helping him. Do not do that. If he gets Y Dragon Head or Z Metal Tank, you're in trouble. Oh my god. Oh my god. You might have just thrown the whole duel. I'm just warning you right now. He might start popping you. Okay, you're lucky. You're super lucky. I want you to know that. And even though he had a lot of damage, he decides not to go for any of it, which is weird. Could have attacked with three monsters is all I'm saying. And Tsukiyomi can now really screw you over. All it has to do is target X-Head. Okay, well, she's an idiot. You know what? Go ahead and win the duel, Chaz. She doesn't seem to know what she's doing. Go ahead and win the duel. Yep, that's right. Everyone who wants to see XYZ Dragon Cannon, raise your hand if you want to see XYZ Dragon Cannon, even though it's going to take you 40 seconds to raise your hand because you're so far behind. Bottomless gets used on X-Head despite the fact that XYZ is right there. He's not even going to do it because then he wouldn't win the duel. 
All he had to do was not unionize at all, and he won. But he... Okay, well, at least I get to see it. Chaz Princeton. All he had to do was not unionize, and he won the duel, but he unionized. And all we have left is this. It's over. XYZ, just discard and pop. That's all you have to do. Just discard and pop. Pop one more. There's one more there. Beautiful. Chaz Princeton takes game number two. Good job, boy. Good job. Dark Magician Girl can be scary, but uh, she helped you out. Honestly, she really helped you. She she held your hand and was like, here, I'm going to give you one victory. Granted, we don't know if he's going to get another victory because he desperately needs it. All right, going into game number three. Will it be Chaz or will it be Dark Magician Girl? Which character will win? Will it be the suspect dual spirit Dark Magician Girl or will it be Chaz the detective? X-Head Cannon comes through. Pot of Greed comes through. That card's very good. We're going to set, and we have two sets. And Shining Angel goes through. Apprentice Magician is going to go away. Yeah, good job. Pet the Chaz. Why not? Apprentice Magician is there, and we're going to keep doing Apprentice Magician. There we go. And just like that, Old Vindictive. I see all three Old Vindictives. That's kind of crazy. I should not be able to see all three of them, but I do see all three of them. Rabbit Fire is not bad. Magician's Valkyria is even better. She could go for the loss. I don't think she would, but she could do it. Magician Circle will activate. She would. She could do it. Oh, crap. Unless he pops the monster, you're screwed. Oh, you're so screwed, Chaz. No, my boy. She locked you. She knows how to play. Why does she know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Damn it. No, bottomless. Oh my god. Yeah, you're right. She'll tribute it. I've seen them tribute the lock before. Nope. Nope. They're smart enough not to do it. They're smart enough not to tribute the lock. They won't destroy the lock, everybody. <laughs> Damn it, Chad. You're my guy. My boy Chaz, why you do this? Oh, there we go. Dark Magician is here. Might as well give it that formula. You know you want the secret formula. And the attacks go through. It's over. It's over. The Chaz is done for. My God. How did he do that? And we get a game-winning attack, which is so cool. A game-winning animation. Without her holding his hand, he just gets wrecked. Dark Magician Girl is a very powerful dual spirit. Good play by her. All right. Let's get back to our bracket, and then we'll see what Detective Chaz has to say. Detective Chaz says this. I found no clues, but I am the detective. I did not do it. He, he didn't do it. I'm saying he didn't do it. I'm saying I would never make Chaz the villain. I'm saying you could trust me when I say Chaz did not do it. I would never make Chaz the villain like that. He's my favorite character. No lie. No lie. No no worries about lying on this one. You don't have to worry. That's a freebie. He is he's he he would not do this. <laughs> he is not some crazy killer. Alright, the next duel is gonna be Alexis Rhodes versus Tayo. I love that. Alexis Rhodes versus Tayo. Alexis is a very scary duelist. Her deck has uh, shown off some pretty good stuff. Tayo, on the other hand, he is a dragon duelist, so we'll see how he does. He is pretty good, too. And we're going to go ahead and start the duel. I'm going to find both their faces, and then we're going to see who does better. All right, we're good. And that's TT right there. Now that that's happened. Oh, that's a good top deck. Okay, with this, she can get herself another ritual spell. 
That's for later, obviously. And she's going to do 200. Wow. You spent a full Sakuretsu armor on a 200 attack point monster. Tayo, I don't know if you're the best at dueling. That was not a good idea. Granted, if you could see her hand, you'd realize how lucky you were right now. Call of the Haunted will bring back a monster. Spear Dragon's very scary, I admit. Troop Dragon's not so scary. Spear Dragon's going to do the damage with the wrong way. And we just got 700 damage. We're going to go into draw phase. We just have Hollowed Life Barrier. Hollowed Life Barrier is just going to sit right there. I don't know if you need to use that. Okay, maybe. It's a lot of damage. You're getting a little unlucky. I'm not going to lie. You are getting a little unlucky right now, Alexis. I, I don't know how to feel about this. You need to draw like Manju or something. Warrior Lady's good. Warrior Lady's good enough. Get rid of Spear Dragon, and then you can just float into a good card. You're fine. I think that'll make up for a lot of things. To think she has her combo, but she's getting screwed over by her hand. Okay, one of those is in the grave now. I don't think you needed to spend your trap card on this situation, especially when there was only one monster. But I understand your life points are low, so you're a little worried. Oh, she also thought she might top deck it. She did not top deck a monster. Therefore, she cannot make Dakini. And without Dakini, there ain't nothing going to happen. All right, Warrior Lady is gone. What card will you get? Blade Skater, sure. You need one monster. One level four monster. Will you draw it? Alexis Rhodes. She can't draw it. All you had to do... Oh, no. True Dragon would get more True Dragons. Never mind. Okay. Alexis Rhodes is officially screwed. Oh, it's over. It's super over. Alexis Rhodes got the worst possible top decks of her career. And it will end her first duel against Tayo. She had everything she needed. She just needed one level 4 monster. Can't draw one to save her life. Couldn't draw a level 4 monster to save her life. All right, let's go ahead and get into game number two. That one was a big upset. Her deck is so good, but yeah, as you saw, it could break. It can break. Oh, it crashed. It crashed. Okay. Yay, Master Duels. Thank you. We love crashing. Let's try this again. To think, all she needed was one level four. He had no traps cards to stop her. She would have been fine, but didn't work out. So, we're going to go ahead and start the duel. For real this time. Sorry about the crash. It happens. And we're just going to go ahead and set. It did take a long time to crash. Good point. It lasted longer this time. He threw away Sakuretsu armor. I don't add his field spot. I don't think that was worth it. I don't think throwing away Sakuretsu armor in your field spell was a good idea there, buddy. Blade Skater is a pretty decent monster and can beat his monster, so it's worthwhile. And you could just play Manju to start getting out your Dakinis and stuff and Senju. Yeah, it's a win-win. Manju can get the spell card and then you use Senju to get the other card. I think that's a great idea. Magic Cylinder is not that effective. It's just 14. You can take 14. And uh, Burst Breath will work. You're going to lose your monster. Okay. Yikes. So, what now? Mr. I threw away my field spell that would have given me all the power I needed, but I'm an idiot. You gonna play Senju? Yeah, there you go. Alright, now you got my attention. Now, you don't know, do it. Play Dakini. Yeah, that's right. Let's go Dakini, everybody. It's time. Dakini is here. With this boss monster, she can easily pop the opponent's card. Well, it doesn't pop it, but you know what I mean. Get rid of the opponent's card and then attack directly with massive damage. Oh, it was Troop Dragon. He was trying to stall and then he was going to try and tribute. No, you fool. All right, without that card, now she could do piercing damage for game. Luster Dragon's trying his best and we lost a card. You set Call the Haunted, that happens. And that card could do 800 burn. He's doing his best. He's doing his best. He's doing as much damage as he could do. Last duel, he did not have to face Dakini. This duel, he actually has to face Dakini. All right. Fisher is here. Cyber Gymnast would have done the same thing. Burst Breath will destroy any card you want other than Dakini. Which means you lose. Oh, and you couldn't kill the monster. 
And that is it, everybody. 2700 to the face. And that is game. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yep. We're going into game number three. Alexis played for real that time and actually got her monster, which she needs. Dakini will win her duels, or at least one of her rituals will. Not getting her rituals is how she loses. There we go. That's a good hand. Uh, you're missing your spell card, but that's a good hand otherwise. In fact, Manju would have been better. You don't want Senju right now. Okay, we're going to set the cards up. A little bit scary, I understand. Spear Dragon's probably going to pierce you, so get ready. <coughs> Luster Dragon was thrown away for premature. Stamping Destruction is huge. And Widespread Ruin is gone forever. Monster Aborn on Luster Dragon number two. We all saw that coming. The second he threw it away, I felt it in my heart. Luster Dragon number two, Luster Dragon number one. And it looks like Alexis Rhodes is screwed. Unless she draws her spell card, the duel is already over. She has to draw her spell card right now. Without the spell, the duel is over. Will she draw it? Heart of the cards. Will she get it? She can do it if she's smart. She is smart. Alexis Rhodes has a brain. And she is using it. By using Ben 10 as a material, she'll even get something back. It's such a good play. Everything she's doing is so good thanks to that top deck of Manju. Dakini will throw a card away. Which one do you want to hit? Well, the, the opponent gets to pick, but you know what I mean. You got E to 10 to your hand. That's nice. And we got rid of that card. Battle phase comes through. Piercing damage. That was stupid. That was actually stupid. You could have made sure they had no monsters left. Instead, you did this. And E to 10 might be coming at some point. This is good. This is very good. That luck. Luck of the draw right there. She would have lost this turn. If it wasn't for that, she would have lost this turn. It's kind of crazy that we're looking at this. Blade Skater's not high enough level, but it could be used as battle. Yep. This time we're going to get rid of the monster. And Mass Dragon will... Okay, you can get another Luster Dragon. You need your field spell. He needs his field spell. So tribute the Mass Dragon for Luster Dragon. Get your field spell. Ben 10's coming back. All right. Very good. Now you can do your thing. They're going to crash just so they, they can get a monster in defense mode. That's pretty good monster in defense mode. All right, Alexis. I would say get Ben 10 on the field. I would say Ben 10 on the field is worth it. Yep, she agrees. That's it. That's game. That's super game. She's going to have so much damage. Ben 10 is on the field. Eda 10 will now buff all the monsters by a thousand. Senju gets a Dakini. Oh, my God. She used all three of her rituals properly. It does piercing. Dakini. Oh, the burn! Ben 10 burn! The 2K burn is beautiful. And it did the job. Alexis Rhodes came back from nothing and won the duel. That was a pretty brutal one. Very good duel between both of them. All right. Alexis Rhodes, good job. Very proud of you. You were supposed to lose that duel, and then all of a sudden you drew Bonju and it saved your entire life. So that is good. Let's go ahead and see what Tayo has to say after his loss. And we got Zane versus Dimitri next. Tayo. Tayo says he is the only person he thinks feels sad that, uh, uh, that feels sad about Raizo's death. He th he does not really care about Raizo, but he feels bad that Raizo died. Everyone else seems to not like Raizo at all. He was one of the only people that did not hate Raizo or just dislike Raizo. So we're going to move on to Zane Truesdale versus Dimitri. Zane Truesdale versus Dimitri. All right. Let's do it. These two should always give us a good duel. Both these characters are decently powerful in their own right. Let's see them go. I need to blow my nose. Sickness is getting to me, even though I took all the medicine I could. All right. 
did what I could, everybody. Let's see what we got. And that's a really good start to have Geico already. Still, we'll see what that means. Dark Hole comes through. Dark Hole will do its job. He has no monsters to capitalize off of Dark Hole, though. Future Fusion will come through. It'll take two turns to do its job, but once it does, does its job, it's good. Mystic Tamario. 100 damage thanks to the... Oh, Fisher! That's not nice. You don't gotta Fisher your opponent. Come on, man. That's just rude. All right, another Future Fusion, which would be useless. Do not play it. If you play it, you will heal your opponent for no reason. You can use Cyber Repair Plant now. Cyber Repair Plant will give him Prototype Cyber Dragon, which isn't great, but it's good enough. And Spell Absorption is doing its job. Fisher, okay. Are we gonna attack with that card? And we're gonna go for it. Prototype Cyber Dragon's gonna do a good job. Let me make sure I have the next ones ready. All right, Prototype Cyber Dragon is in the grave. He lost two Cyber Dragons. They're removed from play. That's pretty big. But you know what's bigger than that? A Cyber End Dragon. <laughs> All right, here comes the boss monster, everybody. It's time for Cyber End Dragon. One of the strongest cards in the game. Light Hex Seal's here to help as well. 1,700 attack goes through and 1,000 attack goes through. And Cyber End Dragon is legitimately one of the strongest cards in the lore right now. Dark Hole, yep, that makes sense. Why not? And because two of his Cyber Dragons have been removed from play, Zane's deck is actually horrible right now. Zane is in a very bad spot. He has a he has like no chance of coming back. Zane has no chance of coming back. The only way he does is with like lucky spells and traps. Other than that, he's done for. Having his two monsters banished, Dimitri made a really good play. <laughs> Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Well, you got rid of the monster. It cost you 1,100 life points to do it. But, I mean, you've been spell absorbing, so you're fine. Oh, that card can stall a little bit. I'll admit, that card could keep him in the duel just a little bit. Ngaiko is here to remove from play the rest of the Cyber Dragon cards. But it can't do battle damage, so it won't be able to. Granted, it will be able to take out all the Larvae's. And all the larvae are gone, which means finally, next turn, we can get to Zane's life points for real. What will you draw, Zane? Shining... Fuck. Wow, you keep getting all your floaters. That's crazy. Zane top-decked his cyber larvae floats into his shining angel floats. It's kind of bullshit. And morphing jar is wasted, but I guess you don't want to give Zane a new hand when you know he's already going to lose. Shining Angel can try to stall with Sh Shining Angel. Geico can now banish the last of the Cyber Dragons. Cyber End Dragon and Shining Angel are gone. Uh, Shining Angel can go into Shining Angel. Dark Elf will almost end this duel. Shining Angel will go into Prototype. His only hope is to draw Prototype Cyber Dragon. If he does not draw Prototype, the duel is over. The duel is over! Zane Truesdale had one card to draw and his entire deck that could save him out of 20 cards and he did not draw it so let's end it dimitri takes game all right dimitri will take game number one because he's actually a good duelist and i can respect that i respect a good duelist so zane you want to try and make it up for game number two uh, your hand could be a little better than that. Dark Hole is not good when you get it early just because AIs are stupid. So, I wish you luck. And we got ourselves a Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed is going to go through. Pot of Greed gets him a Cyber Dragon, which is nice. Dark Hole is already wasted. Like I said, it's terrible when they get it early. Dark Hole is better as a top deck later on in the duel. Light Hex Sealed is ballsy unless you play Swords or Magic Cylinder. Okay. If you can keep that Hex Sealed alive, it will not matter because Cyber Dragon will not be summoned. Alright, Dark Elf will pay 1,000 to do 2,000 to themselves. This is honestly a very good setup for Zane Truesdale. If you draw a prototype Cyber Dragon, you'll win the duel, basically. Ah, no luck. Alright, Cyber Dragon Tribute. Yep. Can't help himself. Alright, Cyber Dragon Tribute gets rid of the super powerful Dark Elf card. 
but I don't think it'll work out here. Geico with a buff. Wow, old black pendant coming in. Cyber Dragon is gone, but that means the repair plan can be used. Light Hex Seal's gone forever. We lost one Hex Seal so far. There are three. I believe. Power Bomb would have been nice earlier if you had that earlier. Cyber Repair Plan gets a Cyber Dragon, but it's not strong enough. But it could still be used with Cyber Wyvern. Let's see what it does. Wyvern's attack will do that. Oh my god, it was super worth it. Black Pendant goes in, and that is great. That is called Wyvern, right? No, Cyber. Sorry, Armored Cyber. Armored Cyber has done it. I would play swords if I were you, but you're not playing swords. Okay. You're a weirdo. I will, I will say that. Should have played swords while you had. Oh, do it, Zane! All in! Light Hex Seal! Double Twin Dragon! End this duel! Zane Truesdale on turn number eight will end the duel. It doesn't matter what you search unless it's Karibo. And there is no Karibo in that deck, so there we go. Good job from Zane Truesdale. That was a much better use of his deck. The second he drew the second Light Hex Sealed, I knew it was over. We're going to be moving into game number three now. We're going to see every duel today has been game three, I swear. Like, we have very few 2-0s. Two, uh, two Most of the duels are up to three games. Dimitri is a good duelist, though, so it makes sense. But Zane should be better. Zane should be doing that every time. Dimitri will start the duel of Spell Absorption, which is how he won his last duel, honestly. He just kept healing. Zane loves spell cards, after all. Speaking of which, Pot agreed. Speaking of which, uh, Cyber Dragon. Yeah, you don't want to MST that spell absorption? Alright. We'll see if that matters. Witch is going to just hurt her herself, that's fine. And we're playing Swords. I feel like I haven't seen a single tribute monster from uh, Dimitri in forever. He has them all. It's the same deck as for as it's always been. Play it, play it, play it. No! Play it! Oh, oh wait, yeah, I guess, yeah, Swords is up. But still, I'm greedy. I want to see it now. If, I feel like if we don't see it now, I'll never get to see it. Cyber Phoenix does its job by letting you draw one card. Okay. Zane Truesdale is in a very good spot. He can wait. He can play the waiting game. MST will hit the trap card, healing the opponent by five. You hit? You know what? That was a good hit. That was a hit that saved your life, probably. So that was a good hit. Cyber Phoenix is here. Yep, two of them. Hopefully in defense mode this time. Oh, why are they in attack mode? Why did you monster abort in attack mode? You're just going to lose your... I guess you want to draw one card for 200. I guess. I guess. I just don't feel good about it. And Dark Hole. I'm sure you're not dumb enough to do that. I didn't forget it was MST, everybody. I'll let you know right now. I don't trust the AI to ever use MST on swords, ever. They just ignore swords. That's that's their job. Their job is to never, never do anything about swords. Even if they have options to hit swords, they won't hit it. They just won't do it. So, what am I supposed to do? Other than get upset, of course. Why did you waste your prototype? You needed prototype, you idiot! You could have won the duel if you just didn't play Prototype. Alright. I can't believe it. This man. All he had to do was not play Prototype and he had the game. He had game in his hand. But he played Prototype and he paid the price. Freaking man. What is wrong with him? Alright. 700 damage comes through. Mr. Tomato will destroy Cyber Phoenix most likely. And that is good. Mystic Tomato is good. Uh, Mystic Plasmic Zone is good. You're going to lose now. You are actually going to lose. Okay, that attack, that one mattered. That was the attack you really need to stop. If Zane does not draw his Cyber Dragon, that's not Cyber Dragon, he will not be able to fuse, and that means it's game. He can Light Hex Sealed. Okay, that's enough. Twin, twin Head is enough. All right, there we go. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. It's going to take you a long time to hear me, but welcome. Happy to have you here. Witch of the Black Forest will get Dark Elf. Very nice. Dark Elf is barely not strong enough to take on Cyber Twin. Ugh, you need to stall. You need to stall for quite a while. 
Cyber Twin's gonna try and not let you stall, though. Pot of Avarice, there's a lot of cards in the grave. Cyber Dragon, uh, three Cyber Phoenixes in the grave, for crying out loud. One Cyber Dragon was found. He needs one more. One more Cyber Dragon, and he can make every one of his dreams come true. Come on, you gotta be running out of cards by now, Dimitri. This duel, this last duel is the most intense of all of them. Duel 1 was nothing, Duel 2 was nothing, Duel 3 is everything. And Morphing Shot up, really? Morphing Jar? Oh my god, Harpies doesn't matter. It's just the fact that he's healing and... Oh, he hits swords, I guess. Yeah, but... Oh, my God. Premature, unless he's... Oh, his Beast of Tolwar! Oh, my God, it's enough! It's just enough! Is Dimitri gonna take down Zane Truesdale? Is this happening? Dimitri's been healing this entire time, and it's really helping him out. 1,500 damage. Zane is bleeding. This is real. Oh, my God. Harpy's Feather Duster needs to come through. Armored, yes, get a Cyber Dragon. You need that. Yes, he could get Cyber Twin, but you need to pop that spell. No, stop healing him. Play your freaking Harpy's Feather Duster. You need to stop healing your opponent. Oh, it took you too long to do that. Damn it. All right, Cyber Dragon's here. Cyber Twin Dragon's here. He obviously could have had a Powered Ponded Cyber Twin Dragon, but he's an idiot. And we're going to go ahead and do 21. And we're going to go ahead and end this duel. It was a very close, very tight duel. But at the end of the day, Zane Truesdale will take down Dimitri. All right. Dimitri and Zane gave us a very good duel. These guys are very high-level duelists. Meeting quite a bit early in the tournament, in my opinion. But still, very high-level duelists. So, let's see who's up next. Oh, yeah. So, up next, Sadie versus Mindy. But, of course, your hint from Dimitri. Dimitri says nothing when asked. Dimitri does not speak nor have an alibi. He just stares at his cards. That is all. The next duel is going to be Sadie versus Mindy. Let's see how these two do against each other. Sadie versus Mindy. All right. Looking for Mindy right now. And then we're good to go. I'm all righty. I'm all ready to start, guys. Let's go ahead and start this duel. And let's see. Oh, it crashed. Yay. I love it when it crashes. Obviously, I'm being angry. I'm actually angry and I'm doing my best. All right. Let's try this again. Mindy versus uh, Sadie. Duel. Start duel. All right. I'm looking for Sadie now. Sadie is ready. All right, we're good. All right, let's see here. We have Dark Room of Nightmare. That's a perfect start for Mindy to get her extra burn card. That's really good. But her opponent has such a powerful card at the beginning, it's kind of scary. Two 2100 beaters. A thousand burn is nice. Um, especially when you can do an extra 300. Soul Tiger is like the only card Min Mindy has that can hold back these birds. That is a very lucky bird to have. Alright, with that bird, he's in a good position. Skellinjul, that could be set. Okay, we're gonna... You do know you can't beat your opponent anyway, right? And Nimble Momonga will die. But at least you got rid of the field spell, so the power isn't so scary anymore. All the Nimble Momongas are going to die. But at the same time, you heal 3,000 life points. 3,000 healing and thinning out your deck is super good. I swear, these cards were invented way too early. Nimble Momonga came out in Spell Rulers or Magic Rulers for crying out loud. Such an early card. Alright, Mindy, what's your answer? Yeah, that's about right. And the attack comes through. Vanilla! Okay, Vanilla will hold the field. 
Maybe holding on to that just desserts would have been a better idea, Mindy. You didn't realize how <laughs> how weak your opponent's deck would be. Pot of Greed comes through. And we have a set, and we have a set. Graceful Charity comes through. Oh, Dark Hole's just mean. There's no... No. You wouldn't Dark Hole, right? You wouldn't Dark Hole. Yeah, Giant Germs as well. You're right about that one, Phoenix. All right. Looks like Mindy has this one in the bag. She has so many life points, an impenetrable wall of defense, and just good cards. That wall of defense is going away now. I am incorrect. I am sorry for lying to you. Oh, my God. It would have gone away anyway because of the field spell. So, honestly, that TT was worth it. That TT was worth it. Normally, it wouldn't, but because of the field spell in her hand, it was worth it. I can't believe you're going in aggressively. I cannot believe you're spending all of your options to go in aggressively. Holy crap. Mindy is playing aggressively rather than defensively for the first time ever. What is going on here? Oh, don't tell me you're you're going to dark hole, aren't you? You're going to dark hole, aren't you? You're going to do it. Don't pretend like you're not. Oh my god, you're not. Thank god. I actually prefer that you don't. It makes no sense to Dark Hole. I guess you stop the 2,000 heal, but you might need that Dark Hole later. Alright, and we got ourselves Hysteric Fairy. Hysteric Fairy is very powerful, so even all of Mindy's defenses can't hold back that card. Vanilla doesn't stand a chance. Oh no, Mindy, your giant wall of defense has been destroyed. How will you win the duel now? Reborn is not good. That's getting scary. That was a weird choice. Oh, no, it wasn't. I forgot. That's your boss monster. Never mind. Boss time. No, two monsters is better than one, apparently. Nope, that was dumb. All right. Hexsealed is here. We have the boss, St. Joan. St. Joan is a very good monster and will definitely put her in a good spot. We're just going to have a set. Will not work. Mindy's screwed. Mindy is absolutely screwed. Unless she draws burn cards, she's done. Morphin- Wow, that's the only thing she could have drawn. That is legitimately the only card she could have drawn that gives her a chance at winning. Alright, Mindy is still in the duel. Fusion Sage, you can get another St. Joan for fun. This entire duel will be decided by Mindy's whatever she just drew. It, right now, this is the end of the duel. That's a good card. That won't help. You you intentionally pick you pick that for real. Oh, she's done. Oh my god, if that's all you spent your monster aboard on, you're done. She can make another St. Joan right now. She has three hysteric fairies. You you are done, Mindy. Oh, that's a nice try. That's 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 gonna buy you one more turn. Mindy bought herself one more turn. Fair enough. I didn't think she'd be able to do it because I thought her opponent would fuse, but they refused to fuse. And that is now it's game. Now it's game. That's definitely going to be game. All right. Shining Angel is here. Giant Rat doesn't stand a chance. There's no rat choice that can give her a card strong enough. And goodbye to your monster. Goodbye. So just going to keep doing it. Mindy, I'm, I'm warning you. And game winning attack. GG. Winner is Sadie in game number one. All right, Sadie. For a person that really doesn't care about her job that much, is just chilling. Yeah, you're a pretty interesting duelist. You're pretty good at dueling. I gotta say. We're gonna move into game number two. We'll see if Mindy can do a little bit better. I feel like Sadie's a lot better than we thought. Like, a lot better. Shining Angels, you don't want to start with two. That's unlucky. Starting with two Shining Angels is bad. Mindy's in trouble. Sadie got the victory. Now we're going to go ahead and get the big set in. Shining Angel's not going to be strong enough to break it. Hysteric Fairy probably isn't strong enough to break it. Oh, it was Nimble Mamanga. Okay, fair enough. All right, Nimble Mamanga is coming through. 
and they had two in their hand. Just like how there were two Shining Angels, there were two Nimble Mamangas in the hand of Mindy. So both characters are showing us that Master Duel cheats and gives you copies of the cards that you run copies of. Graceful Charity, there we go. Graceful Charity throws away two cards they do not need. And lots of back row for days. It needs to be very powerful back row, though. Holly has no target. Only one target, and it's not enough. Morphing Jar is really good. They both could use it right now. I will admit, both of them could. MST comes through. What are we going to hit? We hit Premature Burial. That's brutal. Absolutely brutal that we hit that. And there we go. Monster Born comes through on the wrong side of the field. So what are you going to do now, huh, Mindy? A lot, all your cards are on the other side. What can you possibly do? A burn card is a good idea. Just Desserts is a beautiful idea. 2,300 burn. Massive amount of burn, but it does not matter if you can't protect your field. And given that she has the field spell in her hand, I know you can't see it, but I can see it. Uh, you're probably about to die. All right, Soul Tiger will be protected until... Oh, Reliable Guardian! Mindy holds the field for one more turn. The question is, will it last? Or will she be out of cards after this? Dark Hole! That is massive! Oh, my God. Oh, wow, that's crazy. All right, Hysteric Fairy could obviously do something. Oh, Trap Hole with Spikes, another big burn, 900 burn, an extra 300. If Mindy had a beater monster like the rat right now, she'd be able to do it. Fire Wing Pegasus, she got her boss. Well, not her boss, but her beater, and it's over. It's over, cut the video. Mindy is gonna take it. Game number one is definitely going to Mindy. I don't see it going any other way. She can win just with the burn. She doesn't even need to win by battle. Slowly but surely. Next turn, it's over. Next turn. Oh, she, she could have won by battle right now. She just decided that I have game. She understands that, oh, maybe they'll come back. Maybe it's a nimble manga, yada, yada. Who cares? Oh, no, you destroyed my monster. Whatever will I do? Okay, go ahead and just end this duel. Go ahead and just end this duel. Yep, 400 burn from the Dark Snake Syndrome. Very good play. We're going into game three, everybody. We're going into game three. Yeah, sorry, no, if I say game one, that's my bad. It's her first win, though. We're going to game three. So, one win for Sadie, one win for Mindy. Again, we keep going to game three today. Everybody is, like, at the same power level. I guess they're all being taught by the same very crappy teachers, so it makes sense. Alright, Luminous Spark comes through. And Shining Angel's got a big old 1900 attack stat. How are you going to deal with that, Mindy? That's about right. You're a defensive deck. You should play defensively. That makes sense. And TT is good. Twenty-three hundred damage. That is brutal, everybody. Absolutely brutal. Dark Snake Syndrome. That's also very good. You gotta love it. Fusion Sage comes through. Fusion Sage gets Polymerization. 2300, it will destroy it. So we're, we're, we're going to race to the bottom. This duel could go either way. Obviously, I would give it to uh, Sadie of all people. I think Sadie's going to take this one. Mindy's at a huge disadvantage right now. And unless she draws a massive burn card and can protect her own life points, she's going to die. Just Desserts is a nice way to kind of turn the life points around, but at the same time, it does not matter because your opponent's an idiot and attacked in the wrong order. Never mind, it might matter. <laughs> because of that, it might matter. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. All right, Dark Snake Syndrome does 400, 400, 300 extra. 
It's gonna, oh, she didn't draw a monster. This could be it. This might be Sadie's victory. Just desserts does not matter. A thousand burn will not make the difference. MST chains to get rid of the dark room. Wait, is it for dark room or dark snake? Which one are we hitting? We're hitting dark room? Okay. We hit the dark room of nightmare. She likes the dark snake. She's like, I want it. Battle King Orion is here. Oh my God. Oh God, that's great. Dark Snake Syndrome ends the duel. The winner is Sadie. The winner is Sadie. That is great. So we're gonna go ahead and move some stuff around. Which means Mindy, if she's holding any information, will now have to reveal it. Mindy has to reveal. Mindy's alibi is that she was with her friends. And she wants to put on the record that no one liked Rizo. However, she believes she saw a Slifer Red student around the Obelisk Blue dorms. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get over here. Oh, no, I'm not going to reread any of the uh, all, all of the clues. Are you crazy? If you haven't been here or been paying attention, you're screwed. I kind of want you guys to get it wrong so I can kill off another character. My goal is to kill off another character. Your goal is to stop that from happening. That's that's all we're doing here. All right, so we're going to get the next duel going. It's going to be Wheeler versus Jasmine, which honestly, this could be plot relevant. <laughs> not lore relevant, our lore relevant, but anime plot relevant. Wheeler versus Jasmine. Let's see how these two do against each other. And here we go. We are ready. Jasmine's good to go. And there we go. They're all ready to fight. And the fight looks like it's going uh, so far both ways. <clears throat> I would say Jasmine has field advantage, but I'm seeing that Hain Hain and, and that Hain Hain could make a difference here. <clears throat> MST could also be used to weaken the opponent if you really want to, but I would say just play defensively right now. <clears throat> And Giant Rat will, uh, oh, she's going for Harpy Lady 1, isn't she? Oh, what a play. Harpy Lady 1 is here. Ral is the Starbird is here. MST comes through just to take away some of the damage. It's a little too much damage. Malevolent Nuzzler will be getting, uh, be getting redrawn, so we'll see. Giant Rat gets into Giant Rat. Ral is the Starbird is going to do 500. And Ral is the Starbird and Giant Rat are going to do their things. Let's see who does better, though. And Giant Rat is here. Starbird's going away for a little bit. Sylphite is here. Okay, a lot of characters are moving around now. Jasmine's a very good duelist, and she shows you why. Hain Hain can try to get rid of some of these cards. Okay, Hunter Owl will leave for a second. The big cattle drive is like, hey, give me a card. And then we got ourselves of this... Oh, damn it, that was a good idea. It was such a good idea, but he could not follow through. It looks like that Berserk Gorilla is gone. And there we go, 3,550 damage. Giant Rat comes through. Giant Rat gets Nimble the Manga to stall for time. And you better believe you need that. All right, 1,000 life points comes up. Very nice, very nice. Berserk Gorilla is here. And Sakuretsu Armor is here. Beast Soul Swap, okay. Looks like we're swapping everybody. That was a really good play from the, our buddy here. It stops the Saku from hitting him, but he's still too weak because of the Hunter Owl. I still say, out of all the AI today, um, so far Wheeler has had the best AI today. Wheeler has had the best AI.
And it's over. Jasmine doesn't care how good your AI is. She is still one of the best duelists at the school and the strongest Obelisk Blue girl do uh, Girls Dorm duelist. So we're going to see if she can go ahead and get two wins and make it easy or if Wheeler will get the win. Okay, let's see here. We got standby, we got main phase, giant rat will be set. That makes a lot of sense. And Sonic Duck, a solid monster. I have nothing against Sonic Duck. I think it's a great card. Giant Rat's gonna get Milus Radiant. Good card. You gotta get your little doggo out there to help out your uh, your ape cards. Like Berserk Gorilla. Or at least Bazoo the Soul Eater. MST, Berserk Gorilla's looking real strong, and it will destroy the opponent. Well, Milus Radiant, what's like to hide in defense mode? And Harpy Lady 1 comes through. Silphie goes through the crash. It was so worth it. Silphie hits. Oh, I thought you were going to hit Bazoo. If they hit Bazoo, that would have been amazing. If they hit Bazoo, that would have been absolutely amazing. Bazoo the Soul Eater is here. And Bazoo the Soul Eater is about to start eating monsters for power. All of that power is now inside Bazoo. And it's going to be thrown right back at Wheeler's face. Wheeler's getting pretty unlucky so far. Oh, shit. Wheeler is getting really unlucky. I feel bad. Axe of Despair! 3,300 damage! 800 coming through. 1,600 coming through. Holy crap. Premature? It could make the difference. Yeah, gotta get rid of Harpy Lady and Axe of Despair. I'm just saying. Yeah, gotta get rid of it. Okay, 500 damage, but Berserk Gorilla still remains. <coughs> he needs to get to his Baboon, but that means he needs something like TT or Dark Hole. Bolted Kong is pretty good, just as, you know, a strong monster. Flying Kamakiri wanted you to do that, though. Yeah, that's no good. The attack comes through a thousand damage. Oh my god. Rallus the Starbird does it. And it looks like Wheeler is one. Oh no. He's, he's one turn away from being 2 0'd. Jasmine might be the first person to 2 0 a duelist today. It's honestly been going on super long. And don't worry, Jason. You'll get paid even more than I said yesterday. If it goes way longer than I think. Harpy Lady won, and Sylphie, it's over. It's over. Nimble Momonga, I already saw some in the grave, right? So it does not matter. You could try healing. You're not a bad duelist, Wheeler. You're clearly a decent duelist. Um, another 1,000 life points, but 4,300. Jasmine is so damn good. This is why she's on top, everybody. This is why she is good. You gotta love her. All right. We are now going to go ahead and move uh, Jasmine forward. And now that we're moving on to the next duel, I can now say Wheeler's Hint. After dueling Jasmine, Wheeler freaks out, grabs Jasmine, and takes her to another side of the dual stadium. Obviously, they're on lockdown, so they're stuck in the dual stadium. After a while, he calms down, and Jasmine gets let go. The tournament continues. He's not going to talk. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue. Jasmine's fine. He just kind of she he just kind of kidnapped her for a little bit, but you know she's fine. He couldn't go anywhere, so they eventually he calmed down after losing the duel. So let's go ahead and see what happens. America or Tanaka? Let's find these characters. Tanaka, you gotta admit, that insect boy, he's probably gonna win it. Like, this guy is so strong, especially with his new buffs. Like, he is gonna win this thing. If I could find him. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to find him. He's just not here. T 
Tanaka, Tanaka, Tanaka. There he is. Found him. All right. Just like that, we are going to go ahead and get into the next duel. Sorry about all that waiting. I kind of got screwed over. He was in the corner. They always are. So we're going to have America duel Tanaka. We're going to see what they can do. America's on the wrong side right now. All right. And I just need a good old T for Tanaka. There's so many T characters. God damn it. There are so many characters with T in their name. All right. I found it. We're good then. And there we go. Monster Reborn comes through. Monster Reborn gets Metal Armored. But oh my god. Oh my god. Tanaka, go a little easier, dude. Oh my god. Leave him alone. He's just a dude. He ain't trying to hurt nobody. America just wants to test out his dual theory. His deck out theory. He, 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 come on. Oh, don't Cyber Jar. Oh, I get it. You Fisher first so they don't think you have Cyber Jar, and then you Cyber Jar them. He's got that play in his mind. All right, Giant Flea is here. Giant Flea goes after, and Tanaka is ruined. He lost all of that advantage. Oh, no, he got Insect Knight. Never mind. Insect Knight is probably plenty of advantage. Oh, he put it in defense mode like an idiot. All right, here we go. And there it is. And there it is. We got lots of new cards. The swarm is here. You're right, everybody. It's swarm time. Hand destruction, though. What are we throwing away? Lair wire before hand, uh, hand destruction. Interesting. Chainsaw insect is going in the grave. He's looking at that chainsaw intent. Tanaka's like, huh, maybe I want one of those in my deck. I don't know yet. Graceful Charity, he needs to get some more deck out stuff. Ch Chainsaw Insect is deck out. Bistro Butcher, it's going the wrong way. Tanaka's got you there. And Call of the Haunted. And there we go. With that, he's got himself Armored Lizard. He's got Insect Knight. He's got everything. America's in so much trouble. It doesn't matter if you make your opponent draw. We'll take a check. His deck is down to 17 cards, but your life points are around half. You're not going to survive. You got a Cyber Jar, you bitch. You're going to deck him out with Cyber Jar? Don't do it. Just Bistro him. Bistro him like a good person would. Okay, here we go. All right, Call of the Haunted comes through, and we got Metal Armored Bug. Metal Armored Bug has got backup from Howling Insect, and the damage is good. Next turn, it's over, except we know what his hand is, so it's not technically over unless the AI is stupid. I would just Cyber Jar again. You got to you know, go all in with Cyber Jar. Don't need a worm yet. That's for later. Needle Worm's good. That's for later. All right, America, you could do this. Howling Insect. Okay, Cyber Jar. Let's start throwing things away. And... Gaia Power. Gaia Power. In Neo Bug. Neo Bug's good. Premature Burial for Metal Armored Bug and Insect Knight. All right. You keep putting him in defense mode, and that makes me upset. You could just put him in attack mode. That's all I'm saying. Two Needle Worms! Oh, my God! Wait, that's ten cards. Hold up. Hold up. He only has six cards left! Tanaka's in danger! America, you have it! You have it, America! He can't win! Unless he runs a burn card, it's over! Needleworm five cards away! Needleworm five cards away! Now we are gonna set... Tanaka got dusted. Game number one goes to America. He took down the number one Slifer Red student. This man took down the number one Slifer Red student. Holy crap.
Moving into game number two. Pot agreed. You gotta be careful, Tanaka. You don't want him to deck you out again. One more deck out and you're going home. Well, not really. You you have a chance of dying. <laughs> Unless you were the killer. All right, let's see. And Monster of Born comes through. Monster of Born gets Neo Bug. And MST gets rid of Magic Cylinder. That's a big hit. Unlucky. Neo Bug for Neo Bug. Do you have something better than Neo Bug? Yes, you do. Yes, you super do. God damn. Oh my god. You have a lot of stuff. You have a lot of good stuff right now. Nimble Bomonga is going to try and stall so you can't win anytime soon. But at the same time, you, you're hitting him. All right. Thousand life points. Premature burial. We got ourselves Neo Bug. Okay, Morphing Jar is totally going to be worth it. Morphing Jar is destroyed. We're going to destroy everything in the hands. Oh, we got two Cyber Jars too damn late. Those two Cyber Jars are too damn late for it to matter. It's so much damage. And he lost Needle Worm, which doesn't actually matter. Actually, no, he healed too much. The Nimble Momongus kept him alive. But the damage was insane. Cyber Jar is his only hope now. Hand destruction again. We're going to throw away everything. Chainsaw insect. You don't. Oh my god. What if he has metal armored bug? Look at his hand. He ha if he has metal armored bug, you die. Are you crazy? America is actually insane. What are you doing, America? Come on. Never mind. Your opponent is crazier than you are. You just dark hold. Unless you have premature. No, you already used premature. The flea. All right, the flea goes in for 50 or 2k. 900 life points remain. Will the deck out strategy work or will the 900 do it all? Cyber Jar probably will decide. Oh, premature. Whoa, 100 life points left. I apologize for being incorrect. And with that 100 life points, will it do it? Chainsaw Insect goes. I guess we could check how many cards are left in the deck. Sixteen cards left. There we go. And there we go. 4,000 damage, and it is over! Metal Armored Bug will do it, everybody. Tanaka takes game two. America did good in game one, but in game two, he should have just played Cyber Jars. And then just went with that route, but he didn't feel like it. Let's go into game number three, though. Chainsaw Insect goes. Sorry, I'm waiting for them to actually do something, but they're not. And Howling Insect goes as well. This is honestly going to thin out your deck more, Tanaka. You got to be a little careful. Oh, shit. If you picked Pin Chopper, you have a good reason to. Okay, wait a minute. We might get to see a Metal Armored Bug, everybody. I hope you're excited. Insect Knight is here. Premature Burial is here. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, that's a shame. I was going to say, he's going for it. He's trying to win this duel as soon as possible. He is trying to win this duel as soon as he can. And Chainsaw Inset, but Pinch Hopper wanted to die. I guarantee it. So let's see whose is better. Chainsaw Inset draws a card. Metal Armored Bug is here. The OG boss monster is doing so much work in these duels. 1900 damage also comes through. And we have a set set. Interesting. And damage god oh, didn't work. All right, cyber draw. Throw it all away. Yep. He got a lot of amazing spells, but honestly, you're gonna be a little worried for Tanaka. 
He needs more monsters to get through all this crap. Tanaka is going to be running out of cards real soon. Need a worm. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's 10 cards. Wait, let's go check his deck real quick. Why did you play them in attack mode? He only had 19 cards left. He could have had 9 cards left. Why would you play the Needle Worms in attack? He could have had 7 cards left. Why would you do this? Oh, shit. Metal Armored Bug is here. Tanaka needs to go ham next turn. He got so lucky. He got so lucky. America messed up real bad right there. Although Dark Hole could still fix everything. Yep, Dark Hole fixes everything. Put the band-aid on the problem, basically. Alright, 15 to the face. Nope. Metal Armor Bug will always come back. Ugh, not looking too good. Insect Knight, Insectipede, Fisher. It's over. It's over. Tanaka, just kick his ass. It's his, it's his own fault. It's his own fault, Tanaka. Use your Metal Armored, the, uh, metal armored uh, Tormentor. Metal Armored Tormentor goes in and Saku says no. All right. Well, you lost your Metal Armored Tormentor. Very close to winning. Super damn close to winning. Can this man still pull off a victory? Can't hand destruction. Neobug is here. Morphing Jar number two goes through. Morphing Jar number two throws back all the cards. One spell hit. Two spells hit. Okay, that's two deck out. Doomdozers hit. Three spells hit. Four spells hit. Holy crap, wait. Hold hold up. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Another monster hit. Only one monster summoned. Two cards gone. He only has eight cards left, and he lost two of his boss monsters. He lost two of his boss monsters. Up. Oh, you know what? I think resonance is enough. Resonance Insect is enough. That'll do. Simultaneous loss. He got him down to six cards. If he just Needle Wormed, he would have won. Because he did not Needle Worm, the winner is Tanaka. All right. Tanaka has done it. America has been defeated. So we are going to go ahead and move these guys aside. Let's just move these guys aside. And the next duel will be Alice versus Jaden. Interesting. So for America's, um, here we go. America's thing. America's alibi was that he was in the raw yellow door. No one can uh, say he was there because he was in his room, you know, focusing on dual theory, deck out theory. But he would like to add that he does not like how Crowler treated Rio, uh, Rizo before the killing. He says that Crowler was always really hard on Rizo. So let's go ahead and let's continue. Alice versus Jaden is our next duel. I'm going to set that up right now. And let's go ahead and get this duel started. Thank you all for your patience. All right, Alice is there. Let's go find Jaden. And let's watch them duel. It should be a fun time. We have ne Elemental Hero Neos Alias. And Alias is just going to sit there. This is an anime duel, funny enough. We're just going to have some sets. Nothing wrong with that. Soul Exchange is not useful yet. You need to keep a monster alive for that card to have value. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed's going to give Jaden some new cards. Nope, he's just going to summon Alias, but it does get a buff. And that lets him special summon. So now he's got Dark Panther, which gives him another buff. Uh, strange that you attacked with Dark Panther first, but whatever. At the end of the day, Jaden has an extremely scary field. So, you know what would probably be used right now? Something like a Harpy's Feather Duster. I'd, I'd dust them feathers real quick. You don't want to dust those feathers? Yeah, dust those feathers. Alright, the feathers have been dusted. Very good. Very good. 
And we're gonna fuse. Even though he does not have Neo Space, he is willing to fuse two Neoses together into Neo's Knight? Really? We're gonna use Neo's Knight. I did not expect that. Okay. I didn't think he'd actually pull that card off, ever. We have Elemental Hero Neo's Knight, everybody. And you know what? He does get to keep that one, so good for him. Uh, lots of new cards. That's always good. Morphin Jar. Prisma's like, hey, I like that Flare Scarab guy. And there's a fusion. Okay. Hello, Elemental Hero Flare guy. And that was dumb. Use Neos Knight. Always use Neos Knight. 3,700 to your face, but now you're going to lose Flare Man. Although Flare Man was pretty good. Flare Man was pretty good. He lasted, uh, he lasted as much as he needed to. 3,700 direct damage is brutal. And you're going to lose your other cards to Dark Hole anyway, so it's better that it went back into the deck, because you don't really run copies of your uh, Neo Spatians, because there are so many of them. 1,600 goes through. So, what can you do now, Jaden, other than Fiendish Comedian? It failed. Because it failed, he loses 10 cards. Brutal. And Grand Mole. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is this, is this a blast from the Tag Force pass? And also it happened in Championship as well? Is this about to happen? Oh, God. Oh, God. This is really bad. This, this is really bad for Jaden. Oh, no. This is real. This is happening. This is happening. This game has the same problem. It's real. It's they don't know what to do. They're looping. They're looping like Louie. Help me. He has all that back row, but if he doesn't stop looping, it's over. He's locked into his own mole. It's happening. He's locked into his own mole. Kaiser Seahorse. It's over. It's over. He, he looped himself. Jaden did really good in the beginning of the duel, but it looks like Alice is taking the end of the duel. Alice, obliterate. You don't need to play all these cards. Just go obliterate them. You really don't need to go this hard. Okay, moisture creature. Sure, you love your moisture creature. You can stop now. You already have game. Moisture creature for game. And it's over. Just like that, we're back in this freaking looping nightmare. Doesn't matter what game they're playing. They'll always do it. So, with that, we're going to have to move into game number two. Good luck to Jaden. If Jaden loses this duel, he'll have to give us some information. <laughs> if Alice loses, she'd have to give us some of hers. Interesting. Oh, God. It was interesting till I saw what you chose. Oh, no. If you have worried emotes, I would use them right now because he just started this duel with Grand Mole. If you have any worried emotes, I would I would use them immediately. I would use them immediately. 1700 damage goes through. Do not Grand Mole. Get Alias or something. I'm worried. I'm starting to get worried. I'm getting real worried. The loop is happening again. He got it twice in a row. He got it twice in a row. All right, Kaiser Seahorse. Unless Jaden draws something to end his loop, it's over. He's stuck. He doesn't know what else to do. His brain can't handle it. Grand Mole loop is real. It's real. The loop is real. He can't help himself. Will somebody help him? Oh, God, he threw away. Gl Glow Moss would have been 10 times better. Glow Moss legitimately would have been 10 times better. Jaden... <coughs> if you keep the loop going, you could be on your last turn if they have a special summon. It's not the loop! It's not the loop! He ends his own loop, thank God! With only 2,900 life points left, he ends the loop. But now he still has to win the duel with, like, no life points. Oh, and she's not going to make it easy. Oh, that's her boss. Alright, now this has nothing to do with the loop, but I would I would totally use Grand Mole in this situation. This is the situation you use Grand Mole. Yes. I'm not even gonna get mad. This is a good situation to use it in. Did you just set your field spell? Oh my god. Jaden, 
Changing. Rogue Doll goes in. He has to win the duel with 1,400 life points left. The loop may have ended, but my insanity remains. Will he do something about it? Yes, that's a good card. I will accept that as a good card. Yes, that's a good place to put that card. Yes, Neo Space is good because you buff yourself. Yes, that worked. Okay, play traps now. You need so many traps. Sir, you need traps. You can't just be there. You don't know what she's got. She might try something crazy on you. You've never seen before. We got freaking 1700 beater monster right there. We got mind control. You see the problem? See why we need new trap cards? You see moisture creatures on his way. Shit. <laughs> that didn't work. All right. It is over. Jaden Yuki has lost. Jaden Yuki has lost. His Neo's deck was not terrible. He got to round three, but not the best. Not It had one fatal flaw. His Neo's deck had one fatal flaw, and that's it. So let's go ahead, and I think we're moving into round number four now. And round four, for those of you that are curious, is only top eight. There's only eight characters left. So let's go ahead and let's move Alice forward. For those of you that want to know Jaden's hint. You know what? I was a little mean when I wrote this. I'm not going to say that hint. I'll just make it up on the spot. That You don't want to know what I actually wrote down. Uh, Jaden was with Cyrus, obviously. Jaden's alibi was he was with Cyrus, and Cyrus has already said he was with Jaden. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to top eight. We are in top eight. We still don't have enough information to really know who the killer might be. And we don't even know if the killer's still in the tournament and might win the tournament. That would be crazy. So let's go ahead and see who's up next. It's Daigo Serrano versus Dark Magician Girl. Let's see these two go at it. All right, here we go. All right, you guys want to know? I was I, I wrote down you're an idiot if you think Jaden actually did it. I'm sorry. I, I was I was it was tired. I was tired. I was just mean when I wrote that. I was I was just fuck. I I was in a bad place probably. <laughs> you're you guys are not idiots. It's good to, it's good to it's good to suspect everybody. But let's let's be honest. <laughs> it's, it wasn't gonna be Jaden. There's a reason I gave him a strong alibi. It was not going to be Jaden. Alright, so I'm still looking for Daigo, and then we'll be good to go. It looks like Dark Magician Girl had a pretty interesting start, and he, she steals Element Dragon. That's kind of a weird steal. <coughs> that is kind of a weird steal. Dark Hole! That is brutal. All right, Dark Hole is brutal. But what if, though? <laughs> All right, we're going to have a draw there. And we're going to just go with Call of the Haunted. That's probably the best play you could do. Rep Fire Magician is a solid Magician card. Daigo now has to face on two magicians. It's Dark Magician Girl. Dark Magician Girl walks onto the field and now attacks you with Dark Burning Magic. Why did you play that in attack mode? Old Vindictive is a man-eater bug, but better. Never in attack mode. Okay, it's over anyway, but still, that was stupid. You know it was stupid. Don't be stupid. Okay. The duel's not even over, so now I bet you wish you had that old Vindictive ready to go. I bet you wish you did. Yeah. Another old Vindictive, but this time it's fine. That that one in Attack was fine. We get a cool ending animation because Dark Magician Girl won with herself. She literally gets to destroy Daigo herself. Honestly, 8,000. That was a perfect victory on one of the scariest duelists in the tournament. Daigo is legitimately one of the king of games from the past. One of the strongest characters in the tournament. That is horrifying. <clears throat> and reasoning comes through. Reasoning's going to get Horus level 4. Uh, you didn't say level 4, really? You could have just summoned it. You could have said level 4. There's Most people would say level 4. 
And offerings to the Doom will do its job. Horus is gone now. 1600 attack goes through. Very nice. Very nice. <coughs> oh, you spent a whole dark hole on her? Really? Is she worth it? Like, if the lock was there, I get it. But just her? Oh, you want her. That's why. Never mind. I get it. I get it. Daigo wants to have a Valkyrie on, her, on his side. That's always nice. I wonder what's in his hand, just since he's not playing any monsters. That's weird. All right. Now you got to face your own monster. How are you going to win? Rapid Fire can tie. I would just do a Vindictive. You don't want to give him a chance to get to Horus. You should have just done a Vindictive. Now you're giving him a whole extra turn to get to Horus. Dark Magician Girl can stop that from happening, though. But there's a lot of back row. And I'm scared about that back row. I'm scared about two of those back row. <clears throat> and the attack goes through. Not bad. We got some work going in there. That's all right. Defense again. That's no good. Come on, man. We could do a little bit better. Breaker. That's a lot better. Okay, Breaker the Magical Warrior is a lot better. It's going to break your world, and it broke uh, Royal Decree. Traps are now usable again if that uh, ever would have come up, but it didn't. And Mass Dragon, of course. Mass Dragon's going to do its job. Twin Headed Behemoth is here to stall yet again. That's all it ever does. The question is will it actually come in handy, or is it going to be wasted? Call the Haunted. Let's see what happens. Horus is here. Horus cannot destroy the. Oh, shit! Oh, no! It's over! It's 100% over. Especially if they're dumb enough to play Old Vindictive in attack mode again. You're about to die. We're, we're going to see a Horus level 8. It's coming. Swords? Okay, that was a good top deck of swords. Never mind. It might not be over. With swords, uh, nothing has stopped and they can make it to level 8 still. <laughs> yeah, Horus level 6 does not care about swords. But what it does matter is the other monsters can't attack. All right. Yep, Swords will not save your Breaker the Magical Warrior, which is a shame. If that card had survived, you would have been fine. And Horus level 8 is here. That's horrifying. A 3,500 beater monster that is not immune to Swords. Swords still stops it, but uh, yeah. Okay, what are you actually going to do here? Because you could destroy that monster, but because... Oh, I get it. That works. I... A level up being used as level down is weird, but that actually works, so I get it. Um, but now you have to find out how to win when your opponent's going to be stronger than you no matter what. Another Vindictive. I didn't think about that. <laughs> how do we do it? With two Vindictives. That's how we do it. Yeah, thank God she's at least setting the Vindictive Magician this time. All right, she needs to top deck something good. Apprentice is nice, but it's too late to the party. Old Vindictive is nice as well. But Twin Head is too powerful. And any fire monster, if he top decks Horus level 6, the duel is over. Okay, he didn't top deck Horus level 6, but he's still it's still pretty over. It feels over. Apprentice Magician is here. You can't get to Dark Magician no matter how hard you try. The third Vindictive is here. But if you got Dark Magician Girl, that would be a game changer. Dark Magician Girl would be a game changer. Pot agreed. Will she get herself? No. But interesting. No, you had the right card. You flip, you use the magical thing, and then you win. You had everything you needed, and you could save Dark Hole for later, but you just are so addicted to Dark Hole. It's the MVP card, and it's also the loser card. Oh, it's over. It's over. No spells allowed. It's over. 3,500 to the face. Game two goes to Daigo Serrano. You misplayed so hard. You misplayed so goddamn hard. All right. <coughs> Moving into game three. Dark Magician Girl had everything she needed and misused it. Absolutely misused. So let's see how game three goes. It's a pretty good hand from her. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty good hand. Pot of Greed's coming through. UFO Turtle. There we go. Breaker the Magical Warrior can break that back row in case they think it's scary. They don't think it's scary, so they're not willing to break it. UFO Turtle will get Mass Dragon, which I think is scary. I think Mass Dragon is something to be very worried about. 
Horus is here. And there's already a level 6. Level 6 is going to die. I bet you wish you would have broken now. Oh, no. You should have broken while you had the chance, you dumb idiot. Dark Magician Girl is in so much danger. No spells allowed anymore because there's going to be a level 8 on the field. And I guarantee you, you're not going to make it to level 8. Oh, what a waste. What a whoa? That's a good card. I was going to say, Suki Yomi, if you had Magician Circle ready, is good. I would have went Apprentice Magician if I were you. Suki Yomi can stall. Why? Why, Dark Magician Girl? Why? Big ass monster with eight with 3,000 attack, and you target the baby that already attacked? The monster that already attacked was your turn. You deserve to lose. I hope you lose. I hope it's over. End the end it. Get her out of here. Get her the heck out of here. I can't believe it. That is just terrible. That was just absolutely terrible. First duel, she kicked his ass. Every duel after that, she just made the worst plays possible. I, I, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. Beating Daigo is good, so the fact that she had one win shows that she's good. It's just the fact that she misplayed in the last two duels. So, Daigo moves forward. For those of you curious about um, Dark Magician Girl's hint, Dark Magician Girl is going to leave. She says that none of these people are the person she's looking for, but she admits she feels great darkness coming from Jinzo, Crowler, Dimitri, Ryota, Alice, and she can sense great darkness on other parts of the island. And then she left. She's gone. Even if she was the killer, she's gone. You can't catch her anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and get into Alexis Rhodes versus Zayd. This is going to be a fun duel. Alexis Rhodes versus Zayn. This should be fun. Let's see here. I can't find Zane's deck for some reason. Sorry. I'm doing my best. There he is. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this duel. Let's go ahead and get into it. So. Um, where is Alexis? I'm doing great. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, this tournament has been a lot of fun to do. I'm sad that there's so much lag in between us today. I'm sad that literally we're getting messed up today of all days when I would really like to speak to you guys, you know, it, right, immediately, but it's fine. All right, and Shining Angel goes through for 1,400. That is A-OK. -okay. Nothing wrong with that. Future Fusion. Okay, she's going to be struggling. If she has to go up against a Future Fusion, she is going to be super struggling. All right, turn change comes through. You need a good top deck. You need a Dakini. I don't think that's good enough. Manju gets Dakini. Not Dakini. Interesting. Now I'm curious what she's doing. Maximum damage, Ben 10. I like this. This is interesting. I would not have done this myself, but I like it. I like the, what she's thinking. Now, Ben 10 will do maximum damage at, with 2,800 attack. That's four. Oh, wait, it's going to the wrong graveyard. It's still 1,000 burn. That's nice. And that card makes sure you don't die, but then you still have to deal with another one. So that was a waste of your spell card. And Future Fusion. If she's not careful, she'll be staring down a Cyber End Dragon. She needs to win the duel before Cyber End Dragon is here. All right, Blade Skater, here we go. That's a lot of burn. Another 600 burn on top of that, so that's good damage. And Larva to stole. He's going to get Cyber and Dragon. No! 
With Cyber and Dragon, her Ben 10 doesn't mean anything anymore. She has to get to Kini. And she doesn't even have she's not even halfway there. She has zero options. His boss monster is gonna put her in a really bad spot. Wait, there's still one card she can draw in this moment in time. She has to draw Polly. Ah, shit. <laughs> I was so hopeful. I was so hopeful. Oh my god. I really was hoping. All right, here it comes. She has to doble pass save. 1,400 burn. 4,000 damage. Next turn is... Oh, no! He messed up! She can attack directly. <laughs> this is it. Alexis Rhodes, go with Blade Skater. Win the duel. Blade Skater skates to victory. No! No! Alexis Rhodes loses the duel. That was crazy. That was absolutely insane. Cyber and Pierce is their way to victory. Holy crap, the first duel between these two characters was so tight. Very good duel. Very good duel. Holy crap, that was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. For a game one, that was hype as shit. That was hype as shit, and I loved it. Oh. My god. I am stunned. I'm still stunned after that first duel. That was great. That was absolutely great. Okay, Monster Born comes through. And double prototype is very scary. I'm losing my voice. Holy crap. I'm already sick. I don't need to lose my voice on top of it. Warrior Lady of the Wasteland goes in. And if you just keep using Warrior Ladies, that's very interesting. Nope, just Blade Skater. Okay. And just like that, she knocks down all of his stuff. Very good play. She has back row for... Oh, shit. She lost one of her best traps or just one of the best traps in general. That sucks. That really sucks. Okay. Oh, boy. Cyber Dragon's here. Doble Passe. All right, with Doble Passe, she's got another 1,400 damage coming straight for his face, but she needs to draw a Ritual Monster or Spell Card to actually have advantage. Oh, shit! She did! Okay, what are we making? What are we making and baking? What feels good right now? We are going to be making ourselves a Dakini, everybody. Dakini is here. Two Blade Skaters equals one Dakini, apparently. I didn't know that. That makes sense, given the weapons. And Dakini's just going to say goodbye, Cyber Dragon, and goodbye, Life Voids. Nope, Saku. Damn. Oh, the freaking spell card. Beautiful. Saku. <laughs> there you go. That is good. Beautiful. Cyber Dragon, there we go. Cyber Dragon's here for a tribute of Cyber Dragon. Did I just watch that right? Excuse me, sir. Did you just summon Cyber Dragon, a uh, special summon Cyber Dragon, and then tribute it for Cyber Dragon? Are you freaking out in game number two, three? What are we on? Two? Yeah, I think we're on two. Yeah, we're on two. Uh, yeah, I think he's freaking out on game number two. He's barely in the duel. This whole duel is decided by this last top deck. A monster in defense mode would not save him. It's over. Piercing damage from Dakini is all she needs. All she has to do is pierce him. Don't even need the pot. Don't need the graceful. You already have game. Slow down. You already have game. You're all good. No need to complicate things. Dakini in a bikini. Go for it. And just like that, everybody, we have a victory of Alexis. That was good. That was good. Alexis can play hard when she gets Dakini out. So we're going to be going into game number three. Both these duelists are extremely good. I can't wait to see who's going to win it all. Future Fusion. Okay. That is scary. Future Fusion's very early. And we have Senju, but not Manju. We need Oh, there's Manju. Never mind. Never mind. Everything's fine. Oh, just do it. Just go all in. Just go all in. I would well before you go all in, MST at least with trap. And if if you plan on laying them, keep the future fusion. 
Okay, here we go. Dakini is here. Dakini gets rid of the card. And you see this why you know what? Keep the MST, but use it on future fusion at least. Don't don't just, you know. I understand why you're not using it. You're trying to see if your opponent will thin out or throw away their best cards. But at the same time, that might be a bad idea, but we'll see. Ah no, you're just gonna do that. Okay. Future fusion is not gonna work, thank god. Her having Dakini this early gives her huge advantage. Blade Skater could add on extra damage. This could be it already. Shining Angel saves the day. Manju's probably going to waste the spell card in my opinion, but it's fine. Yep, waste the spell card. Blade Skater, I don't think there's anything left to attack, so no, no need. Yeah. You don't want to end him in Prototype, because Prototype could become Power Bonded Cyber Twin Dragon. Hot agreed he needs something desperate. He's at the end of his row. Prototype. Power Bond! It's happening! I just said this play! He came back! At the last second, Zane Truesdale has nothing! Oh god! Monster Reborn! He has Cyber Twin Dragon! He's gonna end this duel! And that is it! Zane Truesdale has won in a really close, desperate duel against Alexis. The Power Bond damage will not go through, and you have done it, Zane great game game three was the best game three was the best loved it loved it loved it loved it so much going on <laughs> his last card being monster reborn was crazy the fact that that was the last card that is wild oh my <clears throat> oh my god now we are moving on to the other side of the bracket so that was really good from both of them. They're both very good duelists. Uh, the next duel is going to be Sadie versus Jasmine. I feel like Sadie is definitely the biggest wild card here. Doesn't make sense that she's still here, but I'm excited to see her. All right. Jasmine, Jasmine, Jasmine. That duel is great. That was a great duel. That one was beautiful. And I'm ready to start the next one. Let's go for it. Sadie versus Jasmine. <clears throat> Jasmine is the strongest Obelisk Blue student, as we all know. And uh, Sadie is a brand new character and is doing quite well. Or at least a brand new duelist in our tournaments. All right, Jasmine is ready. A lot of S names, so I need time for Sadie. Sadie is ready. Auto greed. Oh, you guys want the hint? All right, Alexis's hint. Alexis was in the Obelisk Blue dorm, girls' dorm, with Jasmine and Mindy. That is her alibi. She doesn't know who the suspect would be, but that is her alibi: is that she was with her friends. She was with both of them, Mindy and Jasmine, at the time. Light Hex Sealed is very good. That was a good good play by Sadie, honestly. I'm very impressed with that. And Premature Burial. Very nice. That was a waste of Premature Burial, but still. TTC. Now Premature Burial has value. You see how you messed up? Okay. You never understand how you mess up until the end, do you? All right, go get her. Let's see how much damage you got. Monster Aborn. Steal, steal the monster. Sure. Okay, now Sonic Duck. That works. That's a lot of damage. Oh, God. That crane ain't going to save you from this situation. You're going to need something else. This is really rough. Sacred Crane is there. Not willing to play the field spell for whatever reason. I can't imagine why. Maybe she just feels like it's over. It could Honestly, she could feel that. 3,300. Yep. Jasmine takes a big hit on this one. And rush recklessly. Yep, that was a good play. You got rid of Harpy Lady's buff. And now you see how the field spell comes in handy? Maybe you you play the field spell, you do you do something. Good play from Sadie. Overall, amazing play. Now play your field spell. Play your goddamn field spell. Unless there's a new rule about field spells that I don't know about, play it. Okay, there's no new rule. Good. And Battle King Orion is here. And widespread, bitch. 
damn it, it's so good. Widespread Ruin ruins it. That was such a good comeback from Sadie. She did everything she possibly could. She played that as well as she could, and it did not matter. Damn. Damn. All right. That's rough. That is rough. But it's fine. We'll, we'll go into more duels. It's fine. Let's go into game number two. Let's see if Sadie can make it up here. She's good duelist. I think she can do this. Okay, basic start, nothing happening. MST gets rid of a really good trap. That's a big shame. Magic Cylinder's gone. Uh, Axe of Despair is brutal. Uh, Monster Reborn comes through. Monster Reborn steals a not necessary card in my opinion, but sure. At least that stops your opponent from reviving it, so there's that value. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks really bad to be a Sadie fan right now. She's not a bad duelist. She is a decent duelist. And honestly, probably better than decent, because she's only losing to the best of the best. And Forgiving Maiden did her job. 3,000 from that owl, and that Axe of Despair is so brutal. Jasmine's winning with some good old-school strats of my attack is bigger than yours. Can't beat that. Harpy's Feather Duster is a very nice card to top deck, but it will not make a difference given the field. Flying Kamikiri will always keep your opponent stronger than you. You can at least get your Maiden back, I'll give you that, but that will not make a difference. Ral is the Starbird. Flying, oh, you want your freaking, he want, she wants Harpy Lady one every time. She loves Harpy Lady. It's literally her favorite person in the world. It's her favorite pro player's favorite cards. She loves using them. And it is over. Sadie is done for. Sadie was better than a lot of duelists, but she just got shown up by the best Obelisk Blue Girls duelist. So, good duel from her. That is good. Here we go. Alright, let's get into the hints. I know you guys don't want me to forget this time. So, the hint from Sadie is an alibi. Her alibi is that she was prepping sandwiches for today's sandwich cart. All the sandwiches are obviously in the dual arena right now, but her what she was doing at the time was prepping sandwiches for today's, uh, yeah, sandwich cart, which all those sandwiches are now in this room. For those of you that missed the intro, you, will under you won't understand. But, uh, yeah, she was the one prepping the sandwiches. Right now, we have Tanaka versus Alice. This is the last fight of top eight. We are almost at the point where we have to start deciding who the killer is. I'm, I'm very excited for this. You have no idea. All right. Tanaka versus Alice. I am setting this up. I am just about ready to go. And Alice is on the wrong side, isn't she? Whoops. Okay, where's T? T for Tanaka. There's only like a billion characters with T in their name. Ah, there's our boy. There's Tanaka. Oh, there we go. Call the Haunted gets hit. Turn change comes through and mind control is there. Malice Doll is also going to work together. Howling Insect is going away. Howling Insect will be used. We're going to go ahead and special summon the Pinch Hopper. Pinch Hopper is destroyed. But that means they are going to... Oh, no! He doesn't have his Metal Armored Bug! Alice has full control. Without his bug, he cannot... Oh, he's got the Doom Dozer! And he's got the Insect Armor! The Insect Armor has done it! The Doom Dozer has devoured the opponent! That is amazing! Holy shit, and we got, oh, just beautiful. Just beautiful play from Tanaka. This is why he is the best. I love this man. Love him. Okay, Dark Hole sucks, but I love you other, any other way. 
Sucks that that happens. Pinch Hopper is their left. Wow, you did not want to activate that. Oh, you really didn't want to activate that. Shit, that sucks, bro. That legitimately sucks. All right. Okay, neither player wants to play aggressively. Their monsters are both too weak. Time seal. You're not drawing a card, Tanaka. <coughs> Giant rat's here to heal freaking Alice. Alice is doing a lot better now. Goki pawn. Yay, you may not be drawing a card, but you could search for a card. Giant flea. That's actually just good enough. Okay, not bad so far. Not bad so far. Mysterious Puppeteer goes away. Not bad. Ooh, it's getting real tense in here. Very tense to see who's going to win this. We just have ourselves a set. Okay, the Comedian is here. Yeah, that's a lot of cards gone, I admit. But uh, does that actually change the duel in any way? I do not think so. Okay, Mysterious Puppeteer returns. You can use that for healing or tributing, depending on what you top deck Alice. Alice top decks a doll. Ooh, yep. <clears throat> Good timing to get your doll. A Puppeteer working together with a doll makes a lot of sense, but there are no strings on that Malice. All right, there we go. And we have another set. Very good. And we have Kaiser Seahorse. And Call of the Haunted comes through. Call of the Haunted will get rid of Giant Flea. And Kaiser Seahorse goes through. Nope, Lairwire says no. Giant Flea will be used to stop you. All right, a draw is here. Giant Rat is here. Another heal. I'm, I'm liking this. I think Tanaka's in danger. Alice might be the one that can take down Tanaka. I didn't realize her deck was even... I don't think her deck's very good, to be honest. I'm surprised she's this far. Top 8 for a bunch of mix mishmash cards that have to do something with freaking dolls or puppets. What the hell? Ooh, big damage. Big damage. That is it. Tanaka loses to Alice in game number one. That is absolutely brutal. Yeah, for those of you that are talking right now, that's not the Chancellor. Chancellor Shepard's a whole other character. Yeah, Chairman Bell. Her name's actually Bell. I don't know why I said Bell. That was a misprint by me. It happened. Bella sounds like a nice name, though. I like both. Bell was the name, though. All right, let's see. And Insect Armor with Laser Cannon. That that one insect has 2,600 attack. That's brutal. Okay. Harpy's uh, Feather Duster will do the job. Beautiful. Call the Haunted got hit. That's a huge hit. We're going to go ahead and go into draw phase. Neobug is here. This is one of his better cards from the classic one. Ooh. If... Alice can draw Soul Exchange. She's going to be able to pull off her card. Let's see if she draws it. Time Seal. He's not going to get any new cards, but he did not draw. She did not draw her Soul Exchange. Moisture Creature will remain. Does he have any monsters? Wow, he just happened to have Giant Flea. Lucky him. Neobug goes in. The Puppeteer is gone. The Rat is gone, but the Rat is here for stall. And there we go. Giant rat into giant rat into giant rat. Why not? Rats for days. Everyone wants a rat, right? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> right, Geki Break. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. Right, Geki Break can kill Insect Knight, but that's only one level four monster. There are four on the field. All right, and Insect Knight is gone. <clears throat> All right, there goes the damage. Soul exchange. Okay. 
soul exchange is there. Pinch Hopper is here. Graceful Charity is here. And the attacks go through. Pot Agree comes in. Beautiful. Beautiful damage. That's it. Tanaka ends it. Perfect victory. This is the Tanaka we know. Where was this Tanaka in the first duel? Alice in the first duel just perfectly countered him. This is the Tanaka we know. Tanaka takes game number two like it's nothing. We're going to game number three, and then we're going to find out our top four duelists. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. We have ourselves a set. Very nice. MST. Let's see what we hit. MST hits TT. That's a big hit. Good job from Tanaka to hit TT. All right, we have Malice Doll, we have Premature Burial, we have Giant Rats for days, and we have the Moisture who is Creature, and the attack goes the other way, but who cares? The damage is still very good. 2,800. You have to kill Moisture Creature somehow. There's only two cards in your deck that can even match that monster, none that can beat it. Oh, but you have Fisher in your hand. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> oh, but you have Fisher. Yeah, that, that is totally going to do it. All right, you got it right, which means all the monsters... Oh, wow, that's like nothing. No cards are gone at all. Oh, sorry, guys. I've still got the little sickness in me. I'm doing my best. This is my job, and I will do everything I can for the job. Well, Tanaka has game if he's willing to attack with more than... Well, he needs more monsters, actually. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh, he attacked with the wrong monster. It's not game anymore. All right, Tanaka buys his opponent one more turn. You have one turn, Alice, or else you are going to have to give us information. So let us see. Time seal, go. That did not work. All right, go ahead. Tanaka doesn't need to draw because he has his metal armored bug, his OG boss monster. Don't do it. Don't summon both of them. It's the Doom Dozer. He's got both of his boss monsters. They are super strong side by side. He ends it with the OG. And that is it. Tanaka on turn eight is the winner. This insect guy, I'm telling you, he's a different level of duelist. All right. Just like that, we are going to uh, move on. And, of course, we're in top four, so a lot of stuff is going to be changing. Alice must give us a hint or at least tell us what's going on from Alice's point of view. All right. Alice breaks down cry crying. She admits that she did something really bad. Alice admits to kidnapping Tyranno Hasselberry and that she's keeping him in the dueling museum. She knows nothing about the murder or what's happened other than that. Tyranno apparently is safe and sound in the museum. All right, so we are now in top four. Top four means that we got to scroll this up and I got to probably move my bracket around. Actually, the bracket's fine. That You can read that. Perfect. The next duel is going to be Daigo Serrano versus Zane Truesdale, everybody. Let's go ahead and get into that. Daigo Serrano versus Zane Truesdale. Oh, I wouldn't do a Persona playthrough. I'm not a crazy person. You think my Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's Plays are long? Persona would e easily outmatch that. You have no idea. You have no idea. Uh, Daigo and Zane. Why do I always have trouble finding Zane's deck? Oh, there he is. It's because he's in the corner, of course. Okay, here we go, guys. It's time for Daigo versus Zane Truesdale. Let's see who wins. Whew. 
Future Fusion getting hit is really bad for Zane. Zane desperately needed that card. Oh man, Zane really needed Future Fusion to have a chance against Daigo. This is rough. For those of you that are curious, Tyranno is safe and sound. You don't have to worry. That means that he'll be in the next tournaments or whatever. She was just keeping him. And goodbye, Cyber Phoenix, but at least you get to draw a card. Graceful Charity kicks in. Graceful Charity is going to throw away two Hex Seals. Cyber Dra Why would you throw away the Hex Seal? Okay, you're going to bring it back. Okay, as long as you bring it back. You should not throw away Hex Seals when you need them. Call the Haunted for what? Wait, two Hex Do you have an Ur Monster I don't know about? No, you don't. All right, we got ourselves a Cyber Twin Dragon, and that card is going in. Mass Dragon's probably going to hide in defense mode with Mass Dragon, yep. And UFO Turtle's probably going to hide in attack mode with UFO Turtle or... Mass Dragon. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this is a really tight duel. That's right, everybody. After the first tournament, before Daigo joined the school, Daigo did steal uh, Zane's spot by dueling him. So, we'll see what happens. Maybe Daigo will get it back again by beating him here and then solving the mystery. If you guys can help, that is. Oh, yeah. Kidnapping is not okay, but Alice can't exactly go to jail when they already put her in a case at night every day. So there will be no repercussions against Alice. They just need to pay, pay more attention to her. Make sure that she's not doing anything she's not supposed to. Oh, brain control doesn't work on the special summon ones, right? Yeah, it does not. Horus is here, but Horus can't do a damn thing. And honestly, Cyber Twin and Cyber End Dragon are the only reason Zane has won and has even gotten this far. He top decked level up. Holy shit, he top decked level up! 3,500 Zane, who is super reliant on spell cards, can no longer use spells. He loses Cyber Twin Dragon. How could Zane come back from this? This is just like when Zane lost to him before he became King of Games. Oh god, before Daigo stole the King of Games thing. This is what happened. This is exactly how it happened. It's happening again. Horus goes in. Oh, the light hex sealed is gone forever. 35 to the face with 900 points left. He can't use a spell, but his whole deck is spell cards. Does Zane have anything left? Anything left in the tank? Nope. It's over. Daigo takes game one in top four. That is insanity. The fact that the comeback was with 900 life points left at the last second by top decking the exact spell card he needed to get his boss monster. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to be going into game two. Will Daigo do it again? Will Daigo win this entire tournament, solve the mystery, and become king of games? Or... Will you guys fail to solve the mystery? He, he failed to be, uh, do that and not become King of Games. All right. Reasoning. He said level seven. Let's see what he gets. MST. Level four. There's not even a single level seven card in that. Just always say level four. You should always say level four. I'm just saying that. No reason not to. Fisher. Okay. That's good to get rid of horse. It's better to get rid of Horus when you know uh, you have a card to kill the other monster. Because now you're about to fight Horus again, but it's going to be way stronger this time. Or not. Or your opponent could just say, no. okay, whatever. <laughs> you're a weird one. You're, you're a weird one. You know that? Shining Angel was here. Hot Agreed is here. Premature and uh, Giant Trunade could let you attack this turn, but you're not actually getting rid of the card. Okay, you can attack this turn. Oh, five monsters in one turn. Aren't you a big guy? All right. Five monsters in one turn it is. I like that you guys are talking a lot about Tanaka being the king. I don't think Tanaka's ever fought Daigo. Let's be honest. I don't think he's ever fought Daigo. Shining Angel again gets Shining Angel. He's out of angels at this point. 
There are no angels in the outfield, only a prototype, and that pro- Oh my god. Oh god, there's gonna be two horse level sixes next turn. There could be three horse level sixes next turn. Alright, here we go, horse level six. Come on, one more. Horus level six, he can tribute for the third one. Zane, fuse now or die. That is my answer to you. Fuse now or die. Swords will not work on Horus level six. That Saku would have worked. The fact that you're not using it is upsetting. He did not fuse, therefore Zane is about to die. He's going to lose everything. Oh, it's worse than I thought. It's way worse than I thought. Holy crap. Zane Truesdale really wanted that king ranking back, but it will not matter. The damage is good. It's already over, guys. I don't need to watch the rest of this. It's already over. <gasps> Larva! Larva saves the day because of Larva. Zane has one more turn to try and fuse. He must power... Oh, God! No horse destroyed the Larva! That means level 8 is coming. And if level 8 is coming, that means Zane has a 0% chance of coming back. I can't see it. He can't use Power Bond. He can't use Poly. He cannot use Fusion. There is no chance of Zane coming back now. Even if he summons Cyber Dragon into Prototype, what would it matter? Get him out of here. Get 2 0 by Daigo. Just 2 0 him. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Daigo Sorato is going to Grand Finals. He is super strong. All right. So, with that being said, Zane Truesdale has lost, which means Zane Truesdale must give us some information. Let's go ahead and take a look. Zane Truesdale's information is... Zane Truesdale was in his room when he heard Crowler scream. He was the one that ran to Crowler's aid, but did not see who attacked. The attacker was already long gone. But Zane confirms that Crowler was yelling for some reason. He did not see an attacker, but Crowler was yelling for some reason. And it sounded like the screams of a person who was in danger. The next duel is going to be a blast from the past. Jasmine versus Tanaka. These two fought in the grand finals of the Duel Academy tournament. Who will win in this one? All right. Tanaka, where are you? Tanaka, Tanaka. Found him. Now I just need Jasmine. Jasmine. These two did fight at the end of the Duel Academy tournament in our Master Era series. Here they are again in semifinals. Who will win? Both these characters are very good. Either of these characters could win the entire thing. Let's see who will do it. Alright. Ja oh, Jasmine's on the wrong side. I apologize. I'm looking for Tanaka now. All right, we can see Tanaka's hand is not the best. It's not the worst, it's just not the best. Inset's armor with laser cannon will do its job. They did the job the other way, actually. All right, let's see here. I need to blow my nose again. I'm all stuffed up. I can barely talk. All right. Hopefully that cleared me up and I can actually talk again. My apologies. TT! Okay! Both characters lose everything. Resonance Insect gives you the Doom Dozer! Oh shit! Doom Dozer is here! Resonance Insect throws away Metal Armor Bug! Monster Reborn! The massive combo! That was the best 
possible combo for Tanaka. Tanaka goes in with 5,600 damage. He hits Axe of Despair. That was actually the best play I've ever seen from Tanaka. That was the best. Insane. 5,600 damage in a fraction of a second. That was beautiful. I want to cry. I, want, I was so good. It's so good. <laughs> he played Yu-Gi-Oh! He's so good at the game. Jasmine's one of the biggest threats we have, and he's just so damn good at the game, he don't care. Oh, Sylphid, you lose. Oh, no, he lost Metal Armored Bug into a place where it's easier to summon. Lairwire says, I want to win duel right now. Call the Haunted says, I will not allow it. Doomdozer hasn't attacked yet, has he? Doom Dozer! Tanaka gets the victory! That's my boy! Alright. That is beautiful. We're going to be moving into game two. That was the best play I've ever seen from Tanaka. He is playing at his... Oh, literally at his peak. And he has to be because he knows how strong Jasmine is. He's seen her in the finals before. But this is the semifinals. Neo Bug, a classic monster, very powerful. It'll have to do the job. Dark Hole for a Neo Bug? I don't know. Dark Hole for a Neo Bug ain't so good. MST is a little bit better, but all you did was hit MST. Harpy Lady 1 is a decent monster. I do not know. All right, Insectipede goes in, but you do die. Honestly, Fisher on a Harpy Lady might be worth it. You don't want her getting buffed. Yeah, just get rid of it. We'll see what happens. Winner of this fight's Daigo. Loser fight's Zane. The third place breather match is not for any hints. We already got all the hints by that point for the breather match. Uh, that is just for me so I know how to place them for a very important thing that's coming up. By the way, remind me that I have a trailer for the end of this tournament. <laughs> I have next week's tournament planned out. I have a trailer ready. And it will be affected by what happens today. To, to, yeah, next week's tournament will be it will be affected by what happens today. Resonance Insect gives you the Doom Dozer. Alright, will the Doom Dozer do anything though after taking 2,500 damage? Giant Flea. Doom Dozer. Okay. Resonance Insect will try, but it will fail because Toriental Tribute says go to hell. Resonance Insect throws away Insect Knight. That's fine. It's all up to luck right now. Silphy. Beautiful. One more turn, Jasmine. You can do it. You'll get your first win on Tanaka. You know you can beat him. You got him. Jasmine has done it. She has taken a game on Tanaka. This bug boy is good, but she is not bad. She knows how to duel, and she is very effective with her wind monster deck. Her wing beast monsters especially. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Tanaka is gone. Jasmine. Oh, wait. No, wait. We're going to game three. I'm an idiot. Let's go to game three. Sorry about Tanaka's fa face. We'll get there. All right. There we go. We're back. Game three. Tanaka versus uh, good old uh, Jasmine. Both characters are very good, but we'll see what happens. MST could be very helpful. Insect Knight can be very helpful. I'm just saying. Rush recklessly lets you know that you can't beat the, uh, just Dark Hole. You know what? I I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I know it's bad for me to say this. Just Dark Hole. Just do it. Tanaka, if you want to beat Jasmine, you gotta be faster than her because she's gonna beat the crap out of you. She's gonna play like three monsters in one turn if you let her keep that flying Kamakiri. <laughs> okay, she. Okay, you know what? She answers in kind. Dark Hole for a Dark Hole. A Soul for a Soul. Sonic Duck. Sonic Duck is very good at 1700 attack. It's one of the better beater monsters. But you know something a little bit better than that? It's a better level 3 beater monster. But you know what's better than that? A level 4 beater monster. Like the Insect Knight. Or even the Neobug. 
Still, Sonic Duck is good, especially for being a level 3 monster. And 1900 goes through. So you're in a little bit of trouble, Jasmine, in game number 3, but you still have options. You just got to get a little bit of a combo going. Sonic Duck with X, that's a combo in my mind. I'll count it. <laughs> it's not exactly a combo, but it works. As, uh, Sonic Duck is strong enough, and he cannot tribute for Metal Armored Bug, so he's in a very bad spot. Suck son of a bitch! Did he just top deck Fisher? She finally gains advantage. He can't even tribute, and you get Fisher? Holy crap, she's barely in the duel, but she's still standing after that amazing top deck from Tanaka. He's got the pro tag powers. He felt it. But she's not leaving. She's fighting for her goddamn life. Howling Insect will die. Goki Pawn. Yeah, we love Goki Pawn in this house. Come on, Goki Pawn. Just end it. I see it. I see the ending. Use your boss. Here we go with the ultimate monster. It is over. The winner is Tanaka. Hit time. All right. Let's do it. Tanaka will be moving on. Jasmine will be having a third place breather match for my sake. And Jasmine must give out more information. Jasmine says that she was with Bin Mindy and Alexis and happened to hear Mindy mutter, mutter something about Slifer Red students or seeing a Slifer Red student. All right, so we're going to be moving on to the third place match. Zane versus Jasmine. Let's go ahead and see what happens. This should be a good duel. Zane and Jasmine are both great duelists. Now, this is for a breather match, so I would say use this time to talk about the case and talk about who you think is the culprit or who you try to get a list of culprits that are left. Culprits that you don't trust. People that have no alibi. People that you don't think should be uh, should be alone with another person. Just keep, keep an eye on all of them. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get Zane and Jasmine's faces ready. Oh, I, forgot, I, I forgot to leave Jasmine's face up there. Whoops. Not good at my own job. That sucks. Still, that's amazing that Tanaka won the way he did. Jasmine's going to have to get real lucky here. Icarus Attack, please hit the two cards you could actually see. Thank God. I saw someone do something really stupid earlier with Icarus Attack. That's an interesting hand for Zane to have. If he draws Power Bond, the duel's over. Harpy Lady Garuda. Ooh, wow. That's a lot of damage. Now I think he needs Power Bond or it's over. He got the Power Bond! Zane? What? What? Just use it. If you were going to lose either way, just use it anyway. At least do some damage. Don't lose like a... L oh my god, you're a baby. You're a goddamn baby. Be like Cyrus. If you know you're going to lose, just power bond anyway. Alright, we're going to game number two. That was, uh... That was, that, was, that, was, that was a shame. That was a shame. All right, Malevolent Nuzzler's good. That keeps their uh, Flying Kamikiri pretty powerful. Cyber Dragon has the Wyvern here, and Fisher will destroy the card. Fisher seems to be her downfall today. Every time she gets something good, Fisher ruins it. Cyber Dragon goes in. Don't you want to unionize there so that monster doesn't die? Yeah, see, that's a good idea. That's what good people would do. Dark hole! Wait, does that work? I don't know what the wire, the armored cyber... Do it doesn't work. Good. Good for Zane. Good for Zane. He needs this. He needs this victory. He needs to stop losing to everybody. Granted, he has been top four multiple times, so I guess I can't say he's bad. He's just... He used to be king. He used to be the king! And now he can't even try to be king of games in this tournament because Daigo knocked him out again. I can't believe it's Daigo. Daigo keeps taking it. 
And Harpy Lady 1 is here. Harpy Lady 1 buffs the monster. Cyber Dragon no longer stands a chance, and neither does the freaking Angel of Shining. It's all up to luck. Who will win? Will he draw a prototype Cyber Dragon or Cyber Dragon? He drew a Hex Sealed! This man is insane with the luck! Zane Truesdale can make a comeback happen! He rips through Harpy Lady 1. He... Oh, no! She had no life points left. You had her right where you wanted her. She's going to get a Harpy Lady 1 and then Malevolent Nuzzler. Oh, no way. It's going to shuffle the deck. Oh, shit. Zane's in trouble again. She may not have many life points left, but she has field advantage. And sometimes all you need is field advantage. Monster of Borm, what can you get back? Harpy Lady, interesting. Steal the opponent thing. Okay. Okay, you want to fight her in one of these matches? That's pretty cool. Shit. Swifty. He's getting Swifty. That's not good. That was also the worst episode. Uh, let's go ahead and get that damage in. A thousand damage gets dealt. Until the new season, but whatever. Oh, Premature Burial doesn't save him, and he knows it. If she draws a monster, he loses. He's going to get 2 owed. She was definitely better than him. Oh, Jasmine takes third, everybody. Jasmine takes third. We are here. It is time for Grand Finals of the Murder Mystery. In Grand Finals, afterwards, we're going to find out the last piece of information. One last piece of information. And then I'm going to ask you all who your prime suspects are. We will not go on until we have at least four prime suspects that we can agree on. So get the four in your mind. You should at least have four that feel wrong. Four of them should feel wrong. More, more than four should feel wrong. There's a lot of red herrings, but still. You should still be taking care. All right. Right now, we have Daigo Serrano versus Tanaka. Loser of this gives out information. Winner of this is going to be the one that tries to solve the mystery. Let's find out who does it. All right, everybody. Place your bets. Who will win? Daigo Serrano or Tanaka? These two have never met. Daigo was once a king of games. But you know what? I've seen freaking Tanaka take out the king of games. So anything is possible. Alright. Is that Damian Draco? Why is Damian Draco there? Whoops. I know some of you have seen the... He's one above, that's why. Daigo is one above that one. Whoops. Ignore Damien's face, I swear to God. <laughs> oh my God. Horus level 6 goes in for 2300 burn. Holy crap. Draw a card. It's no, it doesn't work. He has to play defensively. Horus is going to go level 8. He's not going to be able to use spell cards. And not only that, but Horus level 8 is too powerful. Horus level 6 destroys Howling Insect. Howling Insect gets a Pinch Hopper. Pinch Hopper gets uh, dead. <laughs> it gets the dead. Giant Flea is here. Not being able to use spell cards. How are you going to do this, Di uh, Tanaka? You can't even use Harpies. I think Tanaka needs to understand that this duel is over. Even his boss monster can't beat that card. Pinch Hopper could try to stall. That's all it can do. Resonance Insect. Resonance Insect could try to help, but there's nothing he can draw strong enough. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have no chance. Tanaka! Tanaka has no chance here. We have Insectipede. We have... Uh... Doomdozer. 
Doomdozer gets a hit in on UFO Turtle. He's at least fighting back. He's not afraid to fight. But his boss is simply weaker than the opponent's boss. And both of them got them out. Sometimes that's all it comes down to. Who had more points in the end? Horse level 6 is here. Graceful Charity is here. Molten Destruction! Oh god, you stand no chance, sir. Tanaka is being burnt away. You all forgot the Pokemon rules. Fire beats bug. Fire beats bug. We have to draw a card. Howling Insect is the card being drawn. It's actually a hell of a top deck. If, I, if I'm being honest, that was a hell of a top deck. It just does not matter. Tanaka can't overpower the opponent. He can't use spell cards to survive. There's nothing left in the deck. There's nothing left. And we have Mass Dragon. And this is it. Horus goes through. Horus has done it. Game one goes to Daigo. One more loss and Tanaka will have to tell us what he knows. Let's go ahead and start the next duel. Graceful Charity is here. We're going to throw away Manier Bug, which Manier Bug was one of the few cards that could help you against Horus, so I don't agree with that. Noble Man of Cross Out! That is brutal! Swords of Reveal. Wait a minute. Why play Swords unless you don't have a monster? He doesn't have a monster! He has only tributes in his hand! All of his hand is tribute monsters! Harpies, clear the field! What, did, what trap did you hit? Royal Decree. Neo Bug is here. Holy crap. Daigo's in trouble. He has no monsters in his hand, apparently. Or if he does, they're tribute. Holy crap. The attacks go through. We have 3,600. Looking real good. He got him. Zygo bricked himself to hell. What is happening? What is happening? This is grand. Literally, we we're in the final fight. This is grand finals, and you're losing. We're going to game three. Tanaka is going to game three. A bug apparently beats fire. I didn't know it was a Raquinid. Okay, there we go. We're going to game number three. The winner is yet to be decided. All right. Let's go. Time for game three. Grand finals. The loser must reveal what they know. Ugh, this is going to be a weird duel. I can already tell. I, li I like uh, looking at the hand. I like Daigo's odds more. I like them a lot more. I think Daigo's got this. Oh, I'm sticking with Daigo. All he could do is go into Goki Pond. And that element guy can attack twice. Pinch Hopper. That ain't gonna work. Goki Pond. Oh, he messed up. Element Dragon was supposed to be the one to attack. He's dumb. Giant Flea is not gonna save you, buddy. Yeah, the second I saw his hand, I was like, oh, that's not the best hand for Tanaka. He's he's in a bad spot. One question. Crowler's office is in the Academy Building or Blue Dorm? As stated, he has two he actually has two offices, but the one that he was in was the Blue Dorm because Zane said that it, he was in his dorm room at the time. But he does have an office in both places. So it's a good it's a good way to think that way. But Zane did state that he was in his dorm at the time when he heard it. Or his room at the time. Alright, Mass Dragon gets another Element Dragon. Element Dragon can clear this. 
Oh, yeah. Element Dragon's about to wipe the field because that's a wind monster right there. That's a wind monster. Ah, uh, Mass Dragon destroying itself doesn't make much sense. Oh, he wants two Element Dragons. Oh, crap. He wants two. Tanaka is done for. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. And Element Dragon attacks. And Element Dragon attacks. And the game-winning attack is coming next turn. Unless Tanaka draws Doom Dozer, this duel is officially over. The final draw is the flea. Re Daigo has done it. Daigo has the game. Tanaka is an amazing top-tier god-level student. But he is not ready to take down Daigo. Which means the only person we will not know the information from is Daigo. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is fun. Tanaka, you have lost. The winner of the murder mystery is Daigo, which means that Daigo is not allowed to be on your prime suspect list. You must take him off whether or not he's actually the killer. It does not matter. You have to take him off your list. Tanaka's hint, I don't even need to look at it. He states that he was buying cards in the dorm, but he did feel like somebody was watching him. That's it. That was his hint. You didn't get much help on that one, did you? All right. Everybody in chat, I know you guys are having a delay compared to me. I'm going to say this. You cannot vote for Daigo as he is the one that is going to be picking who is the, the killer. You must use all the information you have. Tell me four prime suspects, and I will type them out, and then we will do a poll, and we'll see who wins. Four prime suspects, and then you vote from there. Let's go ahead. If you don't show me four names, I can't help you. We have to have four names. I'll start. The, I'll get the poll ready. All right, Ryota, Dimitri, Jinzo, Prowler. You have one minute to vote. Who was the killer? I have their name right here. Who done it? <laughs> now let me see. I will sit. I will sit here and wait. Even if Banner was the one to do it, he's already in custody because he knows about the missing children and did not give that information to the police. You could still be the killer, but that's not one of the four people you're voting for. It's almost time. Give me one second. View results. Ryota wins with 51% of the vote. Dimitri has 34%. Crowler has 9%. And Jinzo has 6%. The killer is... You got it right. You did it. Daigo is now king of games because of you. The killer is Ryota. Opportunity. Ryota's tool shed that he's been living in is near the Obla's Blue Dorms. Mo uh, opportunity again. Weapon. The tool shed has weapons for him to use to slice open people. Motive. He is insanely mad and wanted to go after Crowler, which he did attempt but then ran away. Afterwards, he found Rizo outside and then used this opportunity to just attack Rizo. He is super mad at Rizo because even though he had more wins than Rizo did and performed better in school, Ryota got expelled. 
but Ryzo got to not only get to stay in Duel Academy, but he got to stay as an Obelis Blue student just because his parents paid the bills. Another motive, his cards told him to do so. Evidence that he did it beforehand. One, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Ryota had a new card today. Ryota had a new Skull Servant in his deck. He got that card today after he dug through the body. <laughs> a really creepy way to do it, but in our lore, that can happen. So, that is the best. Daigo is the new king of game. The new prince of game is not Blair, it's not Chaz, it'll, st it'll be Tanaka. Um, we have a trailer for next week's tournament. Great job, you guys got it right. I can't believe it, you guys got it right. I was afraid that a certain character would win the tournament, and you wouldn't get enough information because of that. Daigo was actually just going to be a violent person, like he was just going to put more suspicion on himself by attacking the person that beat him, and then he would get pulled off. But, at the end of the day, you got it right, Ryota is the killer. His new card was one of those white cards, they're, they're the ones that work with Skull Servants. Um, I, I had a lot of fun doing this mystery, I'm glad you guys figured it out, that was great. Uh, and I do have one last trailer, so let's go ahead and get into the trailer, and I will see you all next week. Let's do this.